um, monthly full council meeting. And at this point, I'm going to hand over to the Chief Executive, John Kelby, to call the, the register. John. Thank you, Mayor, and good afternoon, members. To all members of Derry City and Strabane District Council, you're hereby summoned to attend the monthly meeting of the Council to be held remotely at today, Thursday, the 29th of October at 4 o'clock. Starting with the roll call members, Alderman Breslin. Here, John. Alderman Devaney. Here. Alderman Guy. Here, John. Alderman Carrigan. Here. Alderman McClintock. Here, John. Alderman McCready. Apologies, John. Alderman McCain. Here, John. Alderman Ramsey. Here, John. Alderman Wark. Here, John. Councillor Jason Barr. Here, John. Councillor Raymond Barr. Here, John. Councillor John Boyle. Here. Councillor Michaela Boyle. And Shaw, John. Councillor Burke. And Shaw, John. Councillor Carr. Here, John. Councillor Cooper. Councillor Cooper. Councillor Cusack. Here, John. Councillor Dobbins. Here, John. Councillor Donnelly. And Shaw. Councillor Duffy. And Shaw. Councillor Durkin. Councillor Durkin. Councillor Edwards. Here, John. Councillor Farrell. Here. Councillor Ferguson. Here, John. Councillor Fleming. Sure, Councillor Gallagher. And Shaw, sure, John. Councillor Harkin. Here. Councillor Jackson. Shaw. Sure. Councillor Kelly. He's trying to get in there, John, so he is. Okay, thank you. Councillor Logue. Councillor Logue. Councillor McCann. Councillor McCann. Councillor McCluskey. I'm here, John. Councillor McGuire. And Shaw, John. Councillor McHugh. And Shaw, John. Councillor McKeever. Councillor McKeever. Councillor McKinney. Uh, here, John. Councillor Mellon. And Shaw, John. Councillor Mooney. Here, John. Councillor Riley. Here, John. And Councillor Tierney. Um, just checking over um, a few members that didn't pick up there just to see. Um, Councillor Cooper. Councillor Durkin. And Shaw, John. Thank you, Mary. Uh, Councillor Logue. And Shaw, John. Thank you, Patricia. Councillor McCann. I can see you there, Eamon. Yeah, thank you. Councillor McKeever. Okay, that's it. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, members. Thank you, John. John, just, I don't know what. I'm a bit in the chat box. He's now online. He could be marked present as well. Sorry, who is that, uh, Mayor? Councillor Dan Kelly. Councillor Dan Kelly. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, John. Members, the next item on our agenda is the statement of remote meetings. I would like to remind everyone who is in remote attendance that this meeting will be broadcast live via the Council's YouTube channel and will be available for viewing by the public and the media. The broadcast will also be available for repeated viewing at a later date. This broadcast may be terminated or suspended in accordance with Council's protocol. Members and approved speakers are reminded to only have their mics and cameras on while speaking at the meeting and to use the chat facility to highlight a request to speak. By participating in this meeting, you are consenting to being filmed and to the use and storage of those images for broadcasting or training purposes and for the purpose of keeping historical records and making those records available to the public. A copy of the Council's Privacy notice may be found on the council's website at marystraban.com. Thank you very much, members. Item number four is declarations of members' interests. Members, they can be either declared now um, or uh, as an item comes up as we go through the agenda, or if members feel they can 
pop it under the chat box and we'll, we'll try and keep a note of it. Mayor, it's Sorry. Martin Riley here. Can I declare an interest, please? Go ahead, Councillor Riley. Item 9, motion 2, in relation to Alzheimer's. Thank you. No problem, Councillor Riley. Um, that will be noted. John, Councillor Michael Cooper has also commented in the chat box that he's here. And can he be marked present, please? Yeah, just seeing that. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, members, the next item of business is chairperson's business. Um, and I have a few councillors who have contacted me wishing to raise an item. Um, and I have a few that I wish to raise myself. Members, in the remote statement of remote meetings, it's clearly outlined. Um, but I would just take this opportunity to remind members, first of all, if we can keep our mics on mute so that all our speakers can be heard. And if we can remember the time frame of speaking, three minutes for proposing a motion and two minutes um, for uh, speaking to a motion. Thank you. Members, I would also, um, on your behalf, like to express um, our collective condolences to the partner and the wider family of country, Rory Farrell, Amanda, who sadly lost her mother, um, Carmel, earlier this week. Um, and if country Farrell's on the call, I would just ask that he uh, conveys that to the wider Doherty family on our behalf. Thank you. I would also like to express congratulations to Alderman McCready, um, who, as I understand it, uh, wife had a baby um, only a few short days ago, which is probably why he um, isn't on this call and is probably preparing or recovering from a night feed. Um, so congratulations to them as well. Members, the first councillor who's contacted me is Councillor Martin Riley. Councillor Riley. Uh, thanks, Mayor. And can I just begin by being associated with your your uh, words in relation to both Councillor Farrell on a sad occasion, but also to Alderman McCready on a happy occasion for him and his family. Uh, mayor, thanks for letting me in under Chair's business. It's just to uh, ask that you as Mayor engage proactively with Royal Mail in relation to the issues facing uh, the Derry Sort Novice and Mail uh, being distributed across the Council area. Uh, I know this is something that we've touched on in our briefing sessions, but formally here today in the Council meeting, I want to put on record the, the SDLP support for the workers, uh, the need for Royal Mail to engage proactively with the, the, the workforce to find a way of delivering letters, uh, crucial letters to many people right across our Council area, uh, and indeed wish all the staff, around half of the staff are off on sick leave at the moment, to wish them all a speedy recovery. I've been speaking to some of the union representatives for the, the Royal Mail workers uh, and done that myself. But I think as mayor, I think that it would be useful if you were in, to engage with Royal Mail uh, to try and get them to outline what their plan is, not just for the, the speedy resolution uh, to the distribution of mail, uh, but also what their plans are uh, to prevent a reoccurrence of this in the future. Thanks, Mayor. <coughs> Thank you, um, Councillor Riley, um, and obviously um, in particular remarks around which the next staff will. I'm sure every councillor on this call, but particularly myself, would want to be um, associated with them. I have no issue engaging with Royal Mail, um, with the, the union, or, or, or with the staff directly. Um, we'll have to be um, online, um, as my own circumstances um, have predicted. A lot of my duties have to be carried out online over the next uh, 10 days or so. so um, I'll ask the staff in the mayor's office to uh, start that um, process um, as soon as this really thing. The next um, councillor who's contacted me is councillor Anne McCluskey. Councillor McCluskey, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Brian, for, for allowing me in here. Oh, hold on a second to see if I can get my, my video working. Yeah. Um, I'm afraid I'm not very good at this fortnight's notice for motions. I had hoped just to, and very, very quickly, just going through this, I had suggested that Council should support the Red Wednesday campaign to highlight and challenge anti-Christian persecution across the globe. And I know that we've engaged with this in, in previous years. Uh, and as a demonstration of this solidarity, I would request that Council um, lights their, their properties in red on that day and pledge public support for this campaign. Uh, and of course, we call for an end to persecution of any group because of the religious belief. Um, religious beliefs are, are, are core to very many cultures and, and people across the world. But at the moment, um, it is the Christian faith, which is which is undergoing 
the most extreme persecution globally. Um, uh, the Anglican Bishop uh, of Truro, uh, Philip Mount Stephen, has just recently compiled a report about this, and some of the figures are, are really quite horrific. Uh, the level and nature of persecution is argu arguably in some regions coming close to the definition of genocide. Uh, and the eradication of Christians and other minorities uh, by violent means uh, was revealed to be the specific and stated objective of extremist groups in Syria, Iraq, Egypt, Nigeria, the Philippines and other places. Um, in Syria, for example, the Christian populations declined from 1.7 million in 2011 to 450,000 today. And in Iraq, uh, largely again through ethnic cleansing from the Nineveh Plains, Christian numbers have slumped from 1.5 million to below 120,000. So this is a very serious matter, and it's something that certainly governments across the world need to be engaged with, that we uphold the right of people to freedom uh, of belief uh, and of association. And and uh, as I say, I think it's it would be incumbent and it would be nice if the last motion that I put to the council, the last request I made to the council, was that we 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 like the public buildings up, and I I don't expect that this will be in any way contentious. And Mayor Brian, thank you very much, as I say, for for allowing me to come in on that. Thank you. No problem. I'm um, Councillor McCluskey, um, and I see in the chat box that Councillor Angela Dobbins um, has suggested that she's having a second that proposal. Um, McCluskey, um, Mr. Do you've brought it up? Um, thank I you, Angela. Like take this opportunity. Obviously, I, I've seen in the local media and um, your decision to step down as your role as a councillor, um, as a fellow councillor, but particularly as a fellow uh, DEA colleague, um, I would like to take this opportunity um, on behalf of everyone to, to wish you well um, in, 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 in the future. I know you're going to still be involved with your party um, and I, I wish you well um, as you step down um, from your role. Um, and thank you very much for the contribution that you've made, not only to our DEA, but to the, the wider council district as a whole. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Mayor. And it's been a, a completely positive experience, I must say, and I want to thank all the colleagues and, and the, the council staff. It, it's, it is certainly, it's been a, a very enriching year and a half, but I've, uh, I've just decided this is the best thing for me. So I'm going to let it, let it go with that. Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you, Councillor McCluskey. Um, members, Councillor McCluskey has made a proposal which has been seconded by Councillor Dobbins. If anyone um, is against it, can they please let me know now, all the right um, I'll pick it as, as red. No? Okay, we'll take that as red. Uh, the next um, councillor contacted me was Councillor Edwards. Yeah, Mayor, thanks for letting me in. And I also want to give my uh, condolences to, to Councillor um, Farrell um, and his, his partner and Amanda at this sad time for them. And I also, Mayor, want to wish you well and your family. And I know you're going through self isolation yourself. so. Hopefully, it's not not too uh, tough for you. Uh, Mayor, in relation to the issue, I want to raise it's related to um, Mr. McCluskey's there. I want to raise the issues around the lights at the Let the Dance Begin sculptures in, in Straban, which is also known as, as the Tinnies. And while I know that Council has done good work in terms of cutting back hedges and um, putting in picnic benches uh, around the Tinnies, I, I do think there's more needs to be done around the, the actual uh, lighting. Um, the Tunnies is a, a landmark for Straban, and it has been used to show our support for a number of different campaigns, such as Pride and recently the, the Baby Loss um, Awareness Week. But there is a general feeling there around um, Straban with the public that the lighting is inadequate to, to mark our, our respects or, or to show our support for those campaigns. Um, and and speaking myself, I know that some of the bulbs are fused and some aren't working, and, um, and you can tell that. It, it, they don't really make much much of a difference there. So I would ask the council to act on this, uh, Mayor, for, for the wider Straban area. Um, and I hope that um, a report can be brought to the, to the relevant committee outlay, outlining the actual costs of upgrading the, the lights. I know there's a few rumours out there that will be twenty to £40,000. I'm not too sure what it will actually be, but I think that information should be brought um, before uh, the committee and before council. And I'd also, Mayor, like to know what has been spent to date on uh, lighting the tennis, just to see what um, cost savings we could have longer term. Um, and it's important, uh, Mayor, that like Derry, that, that Straban can show support for many campaigns and, and the movements here locally and, and show our support for the many minority groups in, in the wider area. 
Um, so I hope that other councillors can support me in that. And uh, that's, that's my issue. And thanks for that, Mayor Mary. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Um, I see Councillor Jason Barr has suggested he'll second that proposal. Um, and it's a proposal only looking for uh, a report we brought back. Uh, I'm sure um, Karen out there. John Kelby wants to come on on that. Go ahead, John. Um, Mayor, if members are content, I, I know that the team led by Karen um, have all of the details that are requested. Um, we've already been looking into this matter. Um, and we're happy, obviously, to bring a report to, to ENR um, as soon as possible, outlining everything that's been asked for today. Thank you, John, for that. Um, Councillor Dan Kelly. Thanks, Chair. Um, and thanks for accepting this and, and best wishes on a speedy recovery. Um, so that's in order. Chair, uh, the issue I want to raise is that is one where over the past week, uh, Dalradian vehicles have been parked up in parts of the Sparren DEA. And as you can imagine, this consternation in the community had no idea uh, what they were doing there. And whatever about the moral responsibility about companies informing landowners of their intentions, there is a statutory obligation on companies to inform council of its intentions uh, where they intend to invoke uh, permitted development rights. Now, I would like to think uh, that Dalradian are not trying to circumvent the ongoing legal process. And as no notification has been received by Council from Dalradian Gold, if it's in order, I would ask that a letter go from Council to the Department and to the company, reminding them uh, of their statutory responsibilities. Thank you, um, Councillor Kelly. I see Councillor Michaela Boyle and Councillor Gallagher have both said that they want to Second that. Um, members, if anyone has any um, objection to that proposal from Councillor Kelly, can you please let me know? Otherwise, I'll pick it in as read. No, okay. Moving on. Councillor Hargan wishes to come in on the postal workers, um, and so does Councillor Jackson. So we'll go on that order. Councillor Hargan. Thanks, Mayor, for letting me in. Uh, yeah, I think the, uh, our, our um, thoughts are with the postal workers right now and their families. And I think it's uh, very important that we do uh, talk about this today. I think we should, as a council, write to the uh, postal workers, uh, communication workers uh, branch and commend them for the action that they took. Uh, as you know, they uh, refused to work in an unsafe workplace. Um, and this is a right that they have. Uh, 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 and that as a result, they face no penalty as a result of that, but it's something that a lot of workers across the district don't know. So first of all, I think we should write to them formally and publicize it, that we are 100% uh, with them, that we're in solidarity with them, and that we commend their action. I think we have to send that, that message to them and that we wish them all a speedy recovery. Um, the second thing connected to this is, and I've raised this now on numerous occasions, uh, and it's connected to what the postal workers demonstrated and did. I think we as a council need to promote the fact that workers, whether they're in a union or not in a union, whether it's an individual or a collective, have the right not to work in an unsafe workplace and will not face any penalty as a result. And this is something I'm sure many people in this call uh, are dealing with. Uh, we get lots of workers contacting us saying, what are their rights in regard to dealing with these issues? I think as a council, we have to put this in our messaging uh, and we have to promote it. Um, and that's a formal request now that we do that. Uh, and that this is so that's basically telling people what the postal workers did. Uh, they have the right to do that. And that's how other people, if they're confronted with a similar situation, should do. They put, shouldn't put themselves uh, in danger. And the last one is connected to this as well. Um, I think that we haven't engaged with the trade unions in the way that we should. I've made this point on numerous occasions. I think we should now, as a council, formally contact the local trade union reps for all the unions and invite them into a meeting with council officers to talk about their concerns and their issues and their demands and issues they would like to see addressed during this pandemic, uh, both the health aspect and the financial aspect. I think that, uh, and that would include inviting the um, communication workers, uh, local rep, to be part of that discussion as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harkin. Um, Councillor Harkin, you stated that that's a 
official um, proposal that you wish to make. So, is there a seconder for that proposal? The chair. Councillor Gallagher, is that? Yeah. Okay, members, you have heard the, the proposal um, from Councillor Harkin, seconded by Councillor Gallagher. Mayor, um, could I, could I come in, Mayor? Yeah, yeah, could I come in just on the proposal? I'm conscious that um, Councillor Jackson also wants in on the item, so happy to, if you want to take him first and then come back to me. Yeah, thank you. Um, Councillor Jackson, go ahead. Mayor, and thanks, Martin, um, for, for allowing me in. Um, on behalf of Sean Fein, um, I think we want, we want to send our solidarity to the postal workers. Um, I know I've personally met with a few postal workers around the conditions that they're, they're, they're working in and the challenges that the workers are facing, with particularly um, here in the And I know our MLA, Martina Anderson, has been engaging with workers their management and the workers' unions. Um, they they ensure that the service um, continues, but and they ensure that um, the workers have our full support and their their concerns are being taken seriously. Um, in in relation to, and I suppose us as a party, Brian, um, we fully support um, yourself um, rep or going forward and making representations. Um, on behalf of us all, um, the, the the workers and the the workers unions and the post post service, and just on the back of the, the proposal that was made by Councillor Harkin, um, I want to we recognise that the concerns of our postal workers aren't unique. Um, there's workers right throughout our council district um, that are concerned. Um, they're concerned about the conditions that they're working on. They're concerned about what their rights may be or may not be. So um, there is, and there, and there is a lot of conflicting advice um, that workers are receiving. So we would be supportive of the proposal that council meet with the trade unions, um, so we can have the opportunity to hear their concerns, and we can um, we can act on on their behalf, and we can work in a collaborative, supportive way. Um, because I suppose this, this, the, the actions taken by the, the, the postal workers, and we, we are all supportive of it, um, demonstrate that collective action can make a difference. Um, and we, uh, while we remain fully supportive of, of our postal workers, we, we want to extend that out. They include all trade unions and that represent all workers throughout our council district. Government of the Mayor. You, Councillor Jackson. Um, Alderman McClampick is on the list, but I think Alderman McClampick, you're just on a, on a separate issue, so I'll come to you um, once we conclude the discussion around the, the postal workers, if that's okay. Um, Councillor Riley. Uh, yep, yeah, thanks, Mayor, and uh, thanks to Councillor Harkin for raising this additional proposal. We don't have a problem with supporting it. Um, maybe a caveat in relation to it. Uh, which may come from a colleague shortly, but um, it, just in relation to the social media points that he touched on, I think that that's really vital, uh, given that the furlough scheme is now coming to an end in the next couple of days. So a number of people who have been off work for a long time will now be asked to return to work. Uh, so I think it is important that, that the social media messages, uh, that we double down on that uh, across the council uh, platforms to to alert people, uh, many of whom will be returning to work for the first time in a long time, uh, of the rights and, and the, the employer's responsibility to the workforce. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Councillor Raymond Barr. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Uh, just in relation to the, the postal problem in Derry, you know, this problem has existed in Strabane since May. You know, and, and now that is happening in Derry, everybody's sitting up and taking notice. You know, COVID was cited as a reason uh, for the poor quality of service. And all our, all our problems that uh, were, were faced by Royal Mail when uh, this issue was first raised in Strabane and me. There was no COVID cases in Strabane at that time. I would just ask that any representation uh, being made to uh, Royal Mail through Councillor Harkin's proposal will include Strabane as well. Thank you, um, Councillor Barr. I'm sure when council officers are, are communicating, or when I indeed am communicating with um, Royal Mail, or with the union, it will be um, right across the city and district, and to make sure that everyone 
um, is is covered in that. But um, I, I understand the reason um, and why you're making that point. But I'm sure that will be conveyed in any communication. Councillor Barr, Councillor Mary Durkin. For my yoga affair, yes. Um, well, it's all already been said by Councillor Riley there, and we're very supportive of the proposal. I just wonder. I'm conscious that another union movement that feels like their voice hasn't been heard is the student union movement, and I mean the student population is includes those dairy students that are up in Belfast, for example, and feel they're lacking clarity around weekends and travel arrangements, and also the the campus here. So. Um, I, I would just like that to include the NUSUSA, Ulster University Students Union, and Queen Students Union. Okay, Councillor Durkin, thanks for that. Alderman Andrew McCain. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, just to support uh, Councillor Harkin's motion, uh, and, and also Councillor Barr on his comments on uh, the Straban Post Office, and uh, I would uh, fully uh, agree trade unions come on into council and when we get the trade unions into the chamber or into the council uh could i ask that uh, the, the the starting station at, at castle derg uh, the rumors of the starting station uh, the starting post office in castle derg there's talk of it closing and moving to strip um that, that will affect uh, 15 odd postal workers who will basically their start base will become Straban uh, instead of Castle Derg if this happens. Um, I know that our MP Arla Begley has met and uh, have liaised uh, with Councillor McHugh on this, but I think if the trade unions are coming in, uh, it would be a good opportunity to to widen out the question to, to Castle Derg and what's going to happen to the, the postal workers there if the, if the sorting office is relocated to Straban. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman McCain. Members, there's a proposal on the floor from Councillor Harkin, seconded by Councillor Paul Gallagher, which, as I understand it, is to write to all of the trade unions um, and invite them on to meet with um, council officers to discuss both the health and the financial impact um, of COVID-19 across the city and district. Um, I'm not hearing anyone um, against that suggestion. Uh, Councillor Harkin, you're looking to come on again? And John, John, I'll let you on John after Councillor Harkin, and then maybe you can clarify the, the your understanding of the proposal. Yeah, it was just that that, that was certainly part of it, Brian. Uh, in, in terms of writing out the trade unions, and I'm glad that uh, so many colleagues agree with that. And then there's two other parts of it are one that we write to the the the, the postal workers, the CWU Dairy Branch, commending them in their action and wishing them a speedy recovery. Uh, and then the third one is that we. Uh, using our council social media and communications platforms uh, in our messaging about the pandemic, incorporate into that and promote that uh, as a safety measure um, and in part around enforcement of guidelines that workers have the right to uh, refuse to work in an unsafe workplace and that that extends to people who are either in a union or without a union, but that is def that is in legislation and that workers who do that shouldn't face any uh, penalisation uh, or uh, victimisation, uh, uh, and, and the examples there now of the postal workers um, having to take the lead in that. Um, so this should be seen as a positive thing because it's about uh, expanding people's rights and, and letting people know what they have the right to do uh, if they're not sure, and they can do that as an individual or as a collective. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Harkin. John Kelby. John. No, sorry, no thanks, Mayor. I was actually just about to um, say what Councillor Harkin had said. I had noted down three parts to the notice of motion. Um, so, and, and I've got that. Thank you. Okay, John, thank you. Members, you have heard the, the proposal. Um, as I say, I'm not hearing anyone speaking against it. So, I'm going to take it as read unless um, someone wants to. Speak up now. No. Oh. Okay, that proposal has been carried um, from Councillor Harkin. Alderman McClintic wishes to come on. Thanks, Mayor. And uh, just a couple of things. Just wish to be associated with your comments to Rory Farrell and his family at this time. And just on uh, behalf of Alderman McCready, um, we will convey our the, the best wishes of Council. Unfortunately, he hasn't got his wife and child out of hospital yet, so it's a couple of days before the sleepless nights will start. 
Um, the, the next thing I had on my list here was just about the Royal Mail, and although I didn't speak there separately once, it's all been said, completely supportive of our post office and all our other workers who are going through such difficult times, wishing all of them uh, a speedy recovery. And it's when something like this happens that you just realise just how much we depend on our postal workers. Even from this meeting started, I've been getting messages about uh, people waiting for hospital appointments and things like that. So completely supportive of, of that proposal. And just to wish um, Councillor Anne McCluskey well, uh, if this is her last day with us, and to thank her for bringing forward the, the proposal um, about the anti Christian message. It's something that certainly concerns us as a party very much. We're just completely supportive, didn't want to come in each one of them individually, but just to be associated with those there. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman McClintock, and I'm sure um, your comments will be noticed. Members, that's the concludes chairperson's process, and we're moving on now to the adoption um, of the minutes of full council in September. Members, when uh, proposing um, or seconding the minutes, if you can just shout out your name as well. So that uh, I think it's Teresa that's online. So Teresa can, um, or whoever's on for the committee section can can jot that down as well. So uh, the, can I come in, Mark, on uh, accuracy? Yeah, if you just let me let me read it out first. Um, just bear with me, Councillor McKinney. <laughs> sorry, um, minute, sorry. <laughs> confirmation of the open minutes of the meeting of the City of Stavanger District Council held on Thursday, the twenty fourth of September, twenty twenty, pages one to pages fifty eight. As uh, for accuracy, Councillor McKinney is looking to come on. Um, I'd like to bring, thank you for letting me in. I'd like to bring up with reference to C263 slash 20, Declaration of Interest, and in reference to C305 slash 20, which was about uh, pay, pay party within the health workers. I actually did declare an interest in this motion, and I would ask that the minutes be amended to show this, please. No problem, um, Councillor McKinney. That'll be um, uh, changed to, to reflect that. Alderman Devaney um, and Councillor Donnelly are both asked can they come on on a matter of accuracy? Is it for the full council minutes of last month? And I just asked first of all to both of you. Well, mine is just out of matters arising, Mayor Morris here. Matters arising, okay. Councillor Donnelly is on accuracy. No, Chair, see, apologies, my mistake. It's, um, it's matters arising too. Sorry for that. Okay, I'll come back to both of you. Can I come on section? Section eight. I'll come to you, um, Alderman McCain when we, when we get to the health and communities. Councillor Farrell, item 272. It, it is, Mayor. Um, thanks very much. And thanks for the, the, the kind words uh, about Carmel's sad passing. Uh, they'll be greatly appreciated by the wider Doherty family. Uh, so thank you on that. Um, so it's item 272, which was responses to motions, uh, specifically regarding the executive's commitment to bring forward proposals for the expansion of McGee to 10,000 students. At the last meeting, uh, I had asked who we had written to in, in the executive and had they responded. Um, it now transpires that we had written to the first ministers in March. No response was received. We had written to the First Ministers again in June, and again, no response was received. Here we are now, seven months on, and there's still no response. Um, I genuinely cannot believe this. I cannot believe that we have written to the First Ministers about their responsibilities regarding the expansion of McGee, and seven months later, they have failed to respond. Um, it's not as if this is some sort of insignificant or irrelevant matter. It's about McGee expansion, which is probably the most sort of critical project uh, in this city. And Arlene Foster and Michelle O'Neill have chosen to ignore that correspondence. I propose that we write again to the First Ministers, urgently requesting engagement with this council to update us on their plans and proposals for McGee expansion. I'm conscious that we've written twice already. Uh, and we haven't received any response. So I would also ask the Sinn Féin and DUP members in this virtual chamber to use whatever influence they have with their respective First Ministers to say, please act on this correspondence and please engage with our Council. Thank you. Thank you, um, Councillor Farrell, for that. And I see in the chat box, Councillor Boyle and Councillor McCluskey have both um, seconded. 
Well, um, I'm going to take it as red unless someone wants to speak up. No. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Farrell. Members, can I get a proposal and a seconder for those minutes? Pages 1 to 58. So proposed, Mayor Morris. Seconded, McCain. Thank you both, um, Alderman Devaney and Alderman McCain. Members, just before we move on, there's a number of people who are putting parts messages under the chat box where they want to come in. Um, if you can just wait until we get to that particular batch of minutes. Um, and if I forget, I'm trying to take a note of them, but they're coming on right back. If I forget, please give me a shout once we once we get to that particular minute, please. Um, Punch Alderman Devaney on the act the matters of reason um, from full council. 24th of September. Alderman Devaney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for allowing me in. And it is item C296 stroke 20 that I wanted to come in on. And look, I'm not going to rehearse all the issues in around the call in and, and then around the, the issue about the PCSP audit. But since then, Mayor, there have been a number of concerns raised uh, in around um, a flight. And uh, there were concerns. Some mentioned maybe it could have been a holiday or something like that. And there was an issue raised in around flowers, um, a uh, costing for flowers. Now, Mr. Mayor, I've uh, asked the question and around the the flight, the the flight um, was uh, the flight was um, there for. I'm a member of the Respect UK. It was. Now, uh, I hope I do his name justice. Apocratus. Panty Lukadakis is a member of Respect UK, and Respect UK is a pioneer UK domestic abuse organisation leading the development of safe, effective work with perpetrators of male and young people using violence in close relationship. Now, this was an event hosted by um, Men's Action Network, and Mr. Mayor, we had a great presentation from this group back at the Celts and Communities, and this guy, Apo, was uh, invited over to speak at the event. Um, the event was hosted in the Verbal Arts Centre on Friday the 11th of January 2019. Uh, and, you know, in relation to his credentials, or the credentials of the, the group in Respect UK are widely regarded as the gold standard in relation to dealing with male victims of perpetrators and of domestic violence. And just as I look, Mayor, at some uh, at some of the other people who attended that meeting as well, you had the Department of Justice there, you had the Western Health and Social Care Trust, you had Nexus there, you had Men's Action. So it was a very, to me, uh, I feel this claim f for the flight for to bring this guy over to speak on this very, very specialist subject, um, believed met the criteria. And the second one, Mr. Mayor, was um, regarding flowers. Um, there was discussion around flowers. Now, I do know that um, I made inquiries about that there, and it was a summer diversity program hosted by the Dennett Interchange uh, in Donamana, and the total cost to that for was £20 for flowers and £14. Now, I was told that the, the combined cost was for flowers and biscuits. And I just want to put on the record, Mr. Mayor, that we, uh, I know our party, um, we have no problem with this type of claim, and we, we, we feel that it really, really meets the criteria. That's all I wanted to say, Mayor. Thank you for that, um, Alderman Devaney. I'm sure there are not many people going to argue with you about the, the pronunciation of the, the, the guy's name, um, but thanks for that. Next on the list, um, and I'm assuming that it's a separate matter. Councillor Donnelly. Thank you, Chair. No, but just, just to come in there, uh, following what Alderman Devaney had said, thanks for the, the clarification. Uh, I'm sure nobody would have any issues with, with that type of uh, gentleman, but it's just unfortunate that council officers couldn't give us that type of clarification. And, and it appears very, very unprofessional that council officers can't give us that and uh, uh, it's down to one of our councillors to do it. You know, there's still outstanding issues there regarding a group meal, you know, so it does seem very haphazard, but thank you, Alderman Devaney, for the clarification. Chair, my, my own issue is uh, page 9, C275 forward slash 20, and it's uh, regarding matters arising. Chair, if you, if you uh, remember, I made a, a proposal and it was regarding the ongoing uh, situation at the time in, in with uh, McGabry Prison. 
and the proposal was basically that the cross party and independent delegation meet with prisoners' families and their representatives to listen to their concerns and a bid to resolve these critical issues and bring about an end to the hunger strike. Thankfully, Chair, that that hunger strike has ended. Uh, the doctorism, Palestinian doctor, and and a the local men have come off that, and that has to be welcomed. However, I still believe we should meet these families because it is still cause for concern that the conditions that led to this strike in the first place, Chair, uh, possibly still exist. So I was just wondering if there's any update on that, please. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Donnelly. Um, I, I don't have an update um, on it. Um, John, have you got any? Mayor, sorry, could I just ask Councillor Donnelly just the item reference again? I'll check my list to see if there's an update. Yeah, John, it's uh, page nine and the item is C275 forward slash 20. And there was a proposal put on in there and uh, Councillor Gallagher, I think, seconded. At the, at the page at the end of page 11. No, I've got it. Thanks. I'm just checking through the lists, Councillor Donnelly. And if Ellen's on the phone, if she could just check her lists as well, there, please. If you just bear with us, members, please. Um, C C two seven five twenty. Uh, Council notes with concern the additional stress being caused to the families of prisoners. There was a letter to the Northern Ireland office sent on October the 9th with regard to that. So that was the first part uh, of the notice of motion. And then the cross party independent delegation to meet with the prisoners' families. That hasn't been actioned as yet. I think it's, a, it's, it's important that we do, as a matter of urgency, set that train in motion uh, as soon as possible. Okay, Mayor, Councillor Donnelly, we take that on board and, um, and and action that and contact you respectively afterwards. Thank you, John, for that. Um, and thank you, Councillor Donnelly. Councillor Patricia Oak. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, it's just on relation to the, the um, what Councillor Donnelly had said about how he was sorry he had to hear that from uh, a councillor. In fact, if, uh, I just want to say that any councillor at any time can go to any council officer for clarification on any issue, which indeed I have done as well on behalf of my party on the same issue. And he would have been, if he had done the same, he would have been advised what we who took the time uh, to go and seek that clarification. Uh, he would have been advised of the same. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lowe. Members, can I get a proposal to check for the matters arising, please? Both, Mayor Morris. Second, McKay. Thank you both. Members, item number eight is the uh, adoption of the open minutes um, of the Chair, just, just thank you. I, I was I put it on the chat box. Just before you move off, Nat, uh, just uh, following off from the previous speaker there around uh, and some of the issues that Councillor Donnelly mentioned. It's just the fact that to see with audit risk and insurance, a report came in to audit risk and insurance and that report highlighted 44 recommendations. And those 44 recommendations were saying that the financial procedures previously had not been right, regardless regardless of a councillor having to seek out from an officer, regardless, this came in as a report. And when the report comes in, it's our role as councillors to inquire, seek, seek clarification before approval. Do you know, and that's, and that's what reports do. It's not about going out to a group and asking the group, what did you spend that money on? And who was that flight for? And how much was that bunch of flowers? That's not our role. But there's a role within audit, risk, and insurance. And council locus long enough, I uh, and the, the council do you know that. It's not for councillors to go and seek 
individually. But when the report comes in... Councillor Collagher, I, I want to stop you there. Um, I, I think we all know what our role is whenever the, the reports come in. Um, I understand. I fully yeah, no, appreciate what you're saying. Second, the, the, no, 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 no. The audit no. insurance didn't make 44 recommendations for nothing. Yes, we, we, we know that. Um, but we're, we're, we're going to move on. Um, and, and that's... Adoption of the open minutes of the following committees. Um, Special Environment Regeneration Committee held on Monday, the 21st of September, page 59. 60. Can I get a proposer and act and seconder for accuracy, please? Proposed, McCain. Alderman McCain. Seconded, Morris. Oh, Alderman Davini. The same page, pages for matters arising. No matters arising. Can okay. I come in briefly? Can I briefly, Mayor? Please go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Thank you, Mayor. It's not really a matter of raising, but it's just to compliment on the plaque that has been put in place in, in the Sanitaf and Castle there of the four men from Castle there who gave their lives. And the, the, the families of the four people are very appreciative. And it's, it's uh, nice coming up to remember on Sunday that we have it done. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman McCain. Councillor Lowe. Oh, okay. No, Thank Lowe. you. No, Chair, I just put it on the chat there because I thought you no were worries. going on. No, we have, Lowe, moved on. I, we have moved on. Oh, I'm okay. sorry, we have we, moved on. We have moved on. We're we're at uh, I, I I let them read it from the chat then, Chair. No, okay. no worries. Thank you, Councillor Lowe. Members, the monthly governance and strategic planning committee, um, pages sixty one to ninety two for accuracy. Alderman Breslin, is that you? Pardon? Are you proposing those minutes? Yeah, yes, I, I propose them. Okay. Brian, can I second them? It's Sandra Duffy. Councillor Sandra Duffy, Duffy, is that you? Yep. It is, yep, yep. Thank you, Councillor Duffy. Um, members, there's a few here. Hold on, just bear with me. Councillor Harkin on matters arising. Thanks, Mayor, for letting me in. Uh, I want to speak to uh, the poverty motion, DSP 142 slash 20. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the, the officers who uh, you know carried forward the, the motion. And as people who were at the committee meeting are aware, uh, there was a, 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 very, a fairly devastating report done by the department about uh, poverty across the district. Uh, and that's what I want to speak about now. Um, I'm sure people know in this district that uh, there is severe hardship as a result of the pandemic. Uh, it's in the newspapers every day. And the furlough scheme is ending this weekend. And uh, a lot of families are facing a potential cliff edge. Um, we already know uh, from the, that absolute poverty has increased in this district. And I think people can't really believe it now when they look at their TV sets and they see uh, hundreds of millions of pounds being spent on anaerobic digester energy schemes and people getting access to money at wind turbines that they don't deserve and shouldn't have had access to uh, when people are told there is no money. So um, I want to propose that um, that the council launch a hardship fund um, to try and alleviate uh, as much as possible the desperate poverty that we're facing across the district. Uh, this proposal has come to me from trade unions, uh, and they're worried about their own members who are facing absolute poverty. They're working about worried about broader communities, and this is something that is going to impact all communities right across this district. So this would be a hardship fund that council takes responsibility for, uh, where we asked those who have uh, the disposable income. Um, to fund a hardship fund uh, that can try and meet the basic needs of people across the district. A lot of people are going to be going with, without food. Uh, they're going to be struggling with, housing, with heat payments. They're going to be struggling with uh, 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 you know, all sorts of basic things. So I think we should do this. Uh, most of the other proposals that we're working through the council are going to take a long time, and we need action right now. So I think that uh, we can go and ask the Chamber of Commerce. We should look to big business across this district, 
some of whom have done very, very well during the pandemic, when, every, when lots of others have struggled. We should ask them to help fund this. Uh, we should look at what we can do as a council. Uh, but we know that there's a lot, there's a lot of people who can afford and will uh, help out to make sure all, many, many people in the district aren't facing, uh, you know, a terrible time over the couple, next couple of months. So this is a proposal I think that we'll get a lot of support for. But I think it has to be led by the council. It has to be done in a neutral way so that it can involve everybody. Um, and I, I think it's the kind of action that people expect that the council will take right now. We can't have a situation where hundreds of millions of pounds are going missing and uh, people are facing absolute poverty. So I want to propose that today. And I think that we can have an, a meeting next week to begin to hammer out the details uh, of how we would move forward with this. Thank you, Councillor Harkin. Can I just clarify what you're asking council to do is to set up council to set up a hardship fund in partnership with um, people like the chair. And, and, and thanks, Brian. Yeah, thanks for the, the so to clarify. The council would take the lead Can in establishing a hardship my... fund for those Wait. across our district. Just lost you there, Brian. Sorry. Can you hear us? Yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah, yeah. So just to clarify, so the proposal is that the council will create will set up a hardship fund that other people can contribute to and that we look um that we try not to put the onus on this onto uh many working class people who are going to suffer disproportionately through job losses, being on universal credit and hardship, and that we actually look to, you know. The big businesses across the district uh, and those individuals who are uh, who have done relatively well even during the pandemic, the the fund such a initiative, uh, and then we could use that money. We we have a good understanding from the department uh, report about deprivation across across the district. We know where it is. We know where it's concentrated. Many councillors here uh, will have people knocking on their doors asking for help. We know from our advice services. Where, where the pools and areas of deprivation are. Um, so the idea would be that council would set this up and then we would ask, um, uh, we would appeal to those with disposable income, uh, the better off and especially bigger businesses, uh, to actually help fund this. So I, and I think it's, it would be welcomed by people across our district. We can't wait for Stormont to come up with uh, an anti-poverty strategy. We'll be we'll be waiting for for who knows how long. We have to take action locally, and we've taken action during this pandemic locally when Stormont didn't act. So I think that this is an opportunity for our district um, to begin to take action uh, where we it shows that we have an understanding of how bad it is right now for so many people, and it's going to get worse that because the the furlough scheme is ending, and many people are losing their jobs. Um, so we can't have a situation where people are, are, okay. are looking okay. at. Thanks. Okay, Councillor Harkin, um, we're just looking for clarification. I have a number of speakers on this um, on this particular issue. I have Councillor Burke, Burke, and Alderman McClintock on this issue. So, Councillor Burke. Thanks, Mayor, for letting me in. Um, I was going to come in on a similar sort of uh, proposal to Councillor Harkin, so we'd be happy enough to support that as we've been approached as well around the exploring this idea of the hardship fund and, and how it would look. Um, obviously, Councillor Harkin has alluded to the, the ending of the furlough scheme and how this is going to impact on families and individuals right across our area. I know from a community perspective, neighbourhood renewal areas are kind of looking at uh, putting plans in place for the coming months and obviously with Christmas approaching about how they can look after. But I'm just conscious um, of the fact that some people who will be affected by the ending of the scheme may actually fall out of that. And even within the neighbourhood renewal areas, there is going to be an increased demand. So we would be happy to support, obviously, looking into the idea of the hardship fund, but just the add date as well. Um, obviously, as a council, we're not in a position to offer any additional financial support. But I was going to propose that we also write to the executive to see if there is any additional support that being, can be given during this time so that we can obviously try and offset some of the, the devastating impact the furlough is going to have when it ends now in the next few days. So. It's just on that. Um, also as well, sorry, just given the time constraints on it, 
I was just thinking there it might be an idea rather than waiting for a full council or committee that if a response comes back or we could maybe from the executive bring it through the welfare group where obviously there's representation there so we can discuss it if, depending on the response but if people are happy enough for that thanks thank you councillor burke councillor durkin sure, my i'll get there again just very happy to support that proposal it is again something that uh, i'm aware of that the unions have been looking at and talking to different charities and groups and uh, i think it would be just a brilliant initiative for us as a council to be facilitating and leading on at this time so guru mayogov thank you um councillor durkin alderman mcclantic yes mayor and well i can understand the sentiments um that uh, uh councillor farrell uh Sean has brought this forward with. I am concerned about the practicalities of it. And I think we really need to see a paper from officers before we move forward in this. It's a massively big undertaking. There's a lot of um, a lot of onus in council to and to do quite a lot of different things here. And I think we need to have a paper from officers to explain uh, how this might work and to give us some sort of a, a framework before we jump into agreeing to it. At this moment in time, we couldn't support it until we see a paper from officers. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman McClantic. Councillor Oliver. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, I agree with the with the principle of the the proposal, indeed, I think we should. I think that uh, I think that I, I would just caution on side of of the role of council. I think that that the proposal should be, and we act as a matter of urgency. I don't think we commit on, on a report such, but uh, come back to the previous speaker that says around the welfare uh, working group that if they could come together very quick, that the proposal would be that council would drive this forward. I'm not sure if, if council should be the administrator of a hardship fund. There's a lot of applications around administrating a, a fund, a, a charitable uh, donation, how you prove someone, how you vet someone, how it doesn't become embroiled in, in politicking of who you vote for and who you don't vote for. And, all the, all the rest of the stuff. So I, I would be just cautious, but agree entirely with the whole sentiments. Give them the working group and let the working group thrash it out as soon as they can. Uh, and then and some, of this, some of this work that council would have a very good uh, role to play as going around behind the scenes and getting big business to make donations into a fund, whoever may be administering that, but council would have an important role as being the, if you want to call it the governance of, of, of the entire district. And ordinary people who have a few pounds can also donate them to the fund, but big business, council could make applications into central government and we could move it forward like that. But I would just cautious that if the council was administered in it, there may be difficulties around that. Thank you, Councillor Gallagher. Councillor McKinney. Thank you, Mayor, for letting us in there. I, I, I would, uh, we would tend to agree with what uh, Sean has proposed there, but we'd also like to say we would need to take in mind what Tina uh, related to with uh, regards to council funding it if that was to be proposed as well. Thank you. Thank you, um, <laughs> Councillor McKinney. Members, it's been proposed, it's seconded. Um, I want to get a steer um, from John. Yeah, thanks, Mayor, and thanks, members. I think, um, members, um, we as officers need to be absolutely clear on what you're proposing here today. Um, obviously, Councillor, Councillor Harkin has been clear, and then there have been a number of comments that have um, sort of added to or clarified or um, um, commented on the proposal. So um, I, I've made copious notes, but I'm not absolutely clear in the proposal. 
and and obviously um <clears throat> in relation to what has been proposed whatever um it is you subsequently decide today we will have to take it away and look at all of the ramifications um it doesn't sound like what you're proposing is something that um can be acted on immediately we would have to look at the issues the varies the legal issues, the resourcing issues, all of that, and um, consider all of that and bring it back to you in some shape or fashion um, so that you could take an informed decision on it. Um, and even in doing that, I would need to find a resource to do that that, that is um, that is um, uh, sufficiently qualified to, to understand all of these issues. So, so perhaps um, today um, you could maybe clarify exactly what the proposal is based on the conversations and the inputs that have just been had by, by members, Mayor. Thank you, um, John. Councillor Duffy, on the, on the same issue, Sandra, yeah? yeah? Yeah, just on the same issue. And just to clarify, um, Tina did make a proposal there as well in terms of writing to the executive to see if there's any additional funding that they could provide that would allow us to do something around hardship. We're very concerned around the ending of furlough ourselves. Um, we know the implications that this is going to have for a lot of people throughout our city and district. Um, and I think that writing to the executive is a way that we maybe could get in additional funds to allow us to do something. I think that um, Councillor Harkins' um, proposal is a good one as well. I think that it should be actioned through the welfare reform group. Um, it has representation from right across the, the, the parties and independence, and I think that might be the way forward if we convene a meeting of that group um, within the next week or two um, to allow the, the, the issue to be progressed. Thank you, Councillor Duffy. Um, as I understand it, that was part of Councillor Harkin's proposal, was that that group should meet um, early, um, I, I think, uh, and I hope I'm not um, misrepresenting what you said, Councillor Harkin, but I think you said early next week. To discuss how we take this forward. That'd be fair enough. Mr. Harkin, yep, he's nodding. Okay, members, so that's the, the proposal that a, basically um, a meeting of the, the welfare reform group is called um, at the earliest convenience to discuss if and how uh, we, we take that proposal forward. And yeah. a letter to the executive? And a letter to the executive, of course. Happy, happy with that, members. We'll we'll action that, and and then all of the considerations today can be, um, can be discussed um through the working group, and then possibly find a way forward from there. Thank you, John. Members, I'm not hearing anyone speaking against it, so um, I'm going to take it as read, um, unless uh anyone speaks up. No, okay. Thank you, Councillor Harkin. Um, John, also Councillor. Jim McKeever um, has just um, logged on to the meeting, so if he could be marked present as well. Councillor Jackson on the matters arising from the Governance and Strategic Planning Committee. Thanks, Mayor. Um, Mayor, on page 77, GSP 140, forward slash 20, it's um, on the free porch. Um, it's a proposal that was made by Alderman McCready. Um, Alder McCready um, requested a paper be brought back to Council on the concept of a free port within our district or an enterprise zone. Um, and whilst at, at that meeting and at those minutes, it was it was acknowledged that Council um, corporate those doesn't have a corporate position on the matter, and a, and a, a paper would be brought back to the relevant committee um, in due course. I'm going to make a proposal that in order for us to, because I, I, I suppose I want to give a wee bit of context to this. Mayor, I have I sit on the Port and Harbour um, as a commissioner, and I do know that there's there, there there's ambitions um, in terms of an enterprise zone, or innovation zone, um, call it what you may, um, and, in the port, and, and, around, and around the port. Um, and I think it would be beneficial for us as a council to hear a deputation from the Port and Harbour. So um, as part of, as part of that discussion, um, I am requesting the council invite the Port and Harbour um, they, they, they present the, uh, the relevant committee um, 
they outline are their plans in, in relation to the Freeport Enterprise Zone Innovation Zone um, proposal. So I'm going to make that a proposal, Mayor. Can I second that artillery here? Yeah, thank you, um, Alderman McClampick. Councillor Ferguson has also suggested she be happy to second that, but has also declared an interest as a Port Commissioner, which I'm sure um, Councillor Jackson would wish to do as well. Um, so if they can be noted, please. Um, members, once again, you've heard the the proposal from Councillor Jackson, seconded by Alderman McClampick. I'm putting it to the floor now, um, and we'll take us read unless I'm notified. Okay, thank you, Councillor Jackson. Councillor Burke, I'm assuming that your issue has been addressed through the, the last topic raised by Councillor Harkin. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Kieran Maguire. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so, in relation to GSP 144 slash 20, uh, uh, I'm assuming that the, the update will come back to governance. Uh, but I would like to propose Councillor Dan Kelly and Councillor Rory McHugh onto that group as well. Okay. Thank you. Members, moving on. Um, item six is the monthly planning committee held on Wednesday the 7th of October, pages 93 to 104. Can I get a proposal and a seconder for accuracy, please? I will propose in Breslau. Seconded. Thank you. Seconded. Kerrigan. Thank you both um, very much. The same pages, members, 93 to 104 for matters arising. No matters arising. Thank you. D is the monthly planning committee reconvened on Thursday, the 8th of October, pages 105 to 108 for accuracy. Proposer and seconder, please. I propose it. Alderman Bresland. Yes. Seconder. Seconder, it, Chair Dan Kelly. Um, for matters arising, 105 to 108. No matters arising, members, thank you. Monthly Business and Culture Committee. Thursday, the 13th of October, page 109 to 122. For accuracy, can I get a proposal and a seconder? And I see both Alderman McClintic and Councillor Donnelly for matters arising in this paper, so just bear with me. Can I get a proposal and a seconder for the accuracy, I'll, please? I propose it. Second. Uh, Barr. Second. Oh, okay. There's three. Raymond Barr, and I think that was Anne McCluskey, maybe? Yeah. Honor myself, Chair Michaela. Michaela Boyle, there you go. Thank you, Michaela. Alderman McClintic on matters arising for business and culture. Thanks, Mayor. It's on item BC 146 slash 20, page 119. Mayor, I'd like to comment on the position that was put forward on behalf of Sinn Féin regarding the Northern Ireland centenary. This is an occasion that's of the utmost importance and significance to many people in this country, including many in this council area. And we in the unionist community are very aware that we live in a council area that has a strongly nationalist majority. We are also aware that this council has always led the way in fighting accommodation for all shades of political opinion. So it is very worrying that Sinn Féin are putting down their marker as to what they will accept even before the decade of centenary meeting to discuss this. It was stated that Sinn Féin will not support any proposal that celebrates the North as a single entity. And also in his comments, Councillor Clipper berated our council officers for using the phrase Northern Ireland as one of the four countries of the United Kingdom. Well, I'm sure, Mayor, I don't need to give Councillor Cooper or anybody in this chamber a history lesson, but yes, Northern Ireland is one of the four countries of the UK. And I would remind anybody who needs to be reminded that Articles 2 and 3 of the Irish Constitution have been removed, and even the, the South accepts the legitimacy of Northern Ireland. In fact, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland was a sovereign a state that existed from 1801, and it was the South who decided to become the free state. But this isn't the time for a historical debate, Mayor. I just want to say that history cannot be rewritten. Councillor Cooper referred to positive celebration and recognition. 
but Mr. Mayor, my community certainly finds nothing positive in the way and the very negative comments that were betrayed during the business and culture meeting. We as a council managed to find our way through the challenge in 2016 anniversaries and the DUP hope that we find the accommodation necessary to see our way through this centenary. We do recognise that not everybody will be celebrating the occasion. We are also aware that the to make the centenary memorable, we also need to bring in outside funding to augment normal council streams, and this certainly is something that needs addressed with speed. I've already had an initial conversation with an outside body who will consider an element of the funding required, and we'll, this will be brought to the appropriate working group. But I would also like to make a proposal today that we write to the Northern Ireland Executive to see if we can get some clarity from them as to what provision they will be making to support those who wish to celebrate this momentous occasion, because information has been slow to come through the various forum that have been established. Thank you, Mayor. Can I say that, Mayor Alderman Wark? Thank you, um, Alderman McClantic. Um, and I hear Alderman Work seconding that proposal. There's two other members um, looking to speak on the matters arising from business and culture. But I notice Councillor Cooper has come on and said he wants to speak. I'm assuming it's on the same issue that Councillor McClantic has, has raised. Therefore, I'm going to let you go ahead, Councillor Cooper. Thanks, Mayor. Um well, just in terms of or Alderman McConnell's comments, I, I was very specific in my language at the committee for very, very deliberate reasons because I'm aware that a lot of people in the city industry do want to, uh, in, their, in their words, celebrate the, uh, the centenary of the North, and, and that's the right they, they want to do that. There's no issue with that whatsoever. And I welcome the fact Councillor McClendon has that's a little bit of fact that many of us, in fact, the majority of us, I would say, uh, do not want to celebrate it. Um, the points I made at the committee were very specific. First of all, in, ter in terms of the language that was used in the, in the reports, uh, and again, I'm, I'm, as a historian, I don't need a history lesson either. What, what I said was it was unfortunate that that type of language was used in, in the sense that, um, you know, we, we want to be dealing with this in a sensitive way. Um, so having a language that's more, let's say, more neutral or, or um, being more diplomatic, whatever word you want to, whatever way you want to describe it. That was the point I was making around the, the language of on the reports. The, the key thing I want to relay, relay here, most important thing is, from, from my perspective, and we did this through the 1916 uh, events, both in terms of the Rising and Psalm Council, agreed through the working group that would be, there would be uh, allocation of funding for people who both wanted to celebrate the Rising and mark the Psalm, but there would be funding available for groups to apply to uh, arrange their own events. And that's that's basically what, what, what happened. And we, we had a very successful year as far as I'm concerned, and a very inclusive year. Um, my approach, with, and I said this at committee, very, very clearly stated at the committee that our approach is that a similar uh, approach should be taken this time as well, uh, as opposed to council organizing events corporately, corporately, which would, and I don't think I'm being controversial here, which, which would um, create an issue for the majority of members on this council, I would be quite confident in saying which is why I stated that our preferred approach is that we look at allocating pots of money through the decade of centenary uh, working group or getting recommendations brought through that mechanism, bring it to the committee, ratified by full council, so pe people can apply for funding to either celebrate the existence of the North or the, the centenary of the North or to criticise it, whatever their, their preference is. And that's still our approach. Uh, there's there's no, no different approach from, from then to now. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, that is a, a way of doing it that allows people to either celebrate or uh, critically evaluate uh, the, the centenary of partition uh, in a way that doesn't defend anybody else. And it means that the council itself is not adopting a, a position either for or against. So as far as I'm concerned, that's still our position. And that is what I will reiterate at the, the next meeting of the, the working group. Thank you. Thank you, um, Councillor Cooper. Um, Alderman McClintock, my apologies. My computer cut out slightly during your proposal. Um, and I didn't get the full proposal. So if you don't mind, just repeat it for me, please. I just asked that um, we write to the Northern Ireland Executive to see if we can get some clarity from them as to what provision they will be making to support those who wish to celebrate this occasion. It's just I know, I'm aware that there are different uh, fora set up, but information is very slow to come through it. And for us as a uh, decade of centenaries committee to move forward, we need to know how much money is on the table, basically. OK, thank you. So your letter will be hopefully to um, 
arm the the, the deputy strategic group with information yes. um, for for plans going forward and whatever those plans may be, um, then um, th that group can sort that out. Councillor Riley, on the same issue, Councillor Riley. Uh, yes, it is, Mary. Chair, I I've asked to come in on the same. Point I, Yep. Councillor Donnelly, are you on the same issue, Councillor Donnelly? I spelled it out in the chat box. Sorry. Yeah, I yeah, it's on the same issue and it's spelled out on right. the, chat, the chat. Yep. Box. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm just saying. Now go ahead. Councillor Riley and Councillor Collider, I'll come to both of you um, in due course. Councillor Donnelly. Thank you, uh, Chair. My, you know, I, I want to make a proposal here. I think that that any Republican or or even a nationalist uh, taking part or or in anything that celebrates or even commemorates the partition of this country is akin to uh, Turkey's voting for Christmas, Chair. I think it's it's obscene, and I want to put a proposal that this council does not. Councillor Donnelly, can I just stop you? We've already got a proposal on the floor and we can only have one at a time to um, the our standing orders. So we can do the first one first, um, then I'll come back to you if you still wish to make that, that proposal. Is that okay, Councillor Donnelly? Yep, thank you. Councillor Riley? Uh, thanks, Mayor, for bringing me in. And there's just to come in in relation to the point that were made. Uh, I suppose at the committee, uh, and then here again uh, this afternoon. Um, you know, the, the SDLP supported the concept back at the time of the setting up of this working group uh, about the, these issues and, and these uh, celebrations and occasions uh, are such uh, that they mean a lot to a lot of people in our council area, but they're not universal and there's, there's many people in our council area to whom uh, this event won't be of a significance at all um but with the other events that happened uh, previously the right thing to do is to uh, is to allow the working group to meet to do, to do its role uh, i accept what alderman mcclintock is saying about the need to get clarity on whatever if any money is available uh, to um groups to apply to to to, uh, to mark this occasion uh, it's not something that the sdlp would mark in a celebratory way but we recognize the fact that there are there are people in our council area to whom this this centenary does mean a lot uh, and we shouldn't be standing in the way of people uh, accessing public money to mark a, a, an occasion that for them is quite significant uh, so as with the previous speaker, uh, it was uh, Councillor Cooper who spoke about the need to uh, to allow the committee, the working group, to do its role. Uh, I, I, I'm supportive of that. Uh, it, it, it's not that I'm saying that with any reasoning uh, to uh, to mark things in a celebratory way. Uh, I'm conscious that uh, Councillor Donnelly has just spoke before me about uh, an alternative proposal that, that he thinks should be made. Uh, but I think that if we look at the the issues around the centenary and whether it is uh, something that um, should be welcomed or something that should be changed in terms of the, the union going forward uh, debate and conversation about the union uh, it, it, it is as much an important role uh, for people of the uh, nationalist republican tradition as it is for people from the unionist uh, tradition so my hope would be that uh, that th the events that may happen next year uh, would be one that would be inclusive for everybody to have their say uh, in relation to uh, the, the, the centenary and I think the proposal that's, uh, that's on the floor currently uh, from Alderman McClintock is, is the one that we need to go with. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Councillor Gallagher. Thank you. I think that uh, Councillor uh, McClintock's proposal is a, is a wee bit delusional I, and, and the fact that one to wipe out a hundred years of history. I never mind history lesson, and I think our proposal to write for funding is a bit like uh, it just strikes up the the Protestant state for a Protestant people. When when she started using the term around people who wish to celebrate um, the the drawing of a line on a map by a, a British minister, and that's what happened, and, and then having the cheek to call the country. I don't think that uh, that any uh, right-thinking Republican or Nationalist will will give this one up some thought or of, of support. I don't think that we can. 
it just looks and sounds like very much the supremest that we've had rule numbers for many years and I'll definitely not be supporting it. Thank you, um, Councillor Gallagher. Councillor Hartman. Councillor Donnelly, I'm coming back to you as well. Yeah, Mayor, thanks for letting me in. Uh, and I think everybody's been made aware that we are coming up now to the, the anniversary of uh, partition. And I would say, look, I'm, I'm neither a nationalist or a unionist. I'm a socialist. Um, and I think that there's growing numbers of people who look at it that way. But I don't think that there's anything to celebrate in partition. Uh, partition has created a division in our communities here in the north, and it's divided people all across this island. So I think anything that happens around this centenary should be about understanding why that has been such a disaster for all the people of this island and what we can now do to, to overcome these divisions, which I think ultimately is about uh, ending partition and creating the kind of new Ireland uh, that many people have been talking about. I mean, the, the vision I have is the one that James Connolly developed over 100 years ago, a socialist Ireland, where the rights of workers, the rights of women, the rights of marginalised communities begin to become, uh, you know, central. Can, members, can we maybe stick uh, to the? Can we stick to the proposal as opposed to everybody telling us um, what type of um, Ireland or parts of Ireland that they want to? Can we maybe stick to the proposal from Conference, please? Well, thank you, Brian. I think this was connected to the discussion, but uh, I'll leave it there. Thank you, members. I'm going to take the proposal from Councillor McClampick, which is we read to the executive um, to see what potential funding um, is available to mark the community. Um, uh, so that proposal is on the floor. Members, um, it's been seconded by Alderman Work. So I'm going to put it to you, members, now um, to to make me aware. I think we're going to have to go for a vote because I think very clearly Councillor Donnelly and Councillor Gallagher at least have indicated that they couldn't support that um, proposal. So, John, if you wouldn't mind taking us through the roll, please, um, for the vote, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Mayor, I'm just wondering, um, rather than run through the 40 names, um, is there any possibility you could ask those councillors who um, don't support the yep. recommendation to advise. If it's more than a few, maybe I'll run through the names. Yeah. Members? Donnelly. Councillor Donnelly and Councillor Gallagher. Councillor McCluskey is abstaining. Opposed. More than a few. Councillor Byer, opposed. No, we're okay. going to do a roll call. Yeah, run through it. Okay, run members, we'll, members we'll, 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 do the, we'll do the vote, members. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, members. Alderman Bresland? For. Alderman Devenny? For. Alderman Guy? For. Alderman Carrigan? For. Alderman McClintock? For. Alderman McCain? For. Alderman Ramsey? For. Alderman Wark? Graham Wark? For. Uh, Councillor Jason Barr? For. Councillor Ra Raymond Barr? Against. Uh, Councillor John Boyle? For. Councillor Michaela Boyle? Against, John. Councillor Burke? Against. Councillor Carr? John. Sorry, what was that, Sean? Councillor Carr, I didn't get you there. I think I heard abstain there. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, somebody's mic's on with a lot of noise there, members. Councillor Cooper? Yes, Jim. Councillor Cusick? Four. Councillor Dobbins? Councillor Dobbins? Four. Councillor Donnelly? Councillor Donnelly, you're against, I assume? Don, yeah. Councillor Duffy? Against. Councillor Durkin. Sorry, John. Excuse me, Councillor McCann. You, no. Somehow you've got two. You've got two devices on, and one of them is muted. If you wouldn't mind muting one of them, I don't know how you've got two on, but if you wouldn't mind muting one of them, 
Thank you. Go ahead, John. Sorry. Councillor Darkin. Councillor Edwards. Sorry, John. Councillor Farrell. Councillor Farrell. Councillor Ferguson. Four. Councillor Fleming. Yes, John. Councillor Gallagher. Councillor Gallagher. Against John. Councillor Harkin. Against John. Councillor Jack. Against John. Councillor Kelly. Against John. Councillor Logue. Against John. Councillor McCann. Councillor McCann. Eamon, are you there? Councillor McCluskey. Abstain. Councillor McGuire. Against. Councillor McHugh. Against John. Councillor McKeever. For John. Councillor McKinney. For John. For John. Councillor Mellon. Against. Councillor Mooney. Councillor Mooney. Councillor Mooney. No. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Tierney. Four. Four. Just give me a second, no Mayor. Okay, John, thank you. Members, normally um, what happens is John would pass me the result of the vote. Um, we'll be together. Judy. You have the self isolate. Um, I'm chairing this meeting from home, so I'm going to ask John just to read out the, the result of the vote um, once he's got it tallied, if you don't mind. So, Mayor, I've recorded 19 in favour, 15 against, and two abstentions. So um, the motion passes. Okay, thank you, John. Um, Councillor Donnelly was an alternative yeah, chair. amendment or Proposal. Yeah, my my proposal is that uh, given the uh, the in, injustice of partition, that this council will not uh, take part or participate in any event that uh, commemorates or celebrates this injustice. Thank you, Councillor Donnelly. Paul Gallagher, I'll second that. Paul Gallagher, thank you, Councillor Cooper. What can they come on on this proposal, Councillor Cooper? Thanks, Chair. And uh, here in the word of Councillor Donnelly's motion, I mean, I've already stated uh, very clearly that from, from my perspective, that this council does not corporately um, hold any events uh, that, that are um, celebrating partition, um, that instead won't be available for groups to bid for. Uh, the healer mark, mark the, the centenary of partition in their own way, whether in a positive or negative light. Uh, and to reiterate what I've said before, uh, it's not our position at all that council would be hosting any events corporately, or, or so, it, and by default, then participating in any of those events. It would be a group who apply for Fulton who will be organising their own events. And so, as far as I'm concerned, with my position as stated previously, which is what I'll bring to the working group, and which uh, I think all our parties here, um, I would hope, mostly are are, in, are on the same general line of thought, means that that. That scenario won't arise. So, um, in terms of the logic of the proposal, I'm, I'm not entirely clear uh, why why it's being made. Basically, With your permission, come back in. Oh, okay. Um, Councillor Kibber, um, no further speakers on this proposal. Chair, can I just clarify why why I've made that proposal, Chair? I have not been involved, given the nature that of the of the makeup of working groups, where there's only one independent permitted to go, and that. I don't have any input to that, so I'm just like I, I, you know, and I hear what Councillor Cooper is saying, but I still want to make that proposal. No problem, um, Councillor Donnelly, and thanks for that clarification. Um, and regardless of, of of working groups, you're still entitled to, to make a proposal um, at full council, which you've done and which has been seconded, which I am now going to put to the floor, members. Um, <coughs> And I think we're going to have to go through the, the, the vote again, John. 
Okay, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, just for the record, what I have recorded as the proposal from Councillor Donnelly is that this council will not participate in any event that celebrates this injustice. Can I just clarify? I think it, celebrate, no. I think it was celebrates or commemorates. Would that be fair, Councillor Donnelly? Yeah, given, given the, the injustice of partition, that this council will not celebrate or commemorate any event which attempts to do that, you know. Okay. Happy enough, John. Uh, yeah, I'm not very good at shorthand. So you just give me a second, please. <laughs> um, it just, Chair, or Mayor, why, why John's writing that down, just to, and speeding this up um, in terms of the vote. Uh, our party have no, no issue with that proposal, so we'll be, we'll be voting for that on, on block. Okay, the given the injustice, the given the, the proposal is that given the injustice of partition, that this council will not commemorate or celebrate in any event. Okay. In any event that attempts to do so, John. Can, okay. can I come on, Mayor? Councillor or Alderman Ramsey, is that I hear? Yeah. Yeah. This proposal is asking council to take a stand, which in my eyes and many people in our city is sectarian. And that's all I want to say. Okay, thank you, um, Alderman Ramsey, for that. Councillor Riley. Yeah, uh, thanks, Mayor, for bringing me in. And I'm conscious that uh, people are, are making this proposal and trying to deal with it. In, um, uh, as as it's been read out to us, um, in the previous vote uh, we voted for, because of the fact that we recognise, as I said, that there are many people in our council area. I'm not one of them. My party is not uh, supportive of petition, but I also recognise that there are many people uh, in our council area that do want to mark uh, the centenary next year, uh, and they should be entitled to do that. Uh, they should do so, as Alderman McClintock had indicated, uh, by trying to get monies from the Northern Ireland Executive, uh, the relevant body here, uh, to try and uh, allow those events to take place. Um, but I also agree that the council itself uh, should be uh, it sh it should not be trying to support a position of a partition. Uh, so, therefore, uh, in relation to this proposal uh, before us now, uh, we're content to support the proposal. Thank you. Okay, Mayor and mem members and Mayor, I'm, 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 I ask you just to bear with me, just given the difficulties of trying to manage this meeting. Um, I have now written down, um, and I think it's important that we are very clear on the wording of the proposal, given the injustice of partition, that this council will not commemorate or participate in any event in relation to the centenary of NI 2021. I think it's commemorate or celebrate, no? Yeah. Participate. Will not commemorate or celebrate. Can you just confirm that, Councillor Donnelly? Celebrate and commemorate. Celebrate and commemorate. Alderman Devaney is looking to come before we go to the vote. Mr. Mayor, for allowing me in. Uh, and look, um, I know this issue um, celebrating the 100th anniversary. Um, there will be quite a number of people, uh, and probably quite rightly, as you say, the majority of people uh, in London Day and Straban may not be supporting uh, um, the, the the hundredth anniversary of the formation of the state. But I do think, Mr. Mayor, we're setting a very, very dangerous precedent here. You know, asking council. You know, you're always, uh, as our previous speaker has said, you're always bordering on the council turning sectarian um, against a unionist minority. That are on the council here and you know this is really sending out a very very negative messages message to that minority uh, in the council area because you know we are looking forward to celebrating the 100th anniversary of the state uh, and uh, we understand that some won't but uh, i'm not surprised that this type of motion would come forward from the councillor that it does um, but mr mayor just on block we will be um um, voting against this motion. Okay, um, Alderman Devaney, thank you very much. Um, and if I can just clarify, um, Alderman Devaney, when you were speaking there, um, you said, as you say, Mr. Mayor, 
many people will not want to um, join. No, sure. My I apologies. Any, any comment no. on this debate at all? And I just want no. that to be clear. No, my um, apologies, Mr. Mayor, for using that uh, as some stated. Sorry. Uh, yeah, okay. No, that's fine. Just for in terms of the accuracy of the meeting. Number five, got a number of speakers. Alderman Guy, Ferguson, Lofsky, McClumpick, McCain, and Ra David Ramsey. You've already spoken, um, Alderman Ramsey, so um, I'm going to. I'm not going to take that one. So it's Alderman Guy first. Thank you, Mayor, for letting me in. Um, it, obviously, I'll be voting against this proposal. Uh, look, we we know that, that this here will split people down the middle. Uh, these centenary celebrations just stood away in 2016. It done the same thing. If I didn't want to go to something, I don't turn up to it. You know. Like this council prides itself here, you know, on inclusiveness, inclusiveness and equality. There's no equality in this proposal at all, you know. Um, and it just, it just basically rides roughshod over one community over the other, and it's, it's not welcome. And it, it's, you know, it's senseless. That's all. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Guy. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, uh, we fully understand the centenary is going to be a contentious issue, but we understand it does have to be marked. I know the council has a corporate position and the policy that seems to have previously worked. I just feel like this motion is just um, going to cause far too much division. So, unfortunately, we will not be uh, supporting this motion tonight. Thank you, Councillor Ferguson. Councillor McClotsky. Thank you, Mayor. Just very briefly, and I really think this is an important point that there is a fundamental difference between political aspirations and a, and a, and a political interpretation of history and sectarianism. I think sectarianism is is abhorrent, and I, you know, while I would have problems celebrating the partition of what I regard as being my country, whose capital is Dublin, uh, I don't feel that to have a political aspiration to unite the people of this country. Uh, Protestant, Catholic, and dissenter, as is the the the, the sort of view we held by people of, of my Republican tradition. I don't think that that is sectarian, and absolutely, I, I agree with what 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 Councillor Riley had said about. I support people's right to celebrate and commemorate the things that are important to them, but I don't think that opposing that, as people with my political background do, uh, is. I think it's it's unfair. To, to equate that with, with being sectarian. So I just wanted to make that point. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor McFrotsky. I've got Councillor McClintock and Councillor or Alderman McClintock and Alderman McKean. At point numbers, I'm going to call for the vote and, and we'll be taking the more speakers. Alderman McClintock. Thank you, Mayor. I think this is a really sad day for community relations in this council area. This is an occasion that must be marked because the unionist people and not only the unionist people but other people as well will want to celebrate or commemorate this occasion and i think that the rights of all sections of the community should be taken into account and while no one's asking those who are opposed to it to celebrate or commemorate it i think it's a very sad day within this council if people uh, vote for this uh, very sectarian motion of councillor Donnelly's. thank you alderman mcclantic alderman mccain Thank you, Mayor, for letting me in. And uh, and what is my last uh, council meeting? Uh, what I was going to uh, comment on later on, or I will. Uh, I have to sort of tear up my script because uh, for a unionist who always felt welcome in the Guildhall uh, and fe and felt welcome in the city, I have suddenly got the feeling that I'm not very welcome at all, uh, and I'm extremely disappointed in that, and uh, and and extremely disappointed in the motion. Uh, Alderman McClintock is quite right. Uh, there are many who, who may not want to celebrate uh, Northern Ireland uh, <coughs> uh, 100th anniversary, but to actively uh, action something that will deny people who want to celebrate it is uh, extremely disappointed. And uh, I was going to comment on, on, on respect uh, at, at, at a lot of my last, uh, on my last meeting, but I have to say. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't do that under chair's business now, because I think uh, I think I'm going to have to rewrite my script because there isn't a lot of respect being shown here, uh, and that's very disappointing. 
Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman McCain. Um, and I think it's important to point out, Alderman McCain, that you are welcome in the Guildhall and you are welcome in the city, um, regardless of what way um, this vote goes. And I don't think anyone on this call um, would disagree uh, with that. But on that note, members, I'm going to call for the vote and ask John to take us through the roll as there's a lot of uh, difference of opinion on this one. Um, John, please. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, members. Alderman Bresland? Against. Uh, Alderman Devaney? Against. Alderman Guy? Against. Alderman Carrigan? Against. Alderman McClintock? Against. Alderman McCready is not here, sorry. Alderman McCain? Against. Alderman Ramsey? Against. Alderman Wark? Councillor Jason Barr? Barr. Councillor Raymond Barr? For. Councillor John Boyle? For. Councillor Michaela Boyle? For. Councillor Burke? For. Councillor Carr? For. Councillor Cooper? For. Councillor Cusick? For. Councillor Dobbins? For. Councillor Donnelly? I assume for Councillor Donnelly. Councillor Duffy? For. Councillor Durkin? Councillor Durkin? For, sorry, John. Councillor Edwards? For, John. Councillor Farrell? Mm -hmm. Councillor Farrell? He's not here, John. Okay, thank you. Councillor Ferguson? Again. Councillor Fleming? For, John. Councillor Gallagher? For, John. Councillor Harkin? For. Councillor Jackson? For. Councillor Kelly? For. Councillor Logue? For, John. Councillor McCann? Councillor McCann? Councillor McCluskey? For. Councillor McGuire? For. Councillor McHugh? For, John. Councillor McKeever? For. Councillor McKinney? Against, John. Councillor Mellon? For. Councillor Mooney? For, John. Councillor Riley? For, John. And Councillor Tierney? For. Mayor, I've recorded um, 27 in favour, 10 against, and no abstentions. Thank you, John. Therefore, um, that proposal by Councillor Donnelly. Members, is carried. Alderman Guy, looking to come on on a separate issue on the Business and Culture Minutes. It's okay, Mayor. No, it's been covered anyway. It's been covered. Okay, thank you. Uh, F is the monthly environment regeneration committee held on Wednesday, the 14th of October. Yeah, you've just literally put it on, so that's why I didn't see you. But go ahead. Were you there, Mayor? It's just one. It's just the raised one here. It's more or less, um, obviously with a Christmas program and update. Um, notified by a lot of a couple of businesses in the city centre now. And um, looking at Society Street in the city centre, it's only street there, not more or less decorated with any, with any Christmas decorations. Now, I wonder if I could pass it up probably on the um, council officers, they more or less looking at and see if there would be any term of budget there. They more or less put decorations, and decorations on Society Street. Because when you are standing on the Bishop Street and you look over to London Street, it was well decorated, and when you look down the Society Street, down towards the Apprentice Boys Memorial Hall, it's very dark. And, and I think also in that there is a number of street lights out, which makes it obviously very unwelcome view at the minute. So I think for the traders down there, the likes of the Society Street Underwear Market, it would help them all out there. Appreciate it, Mayor. 
Thank you, Alderman Work, for that. Councillor Michaela Poyle on the same issue. Yes, Chair. Uh, or sorry, Chair. Um, thanks for allowing me in. And I, I wasn't going to speak on this. I was going to speak to the uh, director um, uh, directly. Uh, but now that it has been raised, I'll take the opportunity. I've also been contacted by um, a number of organisations, one a community group in Straban and one a business owner down at the retail park in Straban in regards to Christmas lights. Um, in regards to the community association, there is a very small rural community association. They were looking for some extra Christmas lights this year. Um, I had spoke with the director and obviously we have set the budget for our Christmas lights this year. Um, but so they were just asking if there were any old lights available that they could avail of. Um, and that's Douglas Bridge uh, Community Association. Um, also, uh, a business owner at the retail park had contacted me in regards to Christmas lights at the retail park in Straban. Obviously, businesses there are struggling financially this year because of the pandemic, and some of them may, you know, are, are, could could possibly go to the wall if things don't get any better. Um, I understand this is a private development down there, but they are struggling in terms of lights. So they're also asking for any assistance or any support from our council in that regard. I have written, written to Kevin O'Connor um, uh, in relation to Instraban to see if he could also assist. So just w w when the member has raised it, I thought I would use the opportunity and come in at this time to say that there are others out there that are looking for extra support this year because of the pandemic and because they can't afford to, to display lights and give people the warm welcome to our town like uh, other towns across the north. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, um, Councillor Boyle and Alderman Work. Members, this is potentially where members come on and say that they want a Christmas light or a Christmas tree on, on every um, estate. I ask the relevant Relation to those two issues raised, um, and we take it forward like that. If you're happy enough, yeah, Mayor, yeah. Um, I, I am happy enough that we take it forward on that basis. And could I suggest, members, that if you get any other requests like that, that you just forward them directly to us? Um, obviously, we have a big challenge in that um, we have a certain stock which has which we have in our presence and which is rolling out across the council area. It's almost impossible to get extra stock at this stage, um, but obviously we will do what we can with the stock that we have. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, and thank you to both contracts for raising that issue. Item F, members, is the Regener Environment and Regeneration Committee held on Wednesday the 14th of October, pages 123 to 152. For matters arising, or sorry, for accuracy, can I get a proposal in a seconder? Mayor, could I come in there on, on that one on accuracy there? Yeah, go ahead, Councillor Edwards. Um, just on items ER one six seven and one seven one, and just on accuracy, I'm referred to as Councillor Stevens or Alden Edwards, just to, to change that, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, that'll be updated, um, Councillor Edwards. Can I get a proposal in a seconder for those minutes, please? So proposed, oh, Mayor Morris, Morris Devaney. Morris Devaney, and I thank I'll Angela, Angela Dobbins. Yep. yep, no more. Thank you both. Same pages, members, 123 to 152 for matters arising. No matters arising. G is the Monthly Health and Communities Committee. Um, Wednesday, or sorry, Thursday, the 15th of October, page 153 to 168 for accuracy. I see Alderman McCain. Is yours accuracy or matters arising, Alderman? Matters arising, but I'll propose it if you need a proposal. Yep, that'll do. Thank you. And I'll come back I'll on second. the matters arising. I'll second Alderman that. McCain yeah. and Alderman Devaney. Thank you. Matters arising for the same pages, members. Alderman McCain. Well, can I come in and point to accuracy? I'll come back to you, Councillor Gallagher. Okay. Go ahead, Alderman McCain. Very briefly, uh, Mayor, and uh, just as uh, as as I was chair of the, and uh, as you know, I'll be stepping down at the end of the month. 
and step also stepping down from chair. I would just like a, a quick opportunity to give my thanks to uh, Chief Executive John uh, and his officers, uh, Karen, the two Karens, one in environment, one in health, and uh, Seamus and Barry and Connor for all their support and all their help um, during my time in council. Uh, secondly, Mayor, could I extend my thanks and gratitude to yourself uh, for uh, being a great support and, uh, and a, actually a very good mayor and the previous mayor, Michaela Boyle. Uh, so I would just like to extend my thanks to, to, to yourselves. And uh, uh, thirdly, to all the councillors, to all the councillors in the chamber who have uh, up until now made me very welcome. <laughs> and uh, uh, I thank uh, all, the, all the various parties and the independents for the respect that they have extended to me during my time, and I hope that my respect uh, was reciprocated to them. It has uh, mostly been a very, very enjoyable experience and a very diverse chamber. And I, I suppose I have to accept the of opinions and uh, and democracy, and uh, as a learning experience for us all. Lastly, Mayor, just to thank my my uh, colleague Darren. Darren Guy, who, who was a great support and is a great support to me, and uh, I really, really enjoyed working with him. And uh, we had more laughs and, and more good times uh, than we had sad times. So just to extend a thanks to everybody out there, and uh, I'd probably come in later on and something else, but just under the, the fact that I was health, uh, Chair of Health, I wanted to do that under health. Thank you, Mayor, very much. Thank you, Alderman McCain. Um, and just to point out, Alderman McCain, I spoke to Darren last night um, uh, and agreed that he would be best or yourself would be best to announce this to council um, rather than me doing it through Chair's business. Um, that's why I didn't do it at the beginning of the meeting, um, but, um, and, and I hope you, you, you understand that reason. Um, but just on behalf of council, they obviously thank you um, for your contribution to council. Um, and I, I know some votes this evening haven't um, went that you may have um, particularly liked them, but I hope um, that, that, that you see that you are still very welcome. Um, I thank you for your kind word. Thank you, uh, Mayor, for allowing me in. Mayor, this is under HP 180 slash 20. It's to do with the land of Spring Hill. If you don't mind then, Jason, I'll come back to you because I have a number of people I think that are looking to, no, yeah, to, no. to come on on the, on, the, on the previous issue. Alderman Guy. Uh, thank you, Mayor, for letting me in there. Um, obviously, uh, Councillor McCain, uh, and Alderman McCain now leaving, uh, I would like to thank that. I'd like to thank him for all his good work. Uh, and they came on the council when health was high in the agenda. And um, he chaired the Health and Community Centre in a fair manner, bringing knowledge, his knowledge and expertise gained while working in the NHS and in the mental health services, as well as his knowledge and workers' rights. Uh, Andy has conducted himself well in all council work and serving the people of the wider Castledurg area. I would hope this isn't the last that we see of Andy and Council. Uh, I've enjoyed my time working with him, and I wish him all the best for the future. And this Council may be leaving a thing, but um, a councillor, but I've gained a friend and all this here, and I wish him all the best for the future. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Guy. Councillor Donnelly, on the same issue. Chair, uh, look, Chair, I, I would like to, to pay tribute to Alderman McCain. And I have to say that I found him very, very fair, very accommodating, uh, very positive and, and, and progressive. And I think, you know, I think with the previous vote chair, I can understand his position. And I think it's unfortunate that he has adopted a position that he wouldn't be made welcome. That wasn't the, the motive that uh, Alderman behind the previous votes. And as far as I'm concerned, you're, you're part and parcel. You're, you know, who's the, the make you not unwelcome? You may not agree. With that, but I just again I want to pay tribute to you and 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 you've been very fair to myself. Thank you. Thank you, um, Councillor Donnelly. Councillor Edwards. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. And again, I want to um, 
pay uh, tribute to Alderman McCain and, and give the SLP thanks for, for his work. Um, I am the newest member of Council for the last, I think, five, five and a half months. Um, and Alderman McCain has been a, a great advocate for Derek, a great friend. He's become a good friend of, of myself across the Derek. And the Derek, he is definitely um, not as, as, as well off without having Alderman McCain there raising issues. And um, myself and, and Alderman McCain would have weekly phone calls and all issues. And he was genuinely uh, working across community um, and bringing his experience to the role and to, to the health committee. So I do wish him well in the future and I do look forward to continuing to engage with him in the future as well. And he'll definitely be missed in, in, in the DERG and in the, in the chamber. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Um, Councillor Ferguson. Thank you. And again, I just want to give our best wishes to uh, Alderman McCain. It's been an absolute pleasure to work with you over the last uh, recent months. Um, you've been a great advocate for health and for unions, so you'd be sadly missed. Um, so just the best wishes and thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Ferguson. Um, Councillor McKee. Thank you, Chair. Um, I happened to be speaking to Councillor McKean, or was actually via text message, but we were uh, tick tacking regarding an issue in the Dairy Ward, um, regarding the post office in Castle Derrick, and uh, that's when Andy informed me that he would be officially stepping down. Um, and I'd expressed my disappointment to him on hearing that. Um, as a fellow Derrick representative, um, Andy, much like myself, was kind of threw in at the deep end. And I had to take up the mantle, and I have to say, he uh, to use the, the most often used phrase, he, he took to it like a, a duck to water. And you know, I'm sure it wasn't easy given um, his uh, normal job and balancing that with his with his council role wouldn't have been easy, and with his family life. Um, as he says, uh, you know, there's many things that divide us, but I, I, I said to him, I says, well. There's far more things that uh, unite us, and uh, I enjoyed working with Andy, particularly on uh, issues relating to the Derg Ward, you know. And as somebody said earlier, I'm, I'm sure we haven't heard the uh, the last of uh, Andy McCain in terms of local politics, or or maybe a, a, a higher rung above that. But uh, I just want to wish uh, Andy and indeed his family all the best for the future. Thank you, um, Councillor McKee. Councillor Barr, Raymond Barr. I'd uh, just like to say to Andy, uh, all the best in the future. It was a pleasure getting to know the man. Um, I found him to be a very genuine, sincere councillor, a real gentleman. All the best, Andy. Thank you, Councillor Barr. Councillor Gallagher. Thank you. Uh, again, like everybody else has said, I. Uh, uh, Andy, Andy came in a bit uh, on the raw side, but he wasn't long in uh, finding his feet uh, within council. And I think uh, I found him to be very open and very genuine. But I would say to you, Andy, I, what I would say to you is, if, if you're part in words, I think there should be bye for now. Because uh, if, <laughs> what I would say is, the person you replaced, if they come back, uh, you never know, like, <laughs> they'd be on tricky ground. So I would say, yeah, there's every chance she'll be back. No, no. Um, Alderman McCain, there's also uh, members, a number of members who have put um, their best wishes under the, the chat box as well. I'm wishing you and your family well um, uh, as you step down your role as councillor. So thank, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McCain. Councillor Collagher, you want to raise an issue? I was just when I'm flipping back and forward on that, it's, it's, it's an audit. It's an audit, right? Okay. Um, Councillor Jason Barr. Thank you, Mayor. Again, it's to do with uh, HC 180-20. Um, it's uh, Councillor Ebers raised that a proposal. The council had proposed that we lease the land for 25 years at a cost of 17500 I'm just wondering, was an update? Now, this was the fair to fall council. So is there an update for this before I make a proposal, uh, Mayor, or do I make the proposal now before that? John, or Karen McFarland, if she's on the call. Uh, Karen Phillips, possibly on the call. 
Mayor members, um, it's, it's Karen McFarland, the Director of Health and Community, just to, to update you on that. Um, we've gone back and we've had some discussion with legal and with finance um, within the reserves transfer from the former Straban District Council. There is a sum of 10,000 held towards this particular project. So if members wish to move to purchase um, the site, um, then you will need to also um, agree that there is provision made uh, for the um, other £10,000 of costs, so that there's a full budget available um, for the, the ground acquisition. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, you Karen. Karen. Yep, thanks very much, Karen, for that. I appreciate that update. So, Mayor, I'll, I'll move forward with the proposal then that the Council does uh, go forward with the, person that, with the purchasing of this land rather than the, the, the lease of it. Okay. Have you a second there for that proposal? No. Raymond Barr, Raymond Barr, I just see it in the chat box here. Members, I'll put that to the floor. Um, and I'm going to take it as read unless anyone makes me aware of anything different. I'll just declare an interest. Okay. Mr. Gallagher declares an interest. Thank you. No. Okay, members, that proposal from Councillor Barr, Jason Barr, um, is carried, segmented by Raymond Barr. Moving on, HITS is the bi-monthly audit assurance and risk committee held on the 19th of October, pages 169 to 178. Can I get a proposal and a seconder for accuracy? And I know Councillor Gallagher wants to come on, on the matters arising, I think. Proposed, Mayor. Jim McKeever. Second, McKeever Mayor. Thing. Chair, I would like to come on on accuracy first, just before they are first. Go ahead, Councillor Lowe. Yeah, it's just on uh, the section um, where I asked for car clarification. Sorry, but I'll get you the, the number. Um, I think it's number. Uh, up. Sorry, just bear with me one minute, please. No worries. Sorry about that, Chair. It's AAR47 slash 20. Um, yep. it's, yeah, and it's just on um, the paragraph where it is written that Councillor Logue asked Councillor McCann for clarity on what was required, required from Council in terms of support. Now, um, for worker, now, I feel that that whole that sentence is read in, in its entirety. It takes uh, it would be taken out of context to what I was actually asking. While I don't want to be uh, quoted fair bottom, I do think there would be merit if it was included that the quest clarity that I asked was um, is Councillor McCann asking people who uh, who their employers have put in all the recommended safety precautions if they still feel unsafe uh or was it that that they no he was asking to um for people still had the right to to walk out however i, I just would want that included within the within the the paragraph please that it was re regarding uh the recommendations being um been implemented by the employer, by yep, the relevant no bodies, and and just to say, like, if there's any doubt, we definitely support the any uh, employees' right uh, to walk out. It is there in section 45, 44, sorry, of Employment Rights Act 1996, um, and definitely, uh, if there is unsafe practices which are being carried out, which we know has happened even locally, then we are supportive of the employees walking out. But just to, <clears throat> sorry, just to clarify that uh, that paragraph, please, if that could be included. No problem, um, Councillor Lowe, that will be um, updated to reflect um, what you've just um, suggested there. Thank you. So those minutes have been proposed and seconded by Councillor McKeever and I can't remember who seconded them. I think it might have been Councillor. 
Philip McKinney. Yep, thank you, uh, Philip. So, matters arising for audit assurance and risk. It is 1691 Chairman 8. Councillor Gallagher has made me up. Chair, mine was on accuracy. Sorry, go ahead, Councillor Gallagher. Right, uh, just, just on uh, page uh, 173, uh, and it's related to the top paragraph, and there's just a, an element of, of where it goes council to reclaim any money which had not been spent inappropriately. That that should that's, that actually is the reverse. It should be council to reclaim any money that had been spent inappropriately. Okay, Councillor Gallagher, thanks for that. Matters arising in the same minutes, Councillor Donnelly. Chair, thank you. Uh, it's uh, page one seven two AAR four two forward slash two zero. Chair, we've had a discussion earlier where Alderman Deveni has furnished us with some information. Now, don't doubt what Alderman Deveni, but I would just want the, the, you know, and then there's comments from Councillor Lowe. You know, these, these, this information, if there's been new information that clarifies some issues, then I think it should come to either the Audit Committee or it should come to the, the, the full Council. I haven't got that information and I, I, I will rely on that, and that's not a slur in any way on uh, Alderman Deveni. But Chair, so I would ask that, that if there is additional information, we have it. But in the absence of any proper verification or documentation for money that, that has been spent, and I'm talking about the group meals, flowers, and the flight at this stage, then if, if, that, inf if that verification isn't there, Chair, then I'm going to propose that this council uh, uses a clawback measure to recoup that money. Thank you. That's, that's a proposal, Chair. Oh, sir, Donnelly, sorry, apologies. My um, computer um, sort of stuttered a wee bit for, for want of a better word. Um, so if you could give us that again, because I didn't get it all. Right, Chair. I, I, basically, what I was saying is that in the absence of a proper uh, paperwork, the, the documentation or verification regarding the money, uh, regarding you know the, the flowers, the meal and the airline ticket, and I, and I do appreciate that Alderman Deveni has furnished us with some uh, information. However, I believe that that needs to be verified and come back through the audit or through full council. But I would propose in the absence of proper verification and documentation that we recruit any, recur any money that may, that we can't provide the, that proper uh, documentation and verification for. We claw it back, Chair. Okay, thank you um, for, for, for that. I need a check there for that proposal. Chat box there, Jay. Right, thank you, um, Councillor Donnelly. Councillor Patricia Logue on the same issue. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, I'll await uh, Council officers' uh, confirmation of this, but it's my understanding after liaison with the relevant Council officers on getting further information on the the issues that have been alluded to in this report, um, which was my right, and I went through the right channels. Um, it is my understanding that this is not council's money to claw back. This money is grant money, which is provided by a joint committee of the Justice Department and the, the policing board. Um, and this council has, have not got the authority uh, nor the right to claw back any of this money. And can I just add to you that I am satisfied that this money has, these, these invoices have all been verified, vouched for, and stood over by the joint committee. Um, if a council officer would like to come in and just maybe um, clarify that situation regarding uh, council uh, clawing back this money. Uh, I think it would be good for all the members to hear that uh, from them. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mayor, I'm, I'm not sure if we have a council officer on the call tonight that can clarify that, but um, I can't see the full list. 
Uh, Mayor, members, um, it's Karen McFarland, Director of Health and Community. Um, and just to advise members, um, there has been a review of the issues raised. Um, some councillors have requested um, detail, detail of that, and that has been provided directly. We're um, quite content to provide that to all councillors, should they require. Um, it's just to, I suppose, reaffirm that the total expenditure being queried um, at the moment um, equates to £629.44. Um, that is a very small proportion of the overall PCSP uh, budget, um, which is um, it's, it's around not not two three percent or point not 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 two three percent. Um, the documentation is in existence um, that is available within the PCSP offices. And I suppose the issues relate just to um, perhaps maybe more detail or clarification uh, being required. Some of which is held as additional support documentation within papers. So to clarify in terms of the meals, those um, payments were for reimbursements um, for a summer scheme uh, program in which a number of day trips um, were carried out. Um, the expenditure is in line with the letter of offer um, issued to the programme. Um, and um, the second in relation to the receipts um, for um, food on trips, um, again, um, that is in relation to summer diversionary activities. Um, in regard to the um, flowers issue, um, I think that has been clarified as as, as being for um, a fun day um, in which um, there were some refreshments provided and some flowers used for decoration of a facility, again in keeping um, with the letter of offer um, and receipts have been provided um, and bank statements to vouch that um, expenditure. Um, in terms of flights, there's been um, an explanation given by members and to confirm that that, that explanation is correct with the detail that we hold on on file. So in summary, um, we have been advised from an audit perspective um, that there is no issue of an eligible expenditure um, or no issue of um, um, any suggestion or evidence um, of fraud in regard to that. So members, as I've said, I'm happy to make available the um, detailed information um, as requested by members. Thank you. Thank you, Karen, for that. Um, members, would it be easier um, and probably clearer for everyone? We've been dealing with this issue um, for uh, a few months. It's come up at almost every full council meeting since I've uh, become mayor. Would it be quicker if we ask for a report to come to the relevant committee um, outlining all of these issues and explaining um, for information on writing what Karen has just outlined? Um, and it might help um, speed things up here this evening, but it might also help put uh, this issue to bed and, and allay some people's genuine concerns that they have. Mayor, can I come in? Yeah, you're on the list. Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, just just in regard, and I don't want to borrow down into uh, the five projects that were audited and, and, and what uh, was identified within it, but there was five things, or there was five projects, and there was, uh, if you want to call it, uh, it wasn't that there was an appropriate spend it's it, it probably wasn't done in the correct procedure and that's what was identified but we can't we can't put that in isolation because there was only five of the projects audited if we give out six hundred thousand for example then the six hundred thousand would need to be audited in its entirety defined a true percentage of what maybe wasn't spent but come back to it is the proposal the proposal being that Council is a, a grant given body, and as part of a grant given body, as part of a letter of offer, which is a contract, it is as part of that contract, it should be if there's any money spent inappropriately, i.e., was not in the agreed budget, then council should have the remit to claim that money back. And as, as a matter of prudence, that should be in a letter of offer. And that's what the proposal is asking for. Not specifically regards the five projects there was on. If we, if at some stage, and we may at some stage go back over this year's, last year's, and the year before. Legally, council as a grant given body should have a right in this letter of offer to reclaw money 
if it's not spent appropriately. And that's what the proposal is. And I cannot, for the life of me, understand why councillors are opposed to that. Because it's very prudent and for to give audit, risk and assurance, that should be in the letter of offer. Thank you, Councillor Gallagher. Councillor Riley. Uh, yeah, well, thanks for getting, uh, bringing me in. Um, just, I suppose, at the start, to declare an interest as a member of the PTSP um, and to also, I suppose, welcome what uh, the officer, uh, Karen McFarland, has provided here uh, this afternoon in terms of additional information uh, that ha hasn't been available to all 40 members of the Council uh, until now. Uh, but but I, I do think that it is welcome that 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 has come into the public domain, including the lines that uh, she has said about how the officers that have undertaken some work on this have found no evidence of fraud, uh, and also uh, the uh, the additional information in relation to the claims that had given some concern at the time. Uh, you know, so I think your suggestion about the the paper that uh, that your suggestion be brought forward, I think, is the right thing to do. Uh, Karen had indicated in her um, response quite a, a, a lengthy response, a comprehensive one in relation to uh, the various claims. It would be useful for that to be given to uh, members in a considered way for them to look through. Uh, and I think that uh, th that that's the right way to to. Uh, progress this. It had been uh, the subject of debate, not just in this council chamber, at various meetings over the past couple of months, but also uh, at the PCSP itself, uh, where uh, officers there have given uh, their indication not only to fully implement the recommendations of the audit report back before the summer, but also they have given updates about how that work is underway. Uh, and indeed, uh, the, the the evidence that Karen is citing here today uh, ha has also been part of what uh, the PCSP members have uh, ha have been in receipt of. So I, I, I don't see an issue with sharing uh, that type of report with all 40 members so that people can make a decision based on all the evidence in front of them at that time. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Councillor Donnelly, have you on? But uh, as you've already spoken, I want to go to Councillor Harpin first, and then I'll, I'll I'll come back to you because I'm I'm kind of hoping that they're going to alter your proposal slightly. Um, Councillor Harpin. Thanks, Brian, for letting me in, and uh, I want to commend Gary for uh, you know being uh, persistent with this because. Uh, when, we, when he proposed this in the summer, we backed it, and, and we argued then that um, you know there's a serious problem emanating out of Stormont. Uh, many people see it as a culture of corruption with racket after racket, and we just had the RHI crisis that helped to bring down the uh, Stormont for three years, and there was a whitewash of that report. And here we are again now with like uh, another energy. Uh, green energy scandal with aerobic digesters, hundreds of millions of pounds, um, wind turbine companies giving money that they didn't need, uh, you know, people having to step down from political office. So there's a serious culture problem of corruption. And I think our council needs to be on the front foot. So for the bigger parties, for DUP and Sinn Féin, I, I still don't understand why you are so resistant. Um, to allowing transparency to fully develop here, because uh, that's what this is about. Because a lot of people will think what goes on up at Stormont will go on at the council as well. Um, and we passed a motion a couple of months ago, it was Emmons' motion, about whistleblowers, internal whistleblowers, external whistleblowers. Um, and these people come out uh, uh, when they're given encouragement. So I think people should think very carefully about things that they're blocking and blocking be seen to be blocking transparency. Um, so I think that uh, you know again, Gary has to be very persistent because that's what sometimes what's necessary. Uh, these are uncomfortable conversations, but I I think it's very clear for a lot of people that you know uh, Stormont can't be trusted, hundreds of millions of pounds at stake, and the council can't be seen to in any way. To have this sort of stuff going on, especially when so many people are falling into absolute poverty. Thank you, Councillor Hartman. Um, that's one of the, the, the reasons why I suggested that we have a report back to um, the relevant committee with um, all of the information that um, the officer has 
and got to hand. Councillor Donnelly. And Chair, Chair, I, I, I'm very, I will be deviating from my proposal because I can't understand the resistance to it, Chair. Look, if the verification for the money is there, then there's no issue. If the verification isn't there, then we claw back that money. You see, to come on here and say that it's not council money. This is public money, Chair, and it's money, public money that this council has dispensed off, right? See, coming in here and saying that it's only 0.06%, that's a, the quits the six hundred pound. That's six hundred pound over five projects out of a hundred. If there were six hundred pound in each of them five projects, that would be twelve thousand pound. Chair, it's the principle of the thing that there's money that has been dispensed and it can't be stand over. Then we need to claw it back. And if we don't, then there's people out there who are going to be asking questions: Why is all this resistance happening? Without any logical excuse. They put their own, they put two and two together and come up with their own answer. So I won't, I have no intentions of deviating from my proposal. If you want to bring a report, 100%. If the documentation, the verification all comes back, happy days, everything's sound. But we still need to verify. Thank you, Chair. Yep. Um, I, I, I'm in total agreement with you, Cutter Tony, in, in terms of verifying. Um, and, I, and I think that's why it's important that we have, and we do take the time. They allow officers to present a report which has all of the, the relevant information on it um, and then let councillors, once they have digested that and, and had a look at it and debated it, then allow councillors then to make a decision um, on whether we need, first and foremost, to claw money back. And if we do need to, whether we do, whether we do it or not or how we actually go about doing that is why I would suggest that a report by a relevant committee might be um, worthwhile before um, this proposal Apologies for dropping in. There's cigarettes that have been paid out, prizes. Paid yeah, out. I, I, I know. I know everything. That's on the, any. Uh, there has been no justification of that. How can we allow but, money to be paid out for cigarettes to, as prizes to vulnerable adults bingo session and not claim it back? But would no you not? Right. Okay, you've, you've made a proposal, Councillor Donald. Um, Councillor Ferguson, and then I'm, I'm calling this to a, a halt. Councillor Ferguson. Thank you. I just want the clarification on the proposal itself, whether or not is it a proposal that every group that doesn't um, deliver within its letter of offer, we can reclaim money back when we realise that that happens, or is it a proposal of reclaiming the money back from the PCSP? Because I think the, the PCSP, the report coming back to see whether or not that money was within the letter of offer would would be needed before we could claim it back. So I just need clarification. Is it all groups or are we just targeting this one group? No, I, I think it's all groups. Well, all, yeah, yeah, it should be right across the board. Yeah, I think it's all groups. John, are you looking to come um, in? Yeah, Mayor, um, I certainly don't want to get involved in the debate around this matter, but I do need clarification on the proposal. Um, what I've previously written down that Councillor Donnelly proposed was that in respect of the three issues, flowers, for want of a better term, flowers, um, the flight and the group meals, that if the verification isn't there, that this council uses the clawback clause to get the money back. That's what I've written down was the proposal. If the proposal has changed since, or exactly written that down, could be of clarification. Well, no, Chair, it, we're sorry, John. You're 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 hundred percent in the sentiment, hundred percent on the sentiments of it. But any issues, including cigarettes, any issues of of that money was paid out for that wasn't justified regarding that report, that audit report, any issues that arose in that report where we can't verify that the money was given out legitimately, then we should claw it back. Okay, Councillor Donnelly, thank you. You got that now? I would say as a general comment, um, members, that um, I, I, I think from now on, I'm, I'm going to require members to type into the chat box the exact wording of the proposal. Um, that's to ensure that we do carry it forward in the spirit upon which you intend and that there's no misunderstanding of the wording of the proposal. So I'm quite happy to craft this one around the spirit of what has been advised, but um, Mayor, I respect suggest um, that where proposals are coming forward uh, throughout the rest of the meeting. Uh, 
a box if you're comfortable with that, please. Yep, no worries, John. That's that's fine. Remember, um, if you if you don't mind, um, any proposals coming forward need to be put under the chat box. And I see Councillor John Boyle is declaring an interest as a membership member of the PCSP. Members, you have heard the chair. Uh, the... Can I come in just a second or to sum up? No, you can't. Um, I've already called um for the for the vote. Sorry, and you've already spoken. Thank you, Hilary McClintock, Also declaring an interest. Can I just note that? All members of the PCSP who are on this meeting, your interest will be declared um, for you. John, if you can take us through the vote um, on this proposal, please. Okay, thank you, Mayor and members. Um, Alderman Bresland? Against. Against. Alderman Guy? Against. Alderman Guy? Thank you. Alderman Carrigan? Alderman McClintock? Against. Alderman McKean? Against. Alderman Ramsey? Against. Alderman Wark? Uh, Councillor Jason Barr? Again. Say it again, please, Jason. Pray, John, abstain. Abstain, thank you. Councillor Raymond Barr? For Councillor John Boyle, the PCSP, I abstain, John. Councillor Michaela Boyle, for John. Councillor Burke, for Councillor Carr, for John. Councillor Cooper, for John. Councillor Cusick, for John. Councillor Dobbins, for John. Councillor Donnelly. For Councillor Donnelly, I assume. Councillor Duffy? For. Councillor Durkin? For. Councillor Edwards? For, John. Carl? Left. Councillor Ferguson? For, John. Councillor Fleming? For, John. Gallagher? Councillor Gallagher? Four. Thank you. Councillor Parkin. Four. Councillor Jackson. Four. Councillor Kelly. Four. Councillor Logue. Four, John. Councillor McCann. Councillor McCann. Councillor McCluskey. Four. Councillor McGuire? For John. Councillor McKee? For John. Councillor McKeever? For. Councillor McKinney? For John. Councillor Mellon? For. Councillor Mooney? Councillor Riley? I'm staying as a member of the PCSP. And Councillor Tierney? For. Thank you, members. John, could I just come in there? Sorry, could I change my vote to abstain as a member as well? That's okay. Possible. Yes. Yep. Yeah, if that's possible. Okay. Yes, yep. that's possible. That's fine. Uh -huh. Okay, Mayor, I have recorded 26 for, seven against, and four abstentions. So the proposal passes. Thank you, John, um, for that. Members, any other matters arising from the Auto Assurance and Risk Committee? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Members, I'm going to propose that we take a short break uh, before we head under the under the motions um, and suggest that we take 15 minutes. So I'll see you all back at 6.45. Um, if that's okay. John? Not okay. Right. Okay, members, I'll see you all back. Thank you.
Okay, members, if you're all happy enough, we'll kick off again. Members, item number nine is notices of motion, and the first motion is in the name of Councillor Shauna Cusack. Councillor Cusack. Normally, be moved around uh, at this time of year in, in the October month. Remember, someone has the mic unmuted, and we can hear your TV if you don't mind. Vast majority of them are being set aside. I think it's Karen McFarland. Yeah, thank you. Councillor Cusack. Um, hi, Mayor. Thanks for that. Mayor, before I get a proposal motion and get a seconder, can I make a slight change to a couple of words to make it more inclusive? Yeah. It's just there on the third line. Is that Teresa? Yeah. Can I just instead of a boy or girl, can I just insert child or young adult? Yeah, thank you. Can I get a second for that motion, please? Second that uh Judge second there. Right, Melania. Okay. Go ahead, Contra Kuchek. Okay, is the stopwatch going, yeah? It is, yes, don't okay. you worry. Mayor, firstly, I want to thank you. Uh, I'll take the motion as read, first of all. And I'd like to thank you for all the work you've already undertaken, uh, engaging with youth groups and young lobbyists, and especially local schools on this issue. And I also want to recognise the incredible work that schools are doing during this pandemic and the huge lengths they're going to to keep uh, staff, students and the community sa safe. And on behalf of the SDLP, I want to thank them for that and have that recognised. Um, Mayor, this motion is not intended to create additional pre uh, pressures on our educators at this difficult time, but to lay the foundation for a change as soon as that change is possible. And while COVID has taken over our lives, it should not prevent progress. And essentially, that's what this motion is about. It's about progress. And um, it's almost hard to believe that in this day and age, we still have a uniform policies which do not reflect our advances in fairness and equality. Uh, gender-based and steeped in outdated traditions, which by now we should have moved far beyond. And Mayor, while I respect and support the need for uniforms, and I know many schools either have or are in the process of changing their policies, there are still many that, that haven't and won't. And the SDLP believes that this should be a choice that, is, that all schools are, agree on and all students should be able to benefit from. So and on a personal note, I, I remember going to school on the bus from Derry to Straban daily um, in the winter months and walking up the curly hill, freezing in a wee skirt and, and socks and then sitting all day, you know, cold and wet and totally uncomfortable. And then they, they, they add insult to injury then on the way home, having to suffer abuse, myself and my friends, abuse, you know, with sexual jibes and, and innuendo. And that came not only from, from young lads, but it also came from uh, young adults, young males as well too. And, and that was excruciating for, for a young uh, person to have to endure, especially a young woman who's very body and self-conscious at that age. And that's something that I wouldn't want future generations to have to endure. And 35 years later, it, it seems, you know, that, have we changed much from that? So, you know, would a trouser policy, would trousers in my uniform back then have empowered me then? Definitely, yes, and, and this is something I think that um, all our students should be able to, you know, avail of to make themselves more comfortable, themselves more confident, and they and they get rid of that um, genderization of of the status. So, Mayor, while I am proud to be a conduit for this issue, it is ultimately all credit going to the campaigning of our Northwest Ministry of Youth. They should be applauded for their determination and efforts on this. And for their um, for their efforts on other issues which affect the youth in Derry, Strabane, and district, and it's their voices that we need to hear. So, Mayor, I will finish with some lines from one of their members, and that's Ellie Jo Taylor, and I think she relays very eloquently how much this matters to our young citizens. So. What she says is school is supposed to prepare us for the workplace. It is where young people go to learn and develop as people not have a stereotype of our gender enforced on us. This is the reason we want trousers for all. I see it as our duty to reject unfair policies at any stage of life. And this begins by setting an example that just because it was done in the past doesn't mean it's acceptable any longer. For too long, schools have used tradition to justify sexist and discriminatory uniform policies. Students can only benefit from feeling more comfortable in the classroom. A small inequality 
but one the Youth Council and Youth Parliament reject and ask for your support to bring change. So, members, I'm hopeless. I'm within my three minutes. Councillor Cusha, can I ask you to bring your remarks to a close, please? Am, indeed. Uh, members, our youth have spoken and asked that we, as their elected reps, listen and act to support them on this important issue, and I would ask that you all do. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cusick. Um, I, I, and you're right, I do think the, the North West um, Ministry for Youth um, do deserve some credit for, for the campaign and that they've been doing on this issue. As you rightly point out, I, I met with them um, a number of weeks ago, um, and I was particularly enthused by their passion. And, and by their dedication in terms of not only this issue, uh, but all our issues that we had discussed um, during that meeting, which, which they have been um, campaigning on, and fair play to them um, all uh, for, for doing that. Alderman McClintock. Thanks, Mayor. And can I say first thanks to uh, Councillor Cusack for bringing this forward, and a great big thanks to all those young people who have been lobbying all of us, both in the Ministry of Youth and other people from various schools around the district. This is an outdated policy that our schools are still maintaining, or some of our schools are still maintaining. It is ludicrous in this day and age to force girls to wear skirts. I'm sure, Mayor, if we could uh, look around this virtual chamber tonight, there's probably not one female on this call, or very few anyway, that are wearing skirts. It's not just something that happens in society, and it's not right that we are asking girls at school to, to wear skirts. It goes back, it is quite sexist, it goes back to the time when boys were considered to be more active and girls less active and more demure. And it, it actually reminds me of the time back in 2016 when campaigners um, were talking about women in the workforce were being forced to wear high heels if they worked in an office. And it's the same sort of thing. We are, we are forcing our young girls to wear skirts whether or not they want to. Uh, I think it, it is really time that this was challenged. The few that girls must wear uh, skirts uh, to school is completely outdated. So uh, absolutely we'll be supporting this, this motion. Thank you. Thank you, um, Alderman uh, McClendick. Members, I have Councillor Ferguson, McCluskey, Harkin, and Mellon on the list. If I haven't called your name, I'm Rusty, um, so we can let me know. Councillor Ferguson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you, Councillor Cusack and Northwest Ministry for bringing this. Um, like Alderman McClintock had said, this is an outdated practice that doesn't reflect our society today. Studies show that it's restrictive. And you have to adapt the way you sit, you walk, and the activities of what you can do. We feel that everybody should have the right to choose the uniform that they wear. Um, we understand the need for the uniform, but we think that it to be able to choose what you wear promotes confidence, which then in turn help your learning. So thank you again, Councillor Cusack, for bringing this forward, and we fully support it. Sorry, members, I thought I was on mute there. Um, Councillor McCluskey. <clears throat> Yeah, just very briefly. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I won't support this motion. I think that school uniform policy should be the job of schools and parents to decide, uh, Board of Governors. Um, I know that a lot of schools, I mean, I'm all for uh, girls wearing trousers at school if that's, what they, if that's what they want to do, but I think it's something that it has, it's not the business of government or any aspect of government or of this council to try and dictate to schools what their uniform policy should be. I think, as I say, that's a job for the schools and for the parents and for the for the, 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 the students themselves, obviously, and that those conversations should be had in the school setting and certainly not in the council chamber. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McCluskey. Councillor Harkin. Councillor Harkin. Thank you. Thanks, well, Chair. Uh, yeah. yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, uh, People Before Profit will be uh, fully supporting this motion, and um, uh, we do commend the uh, all the young people that have campaigned for this over many, many years. Um, I mean, the, the first successful campaign was back in Dunhamore in 2007, uh, when uh, the school board there was challenged and uh, reversed its policy on allowing students to wear trousers. And there's been, you know, this has been, this is a decades long campaign uh, for of young people to be, uh, you know, allowed to choose 
uh, well, at what they were at school. And I think it's fully appropriate that we discuss this here um, because this is something that more and more people are clearly coming around to. And uh, there's even been cases where, uh, you know, petitions have been uh, very successful at schools here in Derry, uh, where the Board of Governors has then been ignoring the demands of students. So I think the Council should add its voice and call on the schools to catch up with those schools that have already, uh, you know, changed their policies. Um, <clears throat> this is about challenging sexism, because uh, what this ends up being is young women uh, often aren't allowed to wear, uh, you know, trousers to school, uh, where they will wear them to work, they will well wear them in their social life, but they're not allowed to wear them in school. And it's not just about trousers, it's about many, many other things. And it's about treating people uh, equally, it's about treating people with respect. Um, and so I, I think we have to fully commend all the campaigning, because this campaigning hasn't come at a price, has come at a price for some students who were marginalised, uh, uh, and uh, victimised for standing up and demanding this, um, and so they have to be uh, acknowledged as well. So I think we should pass this. I think we should be active about it. Um, uh, this is a we've been we've met with the student uh, the young people ourselves from the Northwest Ministry of Youth, um, and I I think as well it'd be great. Uh, this is a platform, and I would have loved to have heard directly from the young people, and maybe that's something we can consider doing with a deputation. Uh, Councillor Hartman, can I ask you to bring your remarks to a close, please? So I'll finish on that point. Uh, it'd be great to pass this motion, but in addition to that, uh, hear from the young people themselves at a deputation at some point in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harkin. Councillor Mellon. Thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you, Dave. Councillor Cusack, for bringing this motion forward on behalf of the children and young people who have been lobbying for the Trousers for All campaign. Sinn Féin will be supporting this motion and I know I've spoken to some of the young people from the North West Ministry of Youth as well and our MLA Karen Mullen, who is the education spokesperson for the party within the executive, has met them also a few weeks back. She has also um, written out to all primary schools within the Derry and Strabane district, praising those who have already aligned themselves with the objectives of the campaign and calling for those who haven't they align themselves with the objectives. She has also written to the uh, Minister of Education, Asin Humphrey, uh, to pledge his support as well. And really, um, I think that all councillors and aldermen within this chamber should commend young people for using their politicians and using their elected representatives, because whilst they may not yet have a vote, they are very much entitled to use us as representatives of their views. Um, having young people going into school and dictating whether they should put on a skirt or trousers should be, should not be acceptable to them for them to go into their workplace and then automatically be given the right to challenge it. They should always have the choice on what, what they're comfortable with. It shouldn't only become sexist um, whenever they get to a certain age. It should be something that is a right for everyone to feel comfortable within their own skin that they can wear to school for an education. A skirt or trousers won't dictate the education, but the choice will uh, and the right to assert your rights over it. This council is aspiring to become a child-friendly city, and I hope that we see more motions coming into this council on behalf of young people and children to express their voices and to have them have a part of decision-making decision within this council. So again, thanks to Councillor Cusack, and I commend all young people and the children as well who are using this forum and us as platforms to show their views within society. Thank you, Councillor Mellon. Councillor Donnelly. Thanks, Chair. Chair, I'll keep it short and sweet. <clears throat> First of all, I'd like to thank the young people, the activists who brought it to this stage, and Councillor Cusick, who's brought it to uh, Council here today. Just happy to support. Uh, I'm not going to go into reasons they've been eloquently put by by the previous speakers who've uh, spoken in favour. So uh, happy to add my support. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Donnelly. Members, there's no further speakers um, to this motion. So I'm going to allow Councillor Cusack the opportunity to sum up. Councillor Cusack. Thank you, and thank you absolutely everybody who supported this mo motion. I'm sure the youth will be really, really pleased, and they should be very, very proud of themselves, as everybody said. I am disappointed at uh, Councillor McCluskey. I, I do feel 
that government has an awful lot of say in educational matters and why it shouldn't also be lobbied regarding this matter, which obviously is such a passionate issue for our young students. So uh, I would like to just end on that. Like, you know, at the end of the day, it's their futures, it's their voice, and we should be listening to them. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cusack. Members, going by um, your, all of the, the contributions, the only person that I'm hearing speaking against this motion is Councillor McCloskey. So I, I don't want to put us through another full roll call just um, for, for that. Members are happy enough and the ticket is read in that vein. Is that sound okay with you, John, the Chief Executive? Um, yeah, um, Mayor, I'm happy with that. I'm going to record um, that there are 37 uh, for and one against. There are currently two missing that I'm aware of. Okay, thank you for that, John. Um, and that motion in the name of Councillor Shauna Kuczak, um has, has passed. Thank you, Councillor Kuczak. The next motion, members, is in the name of Councillor Sean Mooney. Councillor Mooney. Yes, Chair, thank you. Um, I appreciate it if you take the motion as read. No worries. No worries, Councillor Mooney. Have you got a second there for your motion? I think Councillor Dobbins has just come in there in the chat box. Second that, Brian. I put it on the chat. Okay, thanks. Remember, just bear with me. I'm trying to watch an iPad, a laptop, and a stopwatch. So just bear with me, please, if, I, if I'm missing anything in the chat box. Go ahead, Councillor Mooney. Thank you, Chair. Chair, people affected by dementia have been worst hit by the coronavirus pandemic, facing devastation at home, in their community, and in care homes. Alzheimer's Society published a report on Tuesday, the 29th September, entitled Worst Hit Dementia During Coronavirus. It's available online. The effects of the outbreak cannot be undone, but urgent action can be taken to better protect people ahead of the winter and in the future. To make this happen, we need government to address the reality of lockdown for people affected by dementia. From the high death rate in care homes to the significant cognitive decline in those who live in the community, to the rising mental health challenges for unpaid carers, the pandemic has had a severe impact while exposing our fragmented social care system for all to see. The Society's new report shines a light on the impact of coronavirus on people who have dementia and those who care. It must be noted that over a quarter of people who died with COVID-19 from March to June had dementia. The largest increase in excess non-COVID-19 deaths was in people with dementia. For people who survived the crisis, the effects of social isolation were severe. Regular health and social service care checks were put on hold, creating a backlog of people who have missed out on essential support. In our Western Trust area at this moment in time, 491 people waiting for access to dementia services, and 379 of those have been waiting for over nine weeks to access this type of service. While this report is focused primarily on England and Wales, there's still significant learning in there for those with similar responsibilities in Northern Ireland. The Alzheimer's Society have joined with many other dementia charities to campaign as one voice, as people living with dementia in care homes need regular visitor contact, as it's vital for their mental health and upkeep of communication skills. Family members often also can provide care and ongoing contact brings benefits to their care as well as the person in the care home. But worryingly and separate from COVID-19, there has been a large increase in the number of deaths of people who have dementia, indicating that reduced social interactions are exacerbating the difficulties faced by those living with the, this disease. Uh, in conclusion, Chair, in relation to our Council, the Health Centre Society can provide a dementia-friendly workshop for elected representatives and staff. Dementia-friendly communities are vital in helping people live well with dementia and remain a part of their community. The workshop that can be provided can be done virtually and usually lasts for around one hour. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, um, Councillor Mooney. Councillor Michaela Boyle. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Um, on behalf of the Sinn Féin Party, I'd like to bring in the motion forward. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic has raised many, many issues on staying safe and keeping our most vulnerable and elderly safe, safe in their own homes and safe in our care home settings. And some of our care home settings across the north and indeed across the island, there's been many cases of almost all elderly residents testing po positive of COVID. And in one care home alone here in the north, uh, all of the 39 residents have been confirmed as having tested positive. 
Um, however, from the 1st of August, people identified as clinically extremely vulnerable and who had been shielding had the choice to stop shielding unless their doctor told them otherwise. And if you fit it into the extremely vulnerable category, um, in addition, people with dementia, their risk of COVID-19 wasn't as high as the shielded group unless they too had the conditions that are in the extremely vulnerable category. However, people with dementia and many of their older cares are at a higher risk than the general population, therefore making people with dementia more susceptible and vulnerable on health grounds to COVID-19. Chair, as the pressures on our hospitals continue to mount, we need to ensure our elderly population, particularly those with dementia, are a priority when it comes to ensuring their well-being being be it in a hospital or care setting and again like councillor mooney i want to allude to the recent alzheimer's society report on the provision of respite care and cares assessment which identified many challenges around the lack of appropriate dementia services for people and their families living with dementia a shortage of appropriate respite places and care providers some cares feeling that they're not being listened to when it comes to their personal life juggling family life with, whilst looking after a relative with dementia. So carers as well need to know that they are not alone and social workers are key to this. Having access to the relevant support and work worker is vital and comforting for families who have uh, a relative with a dementia. There's unbearable pressures on families and they need the proper services and support in place to look after their loved ones with dementia, particularly those with complex needs. Mayor, I support the call and the motion for the Council to build on the work of the Alzheimer's Society by creating or create dementia-friendly uh, communities and by doing so by raising increasing staff awareness. I would echo the call for Council to host the virtual dementia-friendly workshop to support staff in their work. I'm aware of the work that Betty and our school, uh, museum services is involved Councillor in. Boyle, can I ask you to bring your remarks to a close? Uh, the work that the council is involved in and access and inclusion, and this would complement the work with local groups and organisations uh, uh, locally within our communities, and it fits well within our equality agenda. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Mooney. Thank you, Councillor Boyle. Alderman McKean. Yeah. Uh, am I unmuted? Where do I get this thing unmuted here? I'm, on, I'm unmuted. <laughs> Are you on? You. They're unmuted. Go ahead. Thank you, Chair. A wee bit like yourself. I'm looking at two or three different things at the one time. But uh, no, thank you for letting me in and um, happy to support the motion. Uh, having a uh, uh, limited knowledge of Alzheimer's disease and working and caring for people who have Alzheimer's disease, uh, uh, it's a very progressive and debilitating disease. And psycholo psychological therapies are essential. And uh, cognitive stimulation therapies are proven to have worked very well, and th th that's a big name for for it's not maybe that's simple enough, you know, uh, music uh, or even the, a relative's voice or or p things that people can identify identify with because Alzheimer's in some cases, um, the body stops working but the mind is still alert, and um, I would great uh, be support of the motion and. Uh, Thank Councillor Mooney for bringing the motion forward. I think it's very worthwhile. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Alderman McCain. Councillor Alderman McClumpick. Thank you for letting me in. Um, coronavirus has hit our elderly people very hard. The isolation, the health worries, the separation at times of illness and hospitalisation when family and friends can't visit. And for those, for many of those suffering from dementia and their families, this has really been particularly challenging. And I think all of us who have close contacts with dementia sufferers know the confusion that comes with, with the condition. People don't understand why they cannot see family members at this time. They may be confused at the lack of their usual routine and they lose cognitive functions very easily during the lockdown uh, times because they're losing uh, opportunities for social contact. And many probably most of those are not able to communicate through phone or through FaceTimes or social media, especially in the later stages. And it is so worrying. I know yesterday the figures that were that we had 100 care homes again with uh, cases of COVID in it. I haven't got today's figures. It is a cruel disease and separation has a devastating effect on both the person who has the disease and their family as well. We appreciate the importance of keeping them safe but um, I think there, it is good to know that there is 
there has been more done this the fog of support book and hopefully that will be taken on board as we go forward uh, i suppose somebody who has a very personal interest in it i would just like to finish off by saying that i want to pay tribute to all of those in our care homes and all those who are home carers as well for the fantastic work they do during challenging times and just to fully support this notice of motion thank you mayor thank you um alderman mcclantic members i have no other um indicated speakers at this point i'm going to allow uh councillor mooney to sum up councillor mooney thank you mayor i'd just like to thank um councillor boyle um alderman mccain and alderman um, mcclantic for coming in there with their very kind Remarks and this is a motion I think that uh, brings council together. It's a very, um, it's a very important subject because I think a lot of people in the chamber and um, members, this is a matter that touches everybody. Um, it's a horrible disease that inflicts a horrible life on those who suffer from it, and it has ripple effects for everyone. So I'm really glad I could bring this motion and put it forward to council, and I'm really glad that the council has come in. That's thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you, um, Councillor Mooney. Members, there's no one um, that I have heard has spoken against this motion. So uh, once again, I'm going to take it as read, unless um, members are aware that they don't want to back it. And just to point out, Councillor Riley um, has declared an interest in this motion. Okay, happy to record that as unanimous, then, Mayor. Yep. Yes, John. Thank you. Thank you. Next motion is in the name of Councillor Cooper. Councillor Cooper. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. I'll take us red. red. So uh, 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 we need a seconder just first. Seconded there, Brian. Sandra here. Thank you, um, Councillor Duffy. Go ahead, Councillor Cooper. Thank you, Mayor. So. Uh, Members will be aware a number of weeks ago I proposed that the council should establish a, a job creation and skills units uh, with the sort of wider aim of synergizing the efforts of both our council and our agencies and government departments to ensure that all the job creation and skills development opportunities uh, that existed currently <clears throat> were going to be maximized and built on for the future. And obviously we're aware of papers coming on uh, the committee before the end of the year on that uh, on that wider proposal. And uh, one key theme that I, I think must be included in any new strategy is the issue of youth unemployment in particular, uh, which has been a scourge in the city for many, many years. And um, you know, while in the past that was in particularly, in particular relating to the male uh, sector uh, <coughs> or the male population, uh, the decline in the retail and service sectors, which have traditionally employed more younger females, that's obviously in decline as well. So it's going to obviously have an impact uh, across the boards and, and for both genders uh, in, in the coming years. Uh, we do know as well that many of the young people who end up in the dole come from lower social and economic backgrounds, and a lot of them are, are end up on the dole in the summer period in particular, and they meet it aftermath of leaving school. And in many cases, this creates a vicious cycle. As the longer they remain unemployed, the more difficult it becomes to get them back into the, the cycle of work or or training. And that's why it's key we have to target these people the minute that they they leave education. And there are obviously many training organisations in the city doing a certain job and upskilling. Our young people and there's work being done by government departments other agencies in the same subject but there is a key issue um that a lot of those who are leaving school in the summer the idea of going straight into further training it doesn't particularly appeal to them to be blunt we all know what we were like when we were 16 years old uh and there's partly the reasons for that are also financial and that means from the very beginning the end the vicious cycle begins so we have to look at ways of trying to engage them in, in terms of employment uh in, in terms of keeping them in that cycle of work and then using that to, to get them on the idea of uh of retraining as well or upskilling themselves the other issue is i mean we know this uh many sort of not many but some of these young people end up becoming involved in anti-community activities um which leads them to youth organizations spending large sums of money on diversionary activities uh now this might reduce issues in local areas um but in many ways it's a wasted resource because we could use it more productively if it was uh, money that was spent then in collaboration with other match funding from uh, from other agencies to develop basically summer employment programs which would see young people paid a decent wage spend their time productively and more crucially get them under the world of work before they get used to being unemployed and for many that's a slippery slope as we already said the longer term unemployment and to create these jobs is crucial the council and others with their skills and job creation remit engage with the youth service providers in the city 
They discuss how they could pull resources and ensure that the right types of jobs are created and that are most beneficial to both the employees and the local communities are coming from. And that's the reason why we're suggesting the council looks at the Boston so the example where Mayor Marty Walsh did spearhead a program which now employs thousands of young people each summer, but also crucially signpost them to all their job and upscale on opportunities at the end of the program so they're not just left hanging and uh, not left in limbo. Once the summer employment scheme, scheme ends, they're signposted in the right direction to keep them either in, in work or... Uh, Councillor Cooper, can you bring your remarks to yep. tools, please? <clears throat> no bar. So I, mean, I think this approach will produce major results, very low financial cost to council and other match funders, and it's crucial we address this in particular with the COVID situation. This is a key building block. So I will commend the motion to the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor John Boyle. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, again, I, I like uh, most other speakers, I intend to try and keep this uh, brief, Mayor. Um, uh, the SBLP are, are entirely supportive of, of this particular motion that's brought forward by Councillor Cooper. I think it's important to reflect on uh, uh, the idea that uh, we do consider our council to be progressive and, and, and has brought forward many um, useful and imaginative um, programs uh, to support young people. But of course, having actually looked across the detail of the, of the Boston City Youth Employment Scheme, and albeit um, Boston's a very different kind of a place today, there are certainly many opportunities for learning in that particular program. Can I just thank Councillor Cooper actually for bringing it forward uh, to us here today for consideration. That's, uh, you know, how it is that we <coughs> operated and make it from here on forward is certainly well worth um, uh, investigating. And of course, all of us here um, will reflect on our own experiences uh, as young people and as teenagers who perhaps thought that there was very little in the way of any hope um, uh, in the future uh, for, for, for a myriad and various different reasons, um, uh, all of which I, of course, haven't got the time to go into tonight. Um, one of the... Uh, one, something again that, that most people will of course appreciate it is that, that, that one of our probably our biggest export is our talent um, uh, our young people uh, grow up here they get educated here um, and sadly many of them do leave and there's never an opportunity for them to return um, but I th this is an important way of course uh, of supporting those who never will leave um, and, uh, and actually creating a, a workforce of the future and I do agree with one of our sentiments as expressed by Councillor Cooper and that is that we um, uh, should certainly be encouraging people to get used to the idea of being in work. But clearly and very, very importantly, there must must be support mechanisms that come off the back of a program like this. Uh, we, we obviously don't want to be leaving people hanging in the air uh, after they, they have uh, completed uh, uh, their, uh, their training. Um, and, you know, really for me, it's really about addressing um, the perceived lack of opportunity that is there for our young people in our city and district. Um, and of course... We Councillor are, Boyle, can I ask you to bring your remarks to close, please? Certainly can. Chair, just to finish off, obviously this is embryonic and I look forward to uh, seeing the outworkings of it as things progress. Um, so again, thank you to Councillor Cooper and I'm very, very happy on behalf of the SDLP. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Boyle. Councillor Ferguson? Thank you, Mayor, and uh, thank you, Councillor Cooper. Um, we see this as a very progressive approach. Uh, Councillor Cooper touched on it, where uh, further education isn't necessarily the right track for many of our uh, younger uh, residents within our area, and some of that may not be become, maybe because of interest. Others could be because of the high deprivation and pressures to leave education and go into a low paid job. I think that this uh, motion is brilliant and the, the fact that the, the word around decent wage, as we know, um, many of our young people hold up low paid positions and coming out of the pandemic, this will just be more barriers for them as people will be losing their jobs, um, unfortunately, and it would be harder to get into this first time uh, employment. So we're happy to support this. We think it's brilliant and it, it, it'd be a great compliment to the training and the the, the, the the other projects that we have within the area. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ferguson. Alderman Ward. Uh, thank you, Mayor, for letting us in. And thank you, Councillor Jackson, also for bringing this motion forward. Um, Probably, Councillor Jackson, to your aware, a lot of the youth workers around this city would bring these types of programming during the summer and work with local businesses throughout the city to get more or less these young people and they work. And 
I'd welcome any program. We have obviously had programs for you, Council, the likes of Kickstart Day work. And uh, it's it's obviously, I'm looking here at the age group. You're looking at, I know, the one in Boston that was more or less, I think, from, I think it was, or sorry, it was 15 to 21. And obviously the Kickstart Day works from, what, 16 to 24. So from that age bracket, even 21, it probably sort of push that up a bit. But I definitely welcome this program. Um, for youth diversion, but obviously, like, um, yes, it will take a phone and it'll take a buddy a budget away from that there. And we, these young people, on sort of some type of employment. But to be honest, with um, motions like this coming through this council tonight, I think we'll need more money for youth diversion. But I'm happy enough to welcome this motion. Thank you. Thank you, um, Alderman Work, and I'm sure, um, Contra Jackson will. Our country quickly will will appreciate um, your remarks. Members, there's no further indicated speakers on this motion, so I'm going to ask Councillor Cooper to sum up, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, glad that uh, there seems to be unanimous, unanimous support uh, in terms of Councillor or Alderman Wark's comments here at the end. I mean, the, the whole logic of this motion is that you know we're targeting people from that 15, 16, in particular 16 um age group upwards is not restrictive to one particular age but we know, know from experience i think across the city and district that uh, that 16 year old age group and in some cases 18 year olds as well that when they're leaving school uh, with maybe not enough qualifications or disillusion for all sorts of other reasons um that in particular they need to be targeted but we're not well, i wouldn't be prescriptive about um those two specific ages um so the Boston example, I think, uh, shows that a collaborative approach is key, and and uh, council or Alderman work refer to existing programs. But we know there's existing programs. This is more about synergizing all of those, and also council becoming directly involved with the other relevant government departments in particular, <clears throat> so that again, small amounts of money that could be or might be spent uh, on whether it's diversionary activities or other programs, if they're pulled together, they'll have much, they'll be much bigger impact, much better bang for your buck, basically. So. That's the logic of, of taking this approach and making sure we're filling all the gaps as well when it comes to um, the different subsections of those who are unemployed because they all have their own specific issues. So very, very happy that the motion has uh, hopefully been supported unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, um, Councillor Cooper. Um, I haven't certainly haven't heard anyone speaking against it, um, so I'm going to take it as unanimous um, unless anyone uh, makes me aware of anything different. No. Okay, that motion has passed unanimously. Um, in the name of Councillor Pepper. Members, the next motion is in the name of Councillor Donnelly. Councillor Donnelly. Thank you, Chair. Just you it as yeah, go ahead. Chair, uh, the Council will oppose to the extent of its remit the implementation of the British government's co covert human intelligence source criminal conduct bill, which provides authority to sanction or commit criminal acts with impunity. This is an anti-democratic authoritarian bill that extends the British government's right to break the law and breach na human rights in the name of national security. We will call on all those who have an interest in protecting human rights, including trade unions, advocacy advocacy groups, civil liberties, and human rights organizations and our bodies which promote the democratic process to do all in their power to voice their concerns and oppose this bill. Chair, uh, three, I understand we have only three minutes. The Hold on, before you... Sorry? I need a seconder for your motion. Councillor Gallagher seconded on, on the chat box there. Go ahead, Councillor Donnelly. Thanks, Chair. Chair, in, in effect, that this this bill will allow state agents to commit crimes, to the uh, stay undercover. Uh, there's no limit to what crimes they can commit, Chair. This can include uh, murder, torture, or uh, sexual violence. And the history of this of this country, Chair, we you know, you would need a week to, to outline it, but. I think we have to, you know, to give a, a snapshot. We look at what happened in, in Kinkora, where there was a child uh, sex ring established and run by British intelligence in, all, in order to entrap people and encourage them to work for them. We've had the murder of Margaret Perry, who inadvertently discovered uh, an agent. She was only 26. We've had the murder of uh, human rights lawyers, Pat Finucane, Rosemary Nelson. These murders were carried out and organized 
by British intelligence, the murder of Martin O'Hagan, a, a, a journalist. Chair, the list is endless. Uh, you know, as I said, you could, you could sit here for a week and outline it. I think the fact that, that our, our own local police force, the PSNI chair, the British police force in Ireland, 40% of its budget is controlled by British intelligence. This has huge ramifications. Uh, you know, the, the, these, this will allow British intelligence to, to target environmental groups, civil rights groups, trade unionists, commit crimes and, and, and act with, with impunity. Uh, we've already seen evidence of, of British agents infiltrating campaign groups uh, like the Stephen Lawrence uh, Justice Campaign, like the Justice for the Craig Avon 2 campaign recently. So I think that, that this, this should be supported and that this council uh, should do everything in its power to highlight this. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Donnelly. Members, I had a number of you who were firing on the, the chat box here that you wanted to speak, so I'm just going to go through the list, the list just to make sure that I've got everyone. Councillor McCluskey, Mooney, Ferguson, Alderman Work, Paul Fleming, Councillor McCann and Councillor Paul Gallagher are all on the, on the list in that order. If I didn't call your name, I've missed you and I apologise, but if you can let me know. So, Councillor Anne McCluskey. Thank you, Mayor. Um, well, I watched the, the third reading of this bill um, with absolute horror. Uh, it, you know, I listened to what was going on in the House of Commons. Um, this passed its third reading. Uh, this is the, the Tory uh, government uh, put this forward and it passed its third reading by 318 votes to 98. I know a few people, um, the, the, the so called opposition. In, in the UK, um, the, the, the largely absent uh, Labour Party um, were told to abstain and some of them resigned uh, because, because of that, that, that um, suggestion. Um, not only will this allow uh, rape, murder, torture uh, and, and uh, other heinous crimes against people who are, who are um, considered to be a threat to, to the, the national security or preventing uh, but, but sorry, the proposed authorizations aren't only in the interest of national security, these things are going to be allowed, or of preventing and detecting crime, but also in preventing, and I put it in very common, disorder and the interest of the economic well-being of the United Kingdom. This is truly horrific, and it 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 certainly uh, puts me in, in great very great fear of an absolute totalitarian regime, which for reasons unknown to themselves, this Tory government seemed determined to push through. I think this bill must be resisted. It's gone to the House of Lords now and it's not expected to be opposed there. And all I can say is God help anybody who um, uh, gets on the wrong side of that particular piece of legislation. Not only uh, MI5 and, and, and state agents and police and army and stuff like that, but people such as the HM, the Revenue Committee Commission, and the Food Standards Agency are going to be allowed to use these, you know, these things are not going to be criminalised and it's it's completely horrific. And I commend Councillor Donnelly for bringing the motion forward and support it 100%. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McCluskey. Councillor Mooney. Yes, Chair, thank you, Chair. Um, um, I can actually speak on this motion by the SEO by the SDLP, as you will know, um, Colin Eastwood, this matter himself, on the 15th of October passed, and as you know, he spoke against this motion. Um, my understanding is that the Covert Human Intelligence Sources Bill, or the Spy Cops Bill, as it's known as, is currently sweeping its way through the UK Parliament. The essence of the bill is to provide an express power to authorise agents to, to possibly participate in conduct, which would always be considered a criminal offence. As Councillor McCluskey has outlined, the sanctions can only be granted for the following issues, national security, prevention or detection of crime or disorder, and the nebulous concept of the economic well-being of the country. As Councillor McCluskey has said, the powers can even extend and be authorised to the Food Standards Agency. Why? We don't know. But the main difficulty that we have with this is that there's absolutely no provision for any judicial oversight, and the bill does not rule out any authorisations that could actually relate to actions relating to any cases of murder, torture, 
invaders of all kinds. This does not provide any um, public confidence that these requested powers will be exercised with care or with any proper regard to the human rights provisions that are already in place. This jurisdiction knows only too well the experience of and the use of informants and agents acting outside the law and from any, and from any proper form of oversight. So the difficulty we have is just what we just alluded to and uh, and we would actually advocate and support the motion brought by Councillor Nolly. Thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you, Councillor Mooney. Councillor Ferguson. Thank you, Mary, and I'll keep it short and sweet. Uh, I think any bill that um, had an amendment to limit crimes such as murder, torture and rape that didn't go through is, is just atrocious. There is no justification for uh, any of those horrendous acts. Um, our MP Stephen Farry actually voted against this also in the House of Commons, and today we will be supporting the motion because for us this, this is just um, atrocious that this went through. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ferguson. Alderman Ward. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mayor. Um, the first duty of any government is to protect their people from harm. There is many threats in Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK on a daily basis, many of which are hidden in the shadows and never reveal themselves until, the, until it's too late. We also need to consider those we trust and keep us safe and give them the powers, not inhabiting them to do what they do. Our security service is the only ever as good as the tools that their operators are given and the legal framework in which they work. This bill provides further insurance policies against those who seek to destroy the freedoms of citizens and we all take for granted. I am comfortable that the government continues to do what they, what is, is most to give our intelligence services what they need to do their job. The DEP will not be supporting Gary Donnelly's motion. And I want to take this opportunity to thank all our intelligence services for the job they do and the lives they have saved, not only in this city and the rest of Northern Ireland over the years, and stay safe. Thank you, um, Alderman Work. Councillor Paul Fleming. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Brian. And hope all's well. Look forward to seeing you out and about. And as a mayor, Brian, Brian uh, on behalf of Sinn Fein, just support Councillor Donnelly's motion. Did speak about this at given history here. People of England uh, want to know implications of this bill. Uh, what to do is look at the history of Britain's rule since the 70s. Burke's Bar, Dublin bombings, Brian Nelson, killing of Rosemary Nelson, Pat Finucane, killing of hundreds of innocent Catholics, Protestants, and dissenters, all under the auspices of the so called uh, state agents. That The, and the, our experience here should uh, reinvigorate people to oppose this bill, and it is opposed. I know it's part of Gary's motion by a number of different groups and groups here from here who have fought for years. And I just, on behalf of Sinn Féin, congratulate all of the families who, years and years mm -hmm. after, their loved ones have been killed by state sponsored murder, are still campaigning for truth and justice. Sinn Féin supports them on this, and we will continue to oppose the Tories as we've always opposed. Thank you, Councillor Fleming. Councillor McGann. Yes, I uh, uh, will speak in favour uh, of this motion. I must say, that firstly, that I was surprised and deeply disappointed by uh, the tone. I suppose more than the content of uh, what Alderman Work has just said. I, I mean, it is perfectly, it's plainly obvious. It's got nothing to do with orange or green politics. It's to do with democracy. That if you look at the powers which uh, this bill confers, sort of, and part of the secret service. I mean, it, it, no matter what your other politics, it seems to me that you ought to be uh, uh, aghast at what's being proposed. The. Uh, 
it, 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 MI5, some of the other uh, agencies, have ridden roughshod all over the most basic democratic principles in recent times. Now, by strange coincidence, before I come on here, if I was a bit discombobulated uh, earlier, it's because, and please excuse me for this, I was simultaneously involved sort of in a question and answer session into a, a hall in London where I was speaking alongside Stephen Lawrence, son, sorry, nephew, sort of of the young man who was killed 27 years ago. Doesn't seem like 27, does it? And I was talking to him and it struck me how little has changed. We've read over this last few days more and more about the nefarious activities of undercover police, sort of an undercover security services, infiltrating the Stephen Lawrence campaign and other campaigns ar around the same time to uh, an attempt to discredit them out of, uh, a, and, to, and then put, and put them off course. And here we are all these years later talking to a nephew sort of, of Stephen Lawrence. When I turn around and I hear one of our own councillors saying that he supported all the powers given to MI5 and the like, sort of, and uh, uh, AE and uh, what they were doing here in the North. MI5, we often uh, uh, forget, actually has, with the word of British cabinet ministers for, the, ministers for this, has got primacy in policing in Northern Ireland. MI5 has. And let us remember, I don't usually say much good about the SDLP, but the only major party when that happened to take a stand against it was the SDLP. It was Mark Durkin who stood outside police headquarters, sort of a knock, isn't it, uh, with a placard, sort of uh, against that. Nobody else did because it was interfering with peace and all that and a peace process. Uh, and, uh, they, uh, Councillor are, McCann, Councillor McCann, yeah. as much as I'd love to hear you, um, all right, I'll just say one sentence because I would hate to leave it uh, <laughs> just, uh, just like that. I mean, at a, a, I say, in the name of democracy, we are uh, a rendering democracy meaningless. When I say we, I'm talking about the state, not just in Britain, but it's Britain that we're dealing with uh, 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 here. That might find a murder gang. We know that in the north. There's been a murder gang all over Europe and wherever else, sir, it's an MI6 is real. Okay. I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Councillor McCann. Councillor Paul Gallagher. Councillor Gallagher. Thank you, Mayor, for letting us in. I just, I would just like to uh, put a challenge to uh, Councillor Warwick and, and, and DUP uh, on their speaking on this motion and ask them, and I'll take a thought, ask themselves who was protecting Arlene Arkinson? Ask them that. A young girl from this district disappeared, feared murdered. Murdered by who? Robert Howard. Ask yourself, who was Robert Howard? He was a former, protected by the state. We seen at, at the coroner's court, served with the public interest immunity application to hide the confidential information where he was protected. What did this man do? He went on after that, bummed and boasted about killing Arlington, uh, Arlene Arkinson and getting away with it. And then he went on to murder more young women in England, protected by the state, protected by this covert human intelligence. That's who protected them. Who was protecting the Ireland? Ask themselves that when they vote tonight. This bill needs a post. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Gallagher. Councillor Hartman. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> and uh, as my colleague Eamon McCann said, we'll be supporting Councillor Donnelly's uh, motion and uh, we commend him for bringing this to uh, to the Council. I think it's very important that we from Derry and Strabane, uh, who have direct experience uh, with MI5, with British intelligence, send a message uh, to everybody involved in this debate and uh, on this question and that we lead on this question. Um, I wasn't surprised that the DUP uh, came out in full support. I mean, they've made it very, very clear in here on numerous occasions that they oppose lawbreaking. 
they would oppose, they said, a pensioner refusing to pay their TV licence. But they seem to support in this bill uh, the right of the state to break whatever law it wants, uh, as long as they can say that it had to do uh, with their uh, services. Um, so that's utter, utter, utter hypocrisy, and most people can see right through it. Um, this is, uh, as people have outlined, uh, this is this would legalise all of the kind of collusion uh, and use of informers that we've seen in the north. All those people who've died, um, all all those things that are completely wrong and illegal. This would legalise it. That's what that's what's at stake in this bill. It's this is why the trade union movement uh, has opposed this. Women's rights campaigners, anti-racist. So I think we have to send a very clear message. I will say. Um, I was very disappointed at the leadership that our MP from Derry, Colm Eastwood, gave in this. He went, uh, he told us to fight the Tories. He didn't speak in this question once until the final reading on the last act. He should have been leading on this from Derry. He should have been saying to the Labour Party, you can't abstain in this question. We have to fight this down the line. So we should keep on campaigning in this. We should demand far more of our representatives. And we should stand in solidarity with everybody here in the north and across the water that's campaigning to stop this from becoming law. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harkin. Councillor Raymond Barr. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'll be supporting this bill 100% or this uh, proposal 100%. The, the timing of this bill coming when it does during the COVID 19 crisis. It certainly adds weight to the so-called conspiracy theorists. This is an attack on trade unionists, human rights activists, anybody whose face doesn't fit with uh, the government. So as well documented here, like we've seen in cases like the Pat Finucane murder, the activities like Glenn Ann Gang, whose state-sponsored murder was organised, accepted, condoned, sanctioned by the government. But they put the ability of undercover operatives to commit criminal offences such as murder, torture, and sexual crime on a statutory footing beggars belief and a society that claims to be democratic. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Barr. Alderman Devaney. Thank you, Mayor. Can you hear me? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor, for allowing me in. And I have to say uh, it's Republicans Unite evening here today or this evening uh, online. Um, I just want to go back to some of the, 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 the discussions in around MI5 and protection. You know, many of these people did protect many lives across Northern Ireland. And I, I want to just go back to um, uh, Councillor Fleming's remarks um, regarding the issues since 1970. One thing I want to say, in many, many cases, um, the Army or whoever it may have been MI5 have records. There are not many have records of who Republicans murdered in the city here in Londonderry or Straban or, or across Northern Ireland. And I have to say uh, on the issue of uh, murder, you know, they're looking for clarity and information and who, there are a lot of names uh, mentioned was murdered here tonight. And it's just a coincidence that I happened to read last week, uh, 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 someone on Facebook, regarding the murder of Mr. Gillespie, the first human bomb used by Republicans to murder British soldiers. And I wonder, you know, where was the security for that man? And where is the sense of the records of who may have murdered that man? And I could sit here all night, Mr. Mayor, name and name after name after name, and the ethnic cleansing of the city from the city side, we all know about that, but Mr. Mayor, I'll leave it at that. Thank you, uh, Alderman Devaney. Councillor Martin Riley. Yeah, thanks, Mayor, for letting me in, and I will be brief. I'm just uh, feel the need to respond to comments made by Councillor Harkin in the debate here. Uh, he he he's an party leader, and in full MP for for uh, for voting against this. You know, th this the SDLP tonight have said uh, that we'll be supporting the motion on the floor. This evening, we voted against the bill in Parliament. Uh, other people with a mandate didn't vote against this uh, in Parliament, uh, and we wish that they had. Uh, so, in the same debate, uh, uh, his colleague, Eamon McCann, is extolling the virtues of the former MP, Mark Kirkin, and the work that he did. 
in voting uh, and campaigning against things. Uh, so the SDLP uh, record on this is clear. We, we voted against it in Westminster and we'll be supporting the motion here this evening. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Members, I have no further speakers on this motion and I'm going to ask Councillor Donnelly to sum up. Councillor Donnelly. Chair, I want to take this opportunity to thank the councillors who, who have spoken in favour of this motion. This is not nothing to do with sectarianism. Uh, Chair, everybody that I have mentioned here have all been non-combatants, innocent civilians, brutally murdered. No doubt that there was state involvement. And, you know, and I'm disappointed in, in, in the DUP, but I'm not surprised. This bill has the potential to wreak havoc for the people in Britain. And there are civil liberties groups and trade unions in Britain who have spoken out very, very strongly against this. It's not an Irish-British thing. It's not a Catholic-Protestant thing. But again, I'd like to thank everybody who's spoken in favour. Thank you, Councillor uh, Donnelly. Members, there's a lot on this, so I'm going to ask the Chief Executive to take us through the, the vote, please. Okay, thank you, Mayor and members. Alderman Bresland? Against. Alderman Devaney? Against. Alderman Guy? Alderman Guy? Alderman Carrigan? Against. Alderman McClintock? Against. Alderman McCain? Abstain. Alderman Ramsey? Yeah. Against. Alderman Wark? Against. Councillor Jason Barr? Barr. Councillor Raymond Barr? Barr. Councillor John Doyle? Barr. Councillor Michaela Doyle? Barr, John. Councillor Burke? Barr. Councillor Carr? Barr. Councillor Cooper? Councillor Cooper? Councillor Cusick? Barr. Councillor Dobbins? Four, John. Councillor Donnelly. Councillor Duffy. Four. Councillor Durkin. Councillor Durkin. Sorry, John. Councillor Durkin, is that a four? I'm sorry, four. Councillor Edward. Four, John. Councillor Ferguson. Four, John. Councillor Fleming. Four, John. Councillor Gallagher. Four, John. Councillor Harkin. Four. Councillor Jackson. Four, John. Councillor Kelly. Four, John. Councillor Logue. Councillor Logue. Councillor McCann. Councillor McCann. Thank you. Councillor McCluskey. Four. Councillor McGuire. Four, John. Councillor McHugh. Four, John. Councillor McKeever. Four. Councillor McKinney. Councillor McKinney. Four, John. Councillor Mellon. Councillor Mellon. Councillor Mooney. Four, John. Councillor Riley. Four, John. And Councillor Tierney. Four. Thank you, members. Oh, can I just record my four vote, please? Just Thank you, Councillor Lowe. Thank you. Mayor, I've recorded 28 for, 6 against, and 1 abstention. So the motion passes. Okay, thank you, John. Um, the motion in the name of Councillor Donnelly um, is carried. And the vote um, is recorded by the Chief Executive. Next motion is in the name of Councillor Jackson. Thanks, Mayor. Is there somebody seconded? Yeah. 
I hear a second there. Yeah, happy to second. Councillor Duffy, second. Go ahead, Councillor Jackson. Thanks, Mayor. Mayor, um, I'm going to take a motion as read. Um, the issue of unadopted roads or unadopted estates is something that I'm sure that all members in the, this virtual chamber is uh, are familiar with. I know it's something that I've been contacted as a representative on the water side um, quite frequently on. Um, I know initially in around Copperthorpe, um, Ivy Mead, Wood, Woodside Heights, Woodland Muse, Distillery Close are, are just some examples um, where we're constantly getting contacted by residents um, who face issues with drainage, with footpaths, with issues with their road service, with street lighting. Um, issues with their sewers or even unsafe retaining walls. Um, Mayor, we've we, we've got information from DFA who said hold um, 222 bonds across our city and district. So that's 222 is the, uh, streets or developments that haven't been brought up to the adaptable standards. Um, that's thousands. Of repairs, it's and and that's that's something. I'm not saying that every one of those estates are are fall below the required standards, but there there it, there's quite a few of them that um, that residents are frustrated. They feel forgotten about, and it also poses um, a challenge for ourselves as council in providing services to those. I know um, quite a few of those estates. And can't get access, or it would be it it be unsafe for um, our bun lorries to get in, uh, and uh, or it may be deemed as unsafe for our bun lorries to go in and, and collect a care or provide a curbside delivery service. So that's um, that's that's some of the challenges. I know previously that there was um, there was an unadopted or a private streets working group, um, and I'm calling for that to be reestablished. Um, because a lot of these, a, a lot of these um, residents, or bit payers, have bought their homes in good faith. They assumed that they were going to be brought up to the required standard, and and and, and quite a lot of these uh, occasions, the developer has walked away. And I've found in my experience that the statutory agencies can be found wanting, um, and sometimes it does take. Um, Political um, pressure, they they get them to take action and um, take action uh, on the, the developer. So, um, I, I I would hope that everybody would um, support the motion, and we can establish a working group so we can look at these issues and come up with solutions. They stand up for all those those thousands of red pairs who are currently living in, in developments that aren't. Um, Brought up to the required standards. Thank you, uh, Councillor Jackson. Councillor Mooney. Yes, Mayor, thank you for letting me in here. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Christopher, uh, Councillor Jackson for bringing this motion. Um, I was unaware that there was a private states working group in existence before, but like uh, Councillor Jackson, and I assume a lot of our councillors um, um, tonight, I've been dealing with issues in, in the water side area. Relating to non adoption, uh, more specifically uh, around the issue of service strips and how they are preventing the issue of the roads being adopted, as well as the are issues outlined by Councillor Jackson. And it is an issue that has to be tackled because there are a lot of estates and a lot of areas in our, in our city and district that are facing um, the prospect of going on for several more years without being unadopted and availing of the services that adoption does bring, i.e., Council going on with funds and etc. They like got there, so I commend Chris, uh, Councillor Jackson for bringing the motion, and uh, and I would seek the establishment of the Peace Working Group um, on that basis. Thank you, Chair. Hey, Councillor Mooney. Councillor Michaela Boyle. Yeah, thank you, Chair, for letting me in. Um, I too would want to, um, you know, concur with with the sentiment of the motion. Um, there are many private streets um, unadopted and throughout the Straban area. And just recently, I've had um, constituents of mine who've come to me in, in regards to this very issue around the uneven footpaths. It's 
and, and, and they're unable to get for the likes of Virgin Media or Broadband in to do any work because uh, of the unadopted roads within these housing estates. Um, they don't believe that the gas pipes can be laid either uh, in some of these housing estates because of the unadopted roads. So it's not just a mess in a beautiful area of a new development. They're unable to get access to the proper services, services that other estates right across the city and district have, like proper broadband, gas, um, and, and those other um, items that, that's needed. So um, I would support um, the uh, motion here this evening. And I also would ask council, a lot of these uh, new estates have green belts uh, areas and they're paying uh, a charge as well on them, you know, to private groups as well too, but the streets are unadopted. But I want to commend the council of employees for, for taking an initiative at times and coming in to these places and doing what they can to to um, lift waste and clean up the streets. But happy, um, happy to support the motion. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, um, Councillor Boyle, for that. Alderman Ramsey. Alderman Ramsey. Yeah, that's me. I'm on now. I, I couldn't get my mic on there. Uh, oh, yeah. um, first of all, obviously, thanking uh, Christopher, uh, Councillor Jackson, for bringing this forward. This is this is, this is is one of these ones that um, two years ago we, we started the committee. Uh, and council and most of the, the actual uh, departments or, or building sites that we discussed at that time still aren't adopted and um, like this isn't rocket science because I mean it was very early on in our meetings that we were all agreeing that the roads need to be adopted before the first house is sold that is what this is what has to be put in legislation because um, it's ridiculous. Somebody buys a house, as soon as they put a bit of furniture on it, they're paying rates. They're entitled to get their buns lifted and all their services. You know, as um, uh, I support 100% this motion, our, our party support it, and um, I look forward to hopefully being back on this committee again. We haven't met since uh, September 2018, and I know that the officers are more than uh, happy that we get this back up and running. Um, because unless legislation changes, we're going to be dealing with this over and over and over again. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, um, Alderman Ramsey. Councillor McKinney. Councillor McKinney. Thank you, Mayor, for letting us in there. I, I, I would... Uh, uh, thank you for letting me in, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, we fully support Councillor Jackson's uh, motion, and I'd also like to say that there's also a health and safety issue here as well. We have a lot of raised manhole covers, etc., and uh, damage to vehicles, etc., uh, has to be taken into account here as well. Uh, and I think we really need to push this, and uh, I would agree there with uh, Councillor Rams as well, get the committee up and running again, uh, and we support the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McKinney. Alderman Guy. Uh, thank you, Mayor, for letting me in. Um, no bother supporting this motion. Um, currently, along with other councillors, we're dealing with this very issue, as I'm sure many other councillors are around this district area. Uh, there's loads of other reasons um, and issues which will tie in with this motion, and I think the best way to move forward is with a working group, so we've no bother supporting it. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Alderman Guy. Alderman Work. Yes, thank you, Mayor, for letting me in. And obviously, my fellow councillor, Alderman Ramsey, spoke on it. But I just want to mention, obviously, we are all dealing with this. And this is um, it's a big, big issue. And I do welcome uh, Councillor Jackson on the motion. But obviously, the, the likes of one area, for instance, here is Victoria, um, Victoria Meadows and Maggie Morrison. These residents are repairs. And they're carrying their bonds hundreds of meters to uh, the more or less the public road, the main road, a mac are missing to get them empty. This ain't fair. This has been going on years. Now the thing I have the problem with is the developers then, where the developers then 
Facebook, they can set more less access or access and more applications. They put on more applications. These developers should be made they get their first their first project sorted, their first um, development sorted before they can put any more applications on they build further more. Because the people that's heard as the residents in these areas and they have to wait to get more or less access to these resources, which is this is absolute disgrace. But I welcome this working group absolutely starting the SAP. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Work. Councillor Paul Gallagher. Thanks, Chair Anderson. Chair, happy to support this motion. Uh, and I think that um, now the council is in a position to, that has got more legislation, I think that the, when these planning applications come in for these various sites, uh, there needs to be a larger bond put on the developers because we have a lot of states around Strabane and the roads are left unadopted and then by the time the cost comes to bring them up the standard for being adopted, the developer says it's not worth it, let them hold on to the bond that, that is in place. So I think that we need to be rigorous and when we're given applications that there is a, a major deposit put in by the developer that allows the council of these roads, particularly within the states, don't come up to standards, that there's enough money in that deposit so that it can be done. And we don't have to run around lobbying a road service who haven't got any money to pay for it because they won't. You know, so I think that's where, where the answer to this lies. Get a, a major bond that covers the cost of, of doing and bringing up their standards. So that's where I think we could run. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gallagher. Councillor Angela Dobbins. Mayor, I couldn't get the, the mute to off. Um, Mayor, can, can I... The roads is, is, uh, um, is not part of planning, and I see where Councillor Wark was coming from, where as we have these large, really large developments springing up now, um, within the city and throughout, and they're doing them in phases. Um, now, if if you're in phase one and you bought a house, you know there seems to be no protection for those that. What if that developer goes belly up uh, and goes into liquidation or whatever? Then those people are left. You know that they haven't got the, um, they haven't got any rights. You know to the roads, although as everybody is saying. They, they're, they're paying their rates. So could, could I possibly suggest that the working group that Councillor Jackson is alluding to, that it be open to um, maybe all councillors, you know, the interested, part, uh, interested uh, councillors uh, to be part of this, not just sort of, you know, for one member per party or anything like that, you know, that because everybody in their own areas has got their own issues and you know, it would be ideal for 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 a, a bigger context, if you know what I mean, uh, of of information there. You know, coming in uh, with ideas. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Dobbins. Alderman Devaney. Thank you, Mayor, for allowing me in. Um, like, like my party colleague, um, Alderman Work, I have no problem uh, in supporting the, the motion <coughs> going forward here. But just to clarify, Mr. Mayor, uh, it is my assumption that when a, a contractor takes on a project like this here, that there is a major bond that is paid down. And in many, many cases, it's probably getting um, DFI to unleash that, uh, release that bond to have the work carried out at times. And I know exactly the one that Alderman Work has spoken to, they have to carry their bins hundreds, couple of hundred metres to get them emptied. Uh, and I think it's not right at the moment. But I, I think I'm right in saying that there is a bond that um, that has to be paid to DFI before that, before that development takes place. And that is to cover um, if they go bankrupt or if the site isn't finished, that DFA have the money to finish the project. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Devaney. Members, there's no further indicated speakers on this uh, motion. 
Um, I think everyone has had their say. I'm going to ask Councillor Jackson to sum up. Councillor Jackson. Thanks, Mayor, and thanks for everybody who <coughs> spoke support to the motion. Um, just just a few wee things. Do, in, in relation to um, a lot of the commentary around it and a lot of the solutions, I was hoping that um, we could get into the finer detail of that in the working group, because I think they are some some really good suggestions. And in relation to the bonds, I think the figure that we've received is that there's, within our council district, um, the bonds that the FI hold um, total 12.5 million. Um, so that could address um, quite a lot of the the, the, the issues that um, that are that are left um, within our own adopted developments. Uh, in relation to the working group, um, there's the makeup of the working group. I, I don't think it's in the remit of this um, motion. Um, I, I think that um, that's for another element of council. If the if we're going to change. Um, how our how working groups are going to be populated, I, but I wouldn't have any issue um, if if I was to pass information on relating to the watershed day and other party member because I would I would trust that they would um, they would address those issues adequately at the working group. But um, I, I do know that the issues that are affecting, um, particularly some somebody who contacted me today. Who's living in a development where there's issues with the sewer that is having a profound effect on her life, um, particularly during lockdown. But um, some of these issues, as as members have, have outlined, have been going on for 10, 15, even 20 years. That um, it's it's about time that we have a working group. Um, hopefully, the the working group would consist of um, of membership from DFA and NA Water, where those issues can be addressed and hopefully solutions can be found. Um, but I would look forward to the working group being established in the near future. And again, I want to thank everybody for their comments. Um, Garmin and Melbourne. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. Members, I think it's fair to say that that motion um, is going to pass unanimously. Um, so I'm going to take it um, that it is unanimous unless anyone wants to let me know that they're unsupportive of it. No, okay. That's unanimous uh, motion in the name of Councillor Christopher Jackson. Next motion is in the name of Councillor Sandra Duffy. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the motion's there, so I just assume everybody can see it. Yep. Yeah. Can we get a seconder, please? Everybody second it, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. Go ahead, Councillor Duffy. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, as we're moving through uh, the different stages of the COVID pandemic, we have seen ourselves try to balance people's health with people's ability to operate their businesses in a safe, COVID secure way. At different times, this has meant the businesses have had to close down completely, and this has hit our small traders particularly badly. During the lockdown, I got into the habit of sourcing locally produced products rather than ordering from big multinational companies. And doing this, I was amazed at the talent that we have on our doorsteps, from our essential services like butchers and greengrocers, the essential services to me like hairdressers and beauticians, bars and restaurants, and then the more specialist traders that we have out there selling everything from soap to jewellery and artwork. It's, it's truly amazing to see. The way these traders try to diversify, diversify, use humour and work the pandemic into their products and into their advertisements was just an act of ingenuity. It was, it was brilliant to watch. Um, so over the last probably six weeks, I have been working with a number of businesses, um, looking at ways that we can support them and ways that we as a council can also support them. Um, they have stated to me that they are really thankful for council um, for the work the council has done, council has really helped them. Um, council has advised them and pointed them in the right direction throughout the, this whole pandemic. Um, they think that the council's current campaign around the small spend giant difference has been really, really good, and we know that there is an extensive shop local campaign plan for Christmas. But I still thought that it was important that we brought this motion 
to ensure that the small and micro micro businesses knew that we are there and supporting them and that we as councillors will always go that extra mile to help them through the, these difficult times. And if there is any ideas out there that councillors have, um, they should feed them in. Um, I set up a social media page last week just to test the water and the uptake from local businesses has been huge and the reach of the page has already um, gone further than 30,000 people, which really showed me that there is an appetite out there for people to shop local. There is an appetite for people to get involved in it. And what they really want is to know what is available. And I think that that's where council comes in. We can be the conduit between the local business and between the, the ordinary citizen, the ordinary Joe Soap that wants to that wants to shop and letting them know what's available so that they can support the local businesses. Um, so that's really all I have to say on it, apart from asking people to support the campaign and send out a clear message to our local businesses that are struggling and that we fully support them now in the run up to Christmas. We want to see them surviving and thriving and we want to see them there in the new year. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Duffy. Councillor John Boyle. Thank, uh, thank you, Mayor. Sorry, I was a little bit of an IT uh, issue there with the sound, but uh, we're here now. Uh, Mayor, you might have to put me in a stopwatch. I won't keep it uh, relatively short if I can do. Um, just to say, uh, speaking again on behalf of the SDLP, Mayor, we're entirely supportive uh, of the uh, motion that's brought forward by uh, Councillor Duffy here this evening. Indeed, we as a party have um, been approached by many and varied um, uh, small, medium-sized enterprises, um, and in some cases, actually, if, if, if there's such a term, tiny enterprises as well, and all of them out there uh, need and deserve uh, the support of all of us, and indeed, uh, everything that we can do through our council to make their life um, easier in these very, very difficult times. Um, just to say, actually, the the uh, the social media uh, site that, that Sandra uh, re references, indeed, I joined up to it myself, and I suggest, actually, that all all elected members do that. That's one way actually of all of us individually showing our commitment to those small traders. Um, but we all know, and it's a statement of the obvious, but we all know these are extremely difficult times. January is always a very difficult uh, month in business and that many businesses de depend on the income that comes into November and December. Um, and clearly there's a real, very real fear that that income won't be realised this particular year and it will impact in so many ways, obviously in uh, employment. Uh, and, and the various knock-on effects that that will have for, for families, for health, for mental health, all manner of things. Mayor, you know, two minutes, you couldn't fit it in, but just to say we're very, very supportive uh, of the campaign. We know our council already do an awful lot of good work in, the, in relation to this across all uh, media platforms, and we would we'd encourage uh, that that would continue, and in actual fact, obviously, then we double double down on it. Um, uh, Christmas is such a very important uh, time for everyone and we should of course be always encouraging people to shop local and our council have always done that but now more so than ever it's important that we continue to do it uh january february and march can be lean and hungry months at the best of times um uh, and it's really up to all of us and the people in this city to get in behind campaigns like this and support local people and support local jobs so again thank you to councillor duffy for for bringing this forward, it serves as a very, very timely remember, uh, reminder and a very difficult time. Um, so thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Boyle. Brief as ever, Councillor Boyle, hang on two minutes. Alderman David Ramsey. Go that far, Mayor. Um, the, the recent pandemic has definitely highlighted how important our local businesses are. and. Um, we definitely need to be supporting local business going forward because our families are employed locally. Um, the, everyone is struggling at the moment, and we definitely, as a party, support uh, local businesses being supported by ourselves. It is, it is just one of them things where sometimes you have to look closer to home, um, and there's no doubt about it, the way things have been this last while, where our families, our young people especially, are, are looking at unemployment um, because of the pandemic. Uh, we need to be definitely getting in there and supporting our businesses, especially in the run-up now to, to Christmas. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ramsey. Members, there's no further indicated speaker, so I'm going to ask Councillor Duffy to sum up. 
Councillor Duffy. Thank you, Mayor. I'll be really brief in the summing up. Um, just thank you to everybody who has supported the motion. Um, it's not just about the motion, it's about sending out that message of support to our, our, our local businesses. And I think that it's great that it, that this motion is going to get unanimous support. Um, it's a it's a really good campaign, and I would ask everybody just to get behind it and shop Dairy and Strabane this Christmas. Thank you, um, Councillor Duffy, for for that. Members, no one has spoken against it, so I'm going to take it unanimous, unless um, anyone actually aware of anything different. No, this passed. Unanimous in the name of Councillor Sandra Duffy. Next motion is from Councillor Keir Maguire. Councillor Maguire. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Mayor um, the motion has uh, kind of changed uh, because the Minister has actually made some moves on it. So uh, I sent around an amended motion uh, today. I was hoping that could be maybe put up. Is that the amend of one on the screen? No. Well, that's it coming on now. Okay, Mayor, could I propose that motion? Yeah. Have you got a seconder? Second that, Michaela. Thank you, uh, Michaela. Go ahead, Councillor McGuire. Okay, Mayor. Uh, firstly, this motion calls for the Dairy City and Stabane District Council to state its opposition to the exploration and extraction of shale gas by the process of fracking. It's important that we reassure, reassure the public that our council remains committed to doing everything within its power to stop and fracking in our council area and wider afield in Ireland and the rest of the world. Over the years, the legacy Straban District Council and this council have consistently opposed fracking and called on the Assembly, the Executive and its ministers to do likewise and oppose fracking. That is why we should acknowledge and welcome the Minister of Infrastructure's intention to removing permitted development in regards to oil and gas exploration earlier this month. But we must now ask her to take the next logical step and ban the prospecting of oil and gas also for the good of the planet. Carbon fuels must be kept on the ground. This motion also calls on the Minister for Economy to place an immediate moratorium on the issuing of all petroleum licenses Hopefully, for the good of all, all parties and independents here tonight can support this call. Two weeks ago, the Assembly discussed a similar motion in regards to moratorium, a motion that was unanimously supported. We welcome the passing of that motion and a signal of intent of the Assembly, but acknowledge that it has no binding power. What we really need is the legislation which would introduce an overarching ban, not just on fracking, but other oil and gas exploration and extraction too. The first steps in this is a ban on fracking. That is why Sinn Féin are currently in the process of bringing forward a private member's bill to the Assembly to legislate for the ban on fracking. By supporting this non-controversial motion, we can show leadership to our community and give them the confidence that we continue to stand against fracking. We know that the previous positions taken and decisions made by this Council and our legacy Council over the years now reaffirmed in this motion mean that we have every tool we need to prevent both the expiration and extraction of shale gas by fracking in our district. By bringing this motion, we are stating our opposition to fracking and calling on the relevant ministers to end the lengthy debacle and ban all gas and oil prospecting once and for all. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor McGuire, for, for that. Members, I have Councillor Durkin, Raymond Barr, Philip McKinney, Paul Gallagher, and Keith Kerrigan on the list. If I haven't called you, I'm with you. Um, so if you can let me know. Gurmayo Goodafera, I'm a Bay May Calculation Run Show, Gus Bay and SDLP Calculation Run Show, Go Humlin. I thank Councillor McGuire for bringing this motion and we will happily, wholeheartedly support this motion. This council is a council that stands proud on its climate pledge. And it's great to see a number of motions coming forward on various environmental issues and climate issues. 
and they're being put forward by different parties. Um, because we all know that as a region, we are lagging behind other regions in terms of legislation. And because of those legislative gaps, it's reflected in the evidence on our emissions levels and on our water quality and air quality. So as a council, we must continue to apply pressure to the executive and hold them to account in relation to the commitments that are given, the good commitments given in the new decade, new approach. So we support the sentiment of this motion. We support the asks of the relevant ministers. And we note the acknowledgement of the recent progress by the Minister for Infrastructure in terms of the PDR move. Uh, Councillor McGuire and Moven also referred to the cross party support, the unanimous support for the motion at the assembly, the Stop the Drill, uh, led by the Stop the Drill campaign and brought forward and supported on a cross party basis. It's good to see pressure being kept on the executive and demanding action, and it's good to see ministers responding. So, Shane, uh, happy to support and Guru Mayogat Kieran. Thank you, Councillor Durkin. Councillor Raymond Barr. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to thank Councillor McGuire for bringing the, this motion forward. Uh, just the, the similarities of fossil fuel extraction and precious metal mining, such as gold. The direct contributing effect it has on climate and uh, energy is due to massive quantities of CO2 released as a result of the energy needed to remove these resources has been well documented. Another worry is the massive amount of water required in the extraction and uh, refinery process becoming contaminated. Ex extractive industries use massive quantities of fossil fuel in the form of diesel, which has a major contributing effect on climate change. And also now it's been proven to have major health impl implications. The excessive amounts of groundwater removed during the extraction of fossil fuels and precious minerals, such as gold, causes drops in the water table in areas such as here. This causes active bogs to dry up. These bogs are one of the best carbon stores uh, in nature, mitigating some of the effects of climate change. Um, uh, while I agree 100% with the motion, I would propose it be amended slightly to specifically in, uh, include precious mineral mining. And I, I think this is all the more relevant when we see what Dalreden have been at over the, the last week there, uh, doing core drilling on the Glen Morning and uh, Murlock areas. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Barr. Councillor Barr, was that a, an amendment that you put there? Yeah, yeah. Have you a seconder for us? Not as yet, no. Anybody wishing to second Councillor Barr's amendment? Happy, happy to second this. Councillor Gallagher? Thank you. Yeah, I was uh, well. Members, it's only a small amendment. Can I just ask now your people attempt with, with that amendment? If not, can you let me know? Uh, it's, it's not completed yeah. there yet, Mayor. Just... Is that it now? That's it. Yeah. yeah. Are, are people content with that amendment? If not, can you let me know and we'll take the amendment as read to try and speed things up a little bit here? Okay, yeah. we'll, take, we'll take it as, as, as that the amendment has passed then. Um, Councillor McKinney. Uh, thank you, Mr. for letting us in. Uh, can I just say, we will fully support the motion or the amended motion as well. Uh, you know, we, we talked about climate change and the environment, but we also have to think about uh, pe how it affects people's lives. When I was working in Lancashire uh, in and around the area where the fracking was taking place, uh, some of my colleagues at work had actually felt tremors in their houses relating to the fracking. Now, the fracking has now stopped and the company involved has withdrawn all its equipment. Uh, and I hope we never have to go through that here in Northern Ireland. So we fully support the motion. Thank you. 
Thank you for that, um, Councillor McKinney. Councillor Paul Mulliger. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor for letting us in. I think uh, this, this council and this corporate division is, is well known that we're in a, in a climate emergency. Uh, and when we look at the damage that's done by fracking, by extraction, uh, whether it's oil uh, or whether it's gold, uh, we know and we've seen, we've seen capitalists that come in to a country, they wreck, they rip, uh, and they destroy our areas of outstanding natural beauty. They wreck our environment, they wreck our waters, poisonous, uh, and they leave untold damage for years upon years upon years to come. We've seen it. We've seen it and we can look across the world and we've seen the damage they've done and we've seen the damage they've done and what they've left behind. And years later, we've seen whole populations poisoned by these capitalists that come in and try and extract valuable and precious uh, commodities and then leave. So I think I'm uh, that this council needs to corporately oppose this and I will be supporting this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gallagher. Alderman Kerrigan. Thank you, Mayor, for letting me in. Uh, Mayor, I have put forward uh, an amendment to the uh, clerk there. I don't know if, if that can be brought up. Yeah, it's just coming on screen there now, so just bear with us. Have you got a seconder for your amendment? I'm assuming so. And that Mayor Mor Alderman Devaney. Alderman Devaney, second us. Alderman Kerrigan, do you want to speak to the amendment while it's coming yeah, on the right. uh, uh, Well, if that's okay, Mayor, if that's okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Mayor, I, 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 I realise, and, and we as party do realise, that fracking is a very a motive issue here, and uh, the amendment, I'll read it out here as it's coming. This council recognises we are in a climate emergency and being aware of public concern and opposition to the use of hydraulic fracturing, uh, i.e. fracking, notes there are currently no applications in Northern Ireland to use fracking, but calls for all decisions on any future applications to be taken by the Northern Ireland executive as a whole. Now, that would be my proposed amendment, Chair. I, I would be seeking to put that in, in place of uh, Councillor Maguire's um, uh, uh, motion. I, I'm minded that a lot of the same sentiments are in it, but I'm minded that I, I'm I am recognising here that uh, fracking, as referred to, is uh, very. Uh, at, at, there's a lot of public concern and opposition to it. I recognise that in, in its entirety, Chair or sorry, Mayor. But uh, that we're calling upon that the executive as a whole and all the parties that are uh, effectively then as collective responsibility for the Northern Ireland executive, if any applications go forward or not, rather than leaving it to a sole minister. Uh, Chair, can I continue just to speak on this, Chair? If you're if you're all right, Mayor. Your time, your time, still running. So right, okay, right. Uh, right. Chair, Sorry, Mayor. May I may I just um, come in there if you just don't mind? Yeah. I was going to ask for an opinion at the end of this, John. I don't think you can do this, but um, I'm I'm just struggling to see it on the screen, Mayor. Um, um, apologies, Alderman Carrigan. I'm just trying to read this now. Um. I mean, it, do, it does, on the face of it, look to me to be a, a slightly different notice of motion. Mm -hmm. I had assumed, Alderman Carrigan, that you were um, you were proposing to add that to the notice of motion, not in place of. Um, so I would suggest, Chair, that that is a different notice of motion. Well, uh, Mayor, okay. I'm Thank you. With the uh, with, with John's uh, opinion, if he feels that it can't be used, I'm, I'm content with that, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor or Alderman Kerrigan. So we'll revert back to the original motion from Councillor Maguire. Councillor Sean Harkin. Uh, 
Councillor Horgan. Thanks, Mayor, for letting me in. Um, people before profit will be supporting this motion tonight, and I think a lot of people have already spoken to the issues. Uh, why? It, I, I believe it is the corporate position of this council that we oppose uh, fracking. Indeed, we we oppose uh, <clears throat> digging out fossil fuels. Um, it's our corporate position that we want to move away from the use of corporate uh, or, or the use of fossil fuels. Um, I think that there's a big uh, we put millions of people in the streets uh, for the climate strikes, and now uh, we have governments that have declared climate emergencies. And this is now when the hard decisions have to be made about whether or not they actually change their ways of doing business uh, and uh, actually follow through on the commitments included in the climate declarations, or if they go on with business as usual. Um, you know, sneaking ways of fracking in is continuing on with business as usual. So I think we have to send a clear message that we oppose this. Um, there's a campaign in the South, as people will know, to keep fossil fuels in the ground. That's, uh, there's an, we, we, as people before profit, supported by others, are trying to uh, move that as legislation. Uh, we need to do the same in the North. We need an all-Ireland approach to keeping fossil fuels in the ground. Uh, we, this is the only way we can actually uh, act on climate change. So I think we have to take this very seriously. Uh, we can't just rip up um, the uh, climate declaration goals when it doesn't suit us. So I think we should. Uh, I want to encourage all councillors to back this motion, and I commend the councillor for bringing it uh, tonight. Thank you. Thank you, councillor Harkin. Councillor Kieran McGuire, to sum up. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and I want to thank everyone uh, for the motion. Um, obviously, it's something that could affect uh, every one of us in, in, in the in the council. And of course, uh, moving on to our, our, our the next generation and the generation after that. So, uh, uh, I want to thank everyone who uh, lent their support to the motion, and hopefully, it gets through unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McGuire. Um, Members, I'm slightly confused in relation to um, whether this is going to pass unanimously. If I can get a wee indication from the DUP whether um, they're going to support it or not, it might save a wee bit of time. We're going Mayor. to abstain, Mayor. You're going to abstain? Okay. I that that helps. Yeah, no, that, that, that'll help, surely. Um, John, would you be able to um, record that accordingly? Yeah, Mayor, just checking, is anybody else either um, against or abstaining? Okay, so I'm going to record that Alderman um, Bresland, Alderman Deveni, Alderman Guy, Alderman Carrigan, Alderman McClintock, Alderman McCain, sorry, not Alderman McCain, um, Alderman Ramsey, and Alderman Wark are abstaining. You called Alderman Guy there, but I assume that, that was just. Uh, sorry, no yep. mistake. Yep. Um, so, uh, and that everyone else is uh, for. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are members content with that approach? Yep. Thank you. Thank you, members. Members, I'm going to suggest that we take another um, short comfort break. Um, for 15 minutes, and I will see you all back here at 10 to 9. 8.50, all right? Thank you.
Okay, members, we're going to kick off once again with the motion in the name of Councillor Emma McCann. Councillor McCann. Hello. Uh, yeah. Uh, we in business here, yeah? You happy to, oh, take, okay. a happy yeah. to take the motion as read, yeah? Yeah, happy to take the motion as read. And just let okay. me... Can I... Have you got Sorry. a seconder? Have you got a seconder? Happy to second, Chair. Ah. Happy to second. Go ahead, Councillor McCann. Okay, I'll say sort of a, a, a in a couple of just within a couple of minutes. See, the, the, this dates back a, a long while, sort of, and this is an issue sort of which has uh, been brought to the fore by science. We talk about following uh, I, the science in relation to various uh, issues. Well, in this one, there have been a number of reports over this past eighteen months, sort of, on the effects of air pollution. The latest of which was published last Friday. Uh, and I believe that this is the science, this is the most important report on air pollution probably ever uh, a, a, a undertaken and printed out of, uh, a, in the history of the, of the whole issue. It was conducted in London, and let me just want to take a minute just to explain what happened. Uh, uh, the, the scientists from Imperial College and King's College, wonderful names, these English educational institutions, King's and Imperial Colleges, uh, they examined the effects of pollution on a specific area in southeast London. Uh, they had 1,100 uh, a volunteers, all uh, a anonymized. And what they did was that they traced over five years, they followed them over five years, month after month after month, checking the uh, health of the individuals concerned and also checking on the pollution levels at various times in those five years. They had checks of pollution monitors every 20 meters in every street in the area. This was a very serious uh, piece of work and the results are startling. Now, I'll only, uh, I, I just give you one of the reasons trying to go into it all, but uh, this report, as I say, just published last Friday. If people want to Google it, they find it, you know, really enlightening and scary. I found, for example, that uh, a, a, the technical terms are, are quite simple, really, sort of a, a one, three micrograms extra of NO2 in a cubic foot, a cubic foot of air. Three mi That's three millionths of a gram. A microgram is a millionth of a gram, will lead to a 39% increase in the incidence of mental problems. Now, just think about that and spread it right across uh, a, a, our society uh, over to yourselves. This is a very serious issue, which is being understood only now. And uh, there already is a commitment on uh, how the Department of uh, the Environment and the Department of Infrastructure to bring forward what they've called, uh, if I can, the, uh, oh gosh, a clean air strategy discussion document that is in the process of being produced by those two departments of Stormont. What I would see this as is our contribution to that discussion, sort of, and saying to people, sort of, are involved in that discussion, sort of, that here are specific things which could be done and ought to be done, sort of, uh, to clean our air and sort of get rid of the influence in all senses of the word of big oil. So, and uh, I, which is producing the particulates which cause uh, uh, air pollution, and we put curbs on the aviation industry and the other fracking uh, and all the rest of it, which are contributing to this problem. So, I hope sort of the people will pass it on the merits. There's an awful lot more to say about it, which I can't say, 
sort of uh, in this speech, but uh, part of the uh, uh, motion calls for the council to organise seminars, a couple of them anyway, sort of on this. So it would be quite easy to get sort of well-qualified people to speak of. I think it would be very good for our town and very good generally for the uh, uh, environment across the north and elsewhere. Thank you, Councillor McCann, uh, for that. How did, how, did, how did I do there for time, Brian? Three minutes, eight okay. seconds. Three minutes, eight seconds, whoa! <laughs> which, which, is good, which, is, which is very good, Councillor McCann. Councillor <laughs> Tina Burke. Yes. Thanks, Mayor, for bringing in. It's just a wee brief note, and it's just to um, obviously put our party support in relation to Councillor McCann's motion this evening, and thanks for bringing it forward. Um, he's obviously alluded there around the, the issues around the air pollution in terms of like the health aspects and his motion, particularly to uh, being harmful to the vulnerable groups um, within our city and district. And then obviously we have the council's declaration on the climate emergency. And had, as has been mentioned already here this evening, it's good to see different motions coming in and being brought forward with proposals and actions um, to tackle these issues contributing to climate change within our city and district. And it's just it's imperative we do what we can to try and obviously and what's on our power. Um, and I think what, what this proposal and this uh, motion asks for and the actions coming out of it um, will work towards it. And for that reason, we'll be happy enough to support it as it is before us. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Burke. Councillor Mary Durkin. Gurumayo, good affair. Bay Mojig, Taculation Runshaw, Foster. Thank you, Councillor McCann. We're very happy to support this motion. and. Thank you for bringing it last year and for resurrecting it. Now it is timely because there have been these recent reports and there have been recent local campaigns. Of course, we had Clean Air Day earlier this month. Um, we, our SDLP youth group, did a bust coal dust campaign. And of course, our Health and Communities Committee made a decision in that regard. Um, we also had the Environmental Gatherings Clean Air for All campaign. And that sets out what's needed at council level and at the government level. Uh, some of us attended, you know there were local campaigners and people from different parties at the British Heart Foundation NI's webinar on air pollution last month. And as you say, the evidence is so clear there. By reducing air pollution levels, we can reduce strokes. It's World Stroke Day today, heart disease, lung cancer, and respiratory disease. So we also saw in that webinar how air quality management plans have actually addressed these issues. You know, there are precedents there of councils in England where the air quality management plans have uh, delivered results. So at assembly level, it's important that we keep pressure on Sinead McLaughlin has, will be pursuing this issue. And I think, as you say, all parties and indeed council should engage in the clean air strategy consulta consultation period that's coming forward now. Uh, what the asks of the motion we support, we think we should adopt the World Health Organization Particulate Matter 2.5 level for the North. We need adequate monitoring infrastructure for that in all council areas. And we need more in bulk air quality impact assessments and planning applications too. And another thing to look at is the air quality monitoring zones around schools and childcare and healthcare and care homes and places where we can protect the most vulnerable. So thank you again for bringing the motion and we're delighted to support. Thank you, Councillor Durkin. Alderman Devaney. Thank you, Mayor, for allowing me in. And the DUP party um, have no problem in supporting this motion coming forward here. And I think all of us are very mindful that uh, if we don't have that, where we have uh, air that is poor quality, there's always a higher risk of serious health issues. And I do appreciate um, uh, Councillor McCann calling maybe for some seminars because uh, it could be very educational for many people. And as I say, Mr. Mayor, we have no problem in supporting the motion. Thank you, Alderman Devaney. I have no further indicated speakers at this point. I'm going to call Councillor McCann. They sum up, Councillor McCann. Councillor McCann.
Hello. Yes, go ahead, Eamon. I'm here. Sorry, I'm ready to, to sum up. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, just thank everybody uh, for their contributions and just to repeat sort of that this is possibly the most important issue which we're going to uh, uh, discuss uh, this evening. And all I would like to add, which I would have tried to pack in earlier if I could, that when you trace uh, why we have concentrations of particulates sort of in particular areas, sort of a, 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 a one of the uh, correlating factors in every study ever done, including the one that I just mentioned, sort of is that sort of economic uh, well-being sort of is uh, followed by, runs in parallel sort of, uh, uh, with the well-being of people in health. And the poorer you are, the more likely you are to live in an area sort of with high levels of pollution and therefore with high levels of cardiovascular, cardiovascular uh, uh, disease and, and all the rest of it. There is that connection to be made. So when we're talking about clean air and fighting to uh, organizing to produce sort of a, a, a clean air society. What we are doing really, or what we have to do, is to fight against sort of the uh, a class based privileges which allow some people to create a world sort of in which other people are inevitably sick. So I commend the motion to you on that basis. Thank you, Councillor McCann. Members, no one has spoken against the motion. So again, I'm going to take it unanimous, unless anyone wants to make me aware of that. Anything different now? No. Okay. That motion has passed uh, unanimous in the name of Councillor McCann. The next motion on the agenda, members, is from Councillor Mary Durkin. Gurmayo, good fair if we just take that as read. No problem, Mary. Um, can we get a seconder for that motion, please? Second that, Mayor John Boyd. Thank you, Councillor Boyd. Go ahead, Councillor Durkin. Okay, thank you. Well, this is a very simple motion. It's a simple declaration, but a solid declaration of solidarity. This time, the COVID-19 pandemic has shown a light on the interconnectedness for the communities and populations around the world. And it's shown a light on the inequalities with the poorest countries being most affected, populations being forced even deeper into poverty. Uh, the issue of death crisis, of course, isn't new, but the issue of death cancellation is very much relevant now. Uh, we see the impact this crisis is having on our own healthcare services and on relatively strong economies. However, the reality is that the, the poorest countries are the disproportionately impacted. Countries that have no health infrastructure at all at the best time, they're being crippled and strangled by death. And the G20 encouragingly uh, did extend the suspension of death repayments this month. Um, so, but debt suspension's not going to cut it. If we are to give these poorest countries any chance at all, then debt needs to be cancelled. And we need to have reallocation of that money that's been paid in debt. It needs to go into and trying and building some sort of healthcare systems and building communities and letting people um, have social protections and also resources need to be allocated to climate justice because as we say you know this we are in unprecedented times this global crisis in the health is coming at the same time as the escalating climate crisis that we've been talking about tonight throughout and different campaign groups, different charities, humanitarians have been making the case for debt cancellation. So uh, I'll just finish there with just the, 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 all it is is a simple declaration of solidarity. And it's the old Irish proverb says, and it's very um, relevant to the pandemic generally. Erska, Ahela, Awaran, Nadini. People live in each other's shadows, and in this case, in the world and their interconnectedness on this shared planet, we all live in each other's shadow. So, Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Durkin. Councillor McHugh. Thank you, Mayor, and thanks to Councillor Durkin as well uh, for bringing the motion. Um, I intend to be brief. Um, just to acknowledge, obviously, Councillor Durkin bringing forward the motion, and uh, like to say that uh, we in Sinn Féin, obviously, we uh, endorse the motion, 
and in particular um, the references to Councillor Durgler, or Durgan's motion uh, on global debt and equality and human rights. Um, the motion calls for urgent action from governments, international institutions and relevant agencies. Um, and that's, she's quite right, um, obviously, and uh, in terms of the relevant agencies, you know, I would uh, read that and I uh, hope Councillor Durkin would agree with me that uh, that would um, call for the reform of the global political system and the agencies, some of them that uh, wield great power and thinking of agencies like the International Monetary Fund um, the UN Security Council that has five permanent members and you know these bodies they're all weighted in favour of more developed countries which makes it extremely difficult for poor countries to uh, develop economically and financially. Um, so I think that uh, when it needs to be uh, it needs to go out further than the, the motion in front of us um, and endorsing it to include the, the reform of those bodies, as I said. Um, but we do endorse the motion as it is. But uh, as I say, I'm happy enough to, to accept it as it is because that, it does include within it the reference there to ins international institutions. So uh, again, I thank Councillor Durkin for the motion and happy to endorse it. Thank you, Councillor McHugh. Councillor Gallagher. Thank you, Mayor, for letting us in. Uh, and thank you, Mary, for bringing this uh, proposal. Very happy to support this pro proposal. Uh, and, and we look at what's happening in the world today, uh, across the world, and we look at this COVID-19 that we're all dealing with, and governments, and particularly in the Western world, have no idea how to deal with it. When we look at the world as a whole and we look at pan pandemics, hunger is a pandemic. Poverty is a pandemic. But the big difference between COVID-19 and hunger is hunger. Pandemic can be sorted by money and by 1% of the world's population, which holds the vast majority of the wealth in this world. Thousands of children die on a daily basis through starvation. Starvation, particularly in third world countries. And then third world countries are struggling and struggling by capitalists who, who, who hold them tight and hold them tight through debt. And it can be solved overnight if there's a will. So I thank you, Mary, for bringing this forward. Thank you, Councillor Gallagher. Councillor Ferguson. Thank you, Mary, and uh, thank you, Councillor Durkin, for bringing this motion forward. I agree entirely with what Councillor Gallagher said before. There has been many pandemics ranging from hunger and, and poverty before COVID pandemic, and if only it, it's quoted that it would cost around about 11 billion pounds a year to to eradicate the world of hunger but we that one percent are happy to spend that amount of money on american presidential elections so it, it, this this motion um can only endorse it you know it's a very humanitarian motion and i appreciate you on that mary um and we at alliance are, are only happy to support it fully but thank you Thank you, Councillor Ferguson. Councillor Harkin. Thanks, Chair, and thanks, Mary, for bringing forward this motion as well. Um, and I think that when we discuss this about the rest of the world, I think it's also about looking at our own situation here. Um, and I think what this is about is, you know, as all our speakers have said, um, the, the, the pandemic has put a spotlight on so many issues. The health crisis, climate crisis, uh, you know, institutional racism, 
uh, and growing inequality. And what we're what we're discovering is that the the way that the international capitalism uh, is organising things, it's putting a tremendous amount of money in the you know a tiny number of hands, and that that gap between the haves and the half nots is just getting wider and wider. It's getting wider and wider between you know the the minority of billionaires and the rest of us, but it's also getting wider and wider between the richer nations and the poorer nations. And I think what this motion is about saying is that we stand in solidarity with people around the world who are struggling with all these issues, racism, poverty, hunger. And it's the same issues a lot of people are, are struggling with here. Um, so I, we're going to be supporting this. And I think what this is about is uh, this is about transferring wealth, redistributing wealth from the billionaires to the needs of the vast majority. And I think that that's what we need to do around the world. That's what we need to do here. And I think whatever uh, you know, whatever this motion does in terms of encouraging that, uh, it's a good thing. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harkin. Councillor Donnelly. Thank you, Chair. You know, uh, Councillor Harkin talked about capitalism there, and 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 about you know, and we have this issue of world debt. Capitalism doesn't care about sick people. Capitalism doesn't care about poverty. These are results of capitalism, Chair. But see, saying that the, the subject we're on is, is <clears throat> excuse me, is regarding the COVID nineteen uh, pandemic. I would like to mention, Chair, the the Henry Reeve Brigade in Cuba, who who from Jamaica to Italy, from Mongolia to Indonesia. More than 3,700 Cuban medics have supported health workers in 39 countries in their fight against COVID-19. These this this international this brigade chair has offered had offered in the past to help the poor people of New Orleans when they were getting it tight when they were facing you know destitution, starvation, and America blocked them. America is at the minute currently strangling. Cuba with the blockade. Whilst I agree, agree with the sentiments of, of of what we're talking about here, I think it's important to, to point out the, the, the you know this particular case because it just symbolizes for me, it just symbolizes all that's wrong with capitalism. Whilst you know you have a country who's at the who's steering that ship and would, would be prepared to allow its own citizens to die rather than accept help from another country. Thank you, Chair. So I'm going to be supporting the motion. Thank you, Councillor Donnelly. Members, no further speakers. So back to Councillor Durkin. To sum up. Um, Mayor, Mayor, I think sorry. I was on Alderman Kerrigan. Sorry, sorry, you, you're right, you were. Sorry, my mistake. Go ahead. Um, thank you, Mayor, for letting me in. I'll be, I'll, we'll be brief. Uh, Mayor, um, I do a motion from Councillor Durkin here. And we will be supporting it. Uh, a wee bit cautious, to be fair, Mayor, in relation to cancellation of debt payments. Uh, whether it's an old, uh, an old Presbyterian threat or something, and may it's it's along the lines of, uh, if you take on a debt, you have to pay it back. Uh, would have been my own mind, but Mayor, I, I do see that the motion from Councillor Durkin here, and I do even see the comments even passed by the president of the World Bank, uh, IMF, there, David. Malpass, I think is the correct pronunciation, uh, stating that um, the COVID-19 will trigger a debt crisis uh, and that the investors must be ready for granting some sort of relief and that will include debt cancellation. Uh, he goes on to state that debt should be reduced by restructuring. Um, similar situation, uh, there is precedence in relation to Latin America and the HIPC initiative uh, for highly indebted countries in the 1990s, Mayor. Um, Richer countries, as, as Mary has alluded to there, uh, richer countries in the last month did back an extension of the G20's debt service suspension initiative, uh, which uh, will help these developing nations survive the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, this has seen some 43 out of the potential 73 eligible countries to fare some five billion uh, in debt payments. So I, I know it was mentioned there in the country referred mention a figure there i just can't recall i think she said 11 billion was the figure to th for uh to clear the poverty or sorry the oh hunger uh 
the pandemic sorry mayor could uh, push and probably will push 100 million people into extreme poverty across the world um and the president of the world bank has called for private banks and investment funds to get involved and some of these have not been doing enough not been pulling their weight and in particular he's made a, an example of certain chinese lenders which haven't supported it uh pandemic could trigger another debt crisis at a time when many developing countries have already entered a, a downward spiral of growth and financial trouble and the enormous budget deficit and debt payments are all the man Kerrigan, can i ask you to bring your words yep, to a now, chair, and the bad loans will not only affect the countries but will also affect the, the lending uh, facilities as well so we will support uh councillor durkin's motion thanks very much Matt. thank you uh alderman Kerrigan. Councillor Turkin, sum up. Councillor Turkin. Sorry, wouldn't be like me. Um, I was just saying there, thank you everyone for your contributions and support. And we had a good variety of contributions there. Uh, so thanks everyone. Thank you, Councillor Turkin. Members, I don't hear anybody suggesting they're going to vote against this motion. So once again, I'm going to pick it as uh, passed unanimous. Okay, that motion's passed unanimous uh, in the name of Councillor Mary Durgan. The next motion is Councillor Darren Guy. Okay, uh, thank you, Mayor, for letting me in. Um, I'll take yeah. that motion as read. Okay, can we get a seconder? Yeah. I'll second that, McCain, Mayor. No problem, uh, Alderman McCain, thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Gay, or Alderman Gay. All right, thank you. Uh, okay, uh, communication is important to us all, whether it be through conversation, TV, radio, social media, or any other relevant platform. All an act of transferring information. The majority of the current radio media is based in Belfast, and then broadcast on the North Northwest, rather than being produced locally by the people and for the people of this council area. We as citizens have access to many radio stations. However, no radio station exists in the area aimed at the future of this city, our youth. River FM wants to provide a platform for our youth to communicate with each other and the wider population. The youth of this council area face many issues, mental health, unemployment, and increased feeling of detachment from the wider community. In short, they lack their own media voice, something they can call their own. River FM currently offers this and plans to provide more if Ofcom agree to afford the Northwest with the same opportunity as they have done elsewhere. River FM is currently available on a variety of media platforms that are accessible to all. It operates with a popular top 40 format to appeal to the 15 to 34 age group. River FM already has a large audience on 104.2 FM and online, not only from Northern Ireland, but across Europe and other parts of the world. The station provides opportunities for youth, helping them to produce programs, news, find employment and gain all relevant experiences in a media setting. River FM has been in discussions with Ofcom, both in Belfast and London, in attempts to obtain an FM licence. Ofcom has been pushing River FM in the direction of a small DAB community license. However, most people in this council area still listen on FM in cars, their workplace, and in their homes. River FM wants not only to broadcast in DAB, but also in FM, which would allow them to build up an audience for their DAB outlet, whilst helping publicise this, this new method of transmission as a whole it is important that any radio service aimed at the youth in our council area is accessible to the entire youth population. River FM's goal is supported by a cross-section of politicians, community groups, education institutions and religious leaders, both here in our city and across Northern Ireland. River FM wants to help give the youth of this council area a future, a voice and a radio service they can engage with and be proud of. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Guy. Councillor Gallagher. Thank you, Chair, for letting us in. 
And uh, thank you, Alderman Guy, for bringing forward the proposal. Uh, very much in support of this motion, uh, and for for uh, quite a number of reasons. One is uh, this is very much about giving youth a voice. Uh, two, it's about the, uh, a lot of the time the the big monopolies don't wish to engage with with the the, the minority voice as such, and in, in the sense of how uh, we're too busy. We're too commercial. We're too this. We're too that. We're too this. Hi, and a lot of a lot of the message that particularly young people have gets left behind. Only when it becomes a, a sexy story, I that they, they go to the youth because they can't get none else. But for the day and daily issues and the daily and daily contact for young people. This is what they want, and this is what they listen to, because it's about them, and it's for them. So we should be supporting this, and not allowing the likes of this local radio station to be crushed by the monopolies that are just in it for money. Because this isn't about money. This is about making contact with young people. So happy to support this motion. Thank you, Councillor Gallagher. Councillor McKimmy. Uh, thank you, Mayor, for that, man. And uh, also, thank you, Dolan McGuire, for bringing this motion. Uh, like, I, I'm sure a lot of you can remember back to when the last radio station we had here, based in the northwest, well, was on the Ross Downey Road. And they also had a small station based in Coleraine. But since they were swallowed up, as Councillor Gallagher has alluded to, the big monopolies, we don't really seem to get much coverage up here. So we would be fully supporting this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McKinley. Councillor Lowe. Oh, thank you, Chair. I thought my mic was off there. Uh, we and Jim Fame will certainly be supporting this this motion 100%. It is imperative that our youth have an educated uh, radio station. And for, for us, this station, uh, and corporates all that. We must listen to our youth, we must give them a voice and they must be able to he hear each other and no barriers need to be put in their way. So we certainly will be supporting this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lowe. Councillor Boyle, John Boyle. Thank you, Mayor. And again, like other speakers, I, I'll do my best to keep it brief for, uh, for you. I know it's turning into a long night for all of us. Um, Mayor, uh, I mean, I personally have always been an advocate for to improve broadcast opportunities um, for all communities uh, in this city and in the northwest and even into Donegal. And, uh, River, F, River FM, somebody's got the mic on there, Mayor. I think it's coming for you. River FM are obviously a, a very interested in, in, in providing an opportunity that would be a training opportunity for for younger persons um, and that would provide for extended opportunities in the employment market going forward. Uh, certainly in my experience when when people do uh, uh, receive the, the appropriate sort of training in, in, in media and broadcast in particular, then uh, they can uh, spread their wings um, and, and, and God knows they can, uh, they can progress very, very rapidly. Uh, through the industry, uh, in my view, uh, Mayor, uh, the the broadcast spectrum is wide enough for Ofcom to be able to easily grant um, a license for uh, FM or indeed DAB or, or of course both, uh, and and the Northwest it would um, obviously provide opportunity for for a listenership who are, who are generally not particularly well catered for. Generally speaking, when when we're talking about provision of, of broadcast radio for young people, everybody just automatically assumes that young people only want to listen to music. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, someone else here already said that this would also give an opportunity for young people to actually have their voice here. Um, and Mayor, I'm going to I'm gonna wrap it up, but obviously it's on behalf of the SDLP, we are supportive of writing to Alcom uh, to tell them to, to ask them to reconsider um, the decisions that they're making in relation to this kind of provision for young people in, in, in Derry City and Stavon District and indeed across a broader, wider northwest. Um, Mayor, 
Can I also suggest to um, the proposer, Alderman Guy, that we perhaps might invite um, those behind River FM to come and present to committee? Um, I don't propose making an amendment to that, but I think it would be useful to, to give us uh, uh, some more information in relation to their ambition um, uh, and their drive, so to speak. And Mayor, um, you know, it's a, it's a station for young people. It, it would be more than just it'd be young people's news and all of that. It could be talk radio. It can be much more than just music. And Mayor, just before I wrap up, uh -huh. no, Mayor, as a question to yourself. Um, uh, before I wrap up, Mayor, uh, obviously we, there was um, some conversation um, and uh, uh, talking uh, with Drive One Hundred Five uh, very recently, and, and came through your office, etc. And if it's not too much of an imposition, Mayor, if anyone could perhaps give us an update on that and where that might be standing at the minute again, a very valuable community um, uh, broadcaster. I'm sorry for bouncing that on you, Mayor, um, but that's that's me. And so again, thank you to Councillor Alderman Guy. Or, thank you, Councillor Boyd. Um, we'll deal with this motion first, and then I'll I'll come back to you on, on that, Councillor McCann. All I wanted to say really, sort of as a member of the National Union of Journalists, is that I do support uh, this uh, motion. We've got a crisis in local journalism uh, at the minute. Sort of, We've lost an awful lot of journalists uh, a cast aside sort of by uh, large media uh, proprietors and those that uh, continue. Sort of, we know them in our own town. You know, uh, and those that continue sort of are continually under pressure, sort of particularly uh, under the conditions of the pandemic, but also technological uh, changes controlled by the owners, sort of, and uh, uh, in which sort of the workers, the journalists in this case, have very little uh, a decisive uh, influence. So I welcome anything, sort of, which is going to say to put news gathering and news transmission sort of into the hands, sort of, of people who are independent of the big uh, conglomerates, and in particular into the hands, sort of, of uh, young people. We have a number of brilliant young journalists here in Derry, uh, he, 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 both at the Tech and the uh, University of Ulster. Uh, brilliant young journalists. I watch them sometimes and I envy sort of their daring sort of and their, uh, 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 their energy and their ability. Just a far further forward at the age of 20 or 21, sort of the people of my generation were. But what I really worry about is what's going to become of them? Where are they going to get jobs? How are they going to finish up? As some have, some brilliant young journalists have finished up writing for nothing, for no pay, because they want to get their byline and so that somebody else might see it and build up their por portfolio. That's a dreadful situation you know, for people to be put into, for young people to be put uh, into at the very beginning of their working life. So if in one way out of it, so if it's not, of course, it's not a fundamental thing, so if it's not going to transform anything, but one way out of it, at least a step towards getting out of it, would be to uh, urge uh, Ofcom uh, uh, to reverse this and to allow River FM and outlets like River FM. Give them a chance. Give them the go ahead. If we all say that at once. You never know. We might be listened to. Thank you, Councillor McCann. Alderman Wark. Thank you, Mayor. The DEP will be fully supportive of the motion brought on by Alderman Guy. And this year's absolutely. I think it's brilliant for the, the region here. The, the your young people's voices have their own station. I think 100% we're all fully supported. And I'd like to second Alderman uh, John Boyle's motion there also to bring these young people forward to the committee. They more or less talk to the committee members and also for us to learn more on it. And also, Councillor Boyle mentioned to you about the, the Dry 105 one. I think um, I'd be interested too, and the, the other members of our party would be interested to more or less here what are officers going to say on that thank you mayor thank you um alderman work um members in relation to the, the drive 105 um meeting um and conversations that we've had um i um on the back of a proposal at council i think it was from councillor Riley, um met with drive 105 with her support i'm not sure if kevin o'connor is actually on the on the call Kevin? I don't think Kevin is on the program. I, I don't think he is, no. Members, um, conversations are still ongoing with Ride 105. I spoke to them earlier uh, this week, uh, again, and we're, we're, we're looking at opportunities. I'll get the, the, the most up-to-date um, information that we have uh, tomorrow and make sure that it's emailed around the all um, members so that you have um, an idea of what the, 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 the position is. 
people are content enough uh, with that. That's that's fine, as the man has suggested, Mayor. That, that that would suffice for now. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Boyle. Nothing like being punched by one of your own. Uh, we'll go to Alderman Guy to sum up. Thank you, Mayor, and thank to all the members for their support uh, for this motion. Um, let's hope that uh, we can convince Ofcom to uh, reconsider the position and issue them with an FM licence. Um, I'm sure they'll be more than happy with this outcome, and I'm sure they'll be more than happy to come in and give a presentation to the committee. Uh, and I'd just like to finish off by saying Rubber FM have a, a, a Christmas toy appeal, uh, and there's various businesses throughout the district uh, that are willing to take toys and uh, send them on to kids uh, in need this year, Christmas. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Alderman Guy. Members, I don't hear anyone again speaking against uh, this motion. Chair, I, I tried to come in, but I didn't send it. Can I just make a wee quick comment on support? It, it, just short, briefly. A bit closer down this one. Yeah. Chair, no. Uh, apologies, it's my mistake. I thought I had sent the, the message. Chair, I, I believe that I, I wrote a letter to uh, this radio station offering support, and I believe that they can deliver a state of the art. Uh, media outlet aimed at the younger and the student population in particular. It can become a, pl a valuable platform, Chair, to express, express youth issues, ideas, and creativity, and also to showcase local local talent. And uh, you know, I, I think there's a lot of alienation with young people in, in in our city. And I think that the you know this could go some way of giving these young people a voice. Again, apologies. I I, I thought I had asked to come in, but happy to support and I want to uh, commend uh, Alderman Guy for bringing it here today and I think uh, Councillor Boyle's proposal to invite them in also complements the motion. Thank you Councillor Donnelly. Um, I'm going to pick this as unanimous again um, as I don't hear anyone speaking against it um, unless anyone wants to make me aware now. Can I just ask is everybody content that we invite the, the, the uh... And they give us a presentation of some sort. Yeah, I think that's okay. Okay, members. That motion in the name of Alderman Guy has passed unanimously. Next motion on the agenda is from Councillor Hartman. Councillor Hartman. Thanks, Chair. Can I take the motion as read? Yeah, have you got a second there, Councillor Hartman? Thank you, Councillor Gallagher. Go ahead, Councillor Harkin. Thanks, Paul. Um, yeah, uh, so the, this is a motion, as people know, about the decision that the uh, Minister for Infrastructure made about uh, dredging of Loch Ney. Um, and I've been asked to bring this motion forward on behalf of environmental campaigners um, who, as people know, uh, have been outraged about this decision. Now, the reason why this is such a pivotal decision uh, is because it's going to be a precedent setter. Um, people will know um, uh, if they're familiar with why Loch Ney is so, so important. It's the biggest wetland area on these islands. Um, it has, it's one of the most protected sites, uh, supposedly on paper, uh, on these islands. It is a European uh, special uh, environmentally protected area um, uh, uh, but there is, but it is a threatened area as well um, the, the the water quality there has been deteriorating uh, the uh, the birds that live there have been falling in number there's been a big impact on the fish stock there as well so the concern of environmental activists is that this European level protected site mm -hmm. is actually that the ecosystem there is collapsing. And so the problem is that uh, allowing for more uh, industrial and commercial activity will actually lead to the creation of a wet wasteland, an environmental wasteland in Loch Ney. Um, and I think we have to put this in the context of where we are in this discussion. We just had several motions today talk about uh, environmental change um, and climate change, and that we are all aware here of the millions of people who marched just over a year ago, led by students, to call for climate change, to be uh, for system change, 
not climate change, for governments to change direction uh, on on their policies and stop big business uh, from being able to destroy uh, our land, uh, our water, and our air. And that's what this is about. Uh, so, so the executive has also passed a climate emergency, as we have, committing itself to all sorts of actions uh, that will stop the destruction of our ecosystem. Uh, and they're now in the process of putting together a climate bill. I think all of that is meaningless uh, if we uh, don't stand against what's happening in Loch Ness. We may as well just rip up our local climate emergency declaration. We might as well just rip up our climate emergency pledge. We might as just well say, let puts run the show uh, at, um, at Stormont, because what's the point? Puts doesn't believe in uh, the climate emergency. He will not take serious action uh, to stop it. Uh, so uh, we, we are wasting our time if we don't stand against this decision. Um, so I would be calling on... Councillor Hargan, can you bring your remarks to a close, please? I will, yeah. I, I will be calling on all councillors tonight um, to think very carefully about their vote on this, because this is about whether or not the commitment that's been laid down locally uh, and at the stormant level is actually going to be followed through on or if it's going to be ripped up. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harkin. Councillor Riley. Thanks, Mayor, for bringing me in. And uh, can I start by recognising that this is a complex issue and uh, it's one that which the minister herself uh, has indicated that uh, was a finely balanced decision. Uh, and she states uh, in her own words that she's an advocate for the protection of the environment, particularly such a special one as Loch Ness. And the Planning Appeals Commission, um, the Planning Appeals Committee recommended approval following a public inquiry. Uh, but the minister in this case has clearly outlined that her final decision can only issue uh, if there is a section 76 conditions attached that meet her approval uh, and that there be no ad adverse impact on the integrity of the lock itself. Um, as with much other needed uh, infrastructural uh, pro uh, projects across and environmental issues across the northwest and across Northern Ireland, like the A5 and the A6 road upgrades, they have sustained environmentalist objections uh, have been received, but we have to balance the economy and the environment. 30% of the sand that's used in construction projects come from Loch Ness. What happens if we lose the access to that sand? Building projects will stall or become unviable. And what's the carbon cost of uh, trying to import sand into Northern Ireland? Um, I listened to Councillor Harkin when he's he's making the proposals here tonight, and he's talking about EU environmental laws. It's uh, ironic that the, the very EU environmental laws that he cites uh, we're going to lose uh, because of Brexit. Uh, and the SELP championed uh, remaining in the EU, unlike people before profit. Um, some talk about the uh, the need to protect the environment, but Minister Mal has been doing that in her role. She has uh, not only uh, in the short time she's been in the post stopped permitted development rights for oil and gas, uh, she's also decarbonising public transport. She is investing in our greenways. She's investing in our rail lines, and she's trying to get high speed rail to our city uh, and, and region, and she's an, an, uh, legislated for e-bikes. Uh, so there's lots of different ways that Minister Mallon has shown her commitment to uh, making this uh, place a green and uh, environmentally friendly area. So in conclusion, uh, Mayor, this evening, the SDLP want to move an amendment which we think reflects more accurately the circumstances of the situation and respects the proposers um, who plan in his uh, original motion to engage with the minister and to hear from campaigners. Uh, we urge that just as there's cross-party uh, approach to the new climate bill in the Assembly, that there should be a cross-party uh, support across the chamber for uh, for this type of campaign. So we, we would urge people to uh, to try and support Mr. our Mr. Riley, can you bring your remarks to a close, please? Thanks, Mayor. We, we'd urge people to support our amendment in this virtual chamber on such an important subject to get that cross-party unity. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Have you got a seconder for your amendment? I'll, I'll second that, Mayor Angela. Councillor Dobbins seconds that amendment. Thank you. Councillor McCann, on the amendment or on the original motion? On the amendment. Go ahead. Well, I call upon the Council to reject the amendment. Uh, I think it's very disappointing uh, 
uh, that it should be uh, brought forward. I would invite people to read it very carefully because what it does is simply gut the original resolution. It's a negative. It negates the thrust of the original uh, resolution. So I don't regard it as a proper uh, uh, amendment at all. If you look at it, sort of, uh, uh, it's saying, for example, that you write to the minister outlining uh, a, a or objection. That's changed. It's changed in his here to expressing, uh, to outlining concern, sort of, uh, and so forth. The language is systematically weakened, sort of, uh, I, I, with this amendment. There's one thing to say a recent launch of a cross party assembly, and yes, indeed, to tackle the climate emergency. But what's the point of that if we then sort of turn around and say that it's quite all right, I mean, to gouge sort of sand? from the seabed or the loch bed, sort of all up at Loch Ney and carted away. And sand dredging is destroying the natural habitat, you know, for uh, uh, flora and fauna in that region. We can't say that we're committed to the environment and then say, in effect, in effect, go ahead, bring in sort of your gouging e equipment, your sand dredging and so on, and just uh, a, a, rip the thing apart. And it's not true that we have to depend upon sand from Loch Ney for construction. If we did uh, agree, I mean, to uh, uh, end the extraction of sand from Loch Ney, it would put some pressure on us and everybody else, wouldn't it, to come up with the means of construction and the use of materials, sort of, which are not going to cause devastation sort of in the atmosphere and on the land, sort of and beneath the locks. I mean, I think that the, I'm sorry to have to say that I think that the amendment put forward is not entirely honest. Can I put it like that? Because what it's actually doing is saying, reject the motion, reject the idea of calling a halt to sand dredging in Loch Ney and dress up this rejection as something like monitoring the balance and all that there. There is no balance between dredging in Loch Ney and not dredging in it. One's right and the other's wrong. Why, there's no point in passing resolutions of an abstract nature about the environment and then in the uh, turning around and passing uh, a, a resolutions or amendments which have a, the practical effect of negating what we said in the first place. Thanks very much. Thank you, Councillor McCann. Councillor Gallagher. Thank you. Uh, I'll speak on the amendment first. I think the amendment is, is something like uh, something like Donald Trump would, would conjure up uh, in this in the sense of it's in denial that uh, the uh, historical maybe uh, climate emergency. No, nah, maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, and ignore the reality. That's what the amendment is. But uh, but I would say that, uh, and I would say back to the SDLP as a collective. Some of your members within this chamber or council have been great advocates around the climate emergency, about acknowledging what we have to do and how we should do it. This amendment is not one way of doing it. Don't play party politics with people's lives because it happens to be an SDLP minister. Send a clear message up the road to Stormont, whatever minister it is, and say, this council recognises that there is a climate emergency and anything, and anything that's adding to that emergency needs to stop and don't play with people's lives. And I say to the, the, all the members of the SDLP that this is coming from, think individually, think with your own thoughts, think with your own thoughts on this, and think with your hearts and where you are, and vote individually on this motion. Thank you. Thank you, um, Councillor Gallagher. Alderman Devaney. Thank you, Chair or Mayor, for allowing me in. Um, our, I know our party um, will be supporting the amendment here. Uh, I, I do understand uh, um, the decision that uh, Minister Mallon has taken, and I, th I think she has taken great time and great effort to think about the issue uh, up at Loch Ney. And, you know, when we look uh, at sand dredging, um, we do it all over the place. We do it in the foil to ensure that, that our boats are able to deliver up into our port uh, in the port uh, at Londonderry Port and Harbour. And we have no problem, Mr. Mayor, in supporting the amendment. Thank you, Alderman Devaney. Councillor Gary Donnelly. Chair, 
Chair, thank you. Uh, you know, after what Councillor McCann has said there, I don't think, you know, I need to add anything. Other than what I see coming across here is a bit of hypocrisy, Chair. You know, what I see coming across here is uh, basically a case of party before people, party before principle, party before environment, and party before our children's future. Uh, I think it was eloquently outlined by Councillor McCann, so I cannot support the amended version of this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Donnelly. Councillor McKinney. Uh, thank you for having me in there. And uh, I'd just like to say, we will be supporting this amendment to the motion. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor McKinney. Members, there's no other indicated speakers on the amendment, and I'm going to put that to the floor. Um, and I'm going to ask the Chief Executive to take us through the vote. John? Okay, thank you. Um, Sorry, uh, Brian, yeah, Chair, just one second. Uh, we challenge the admissibility of this uh, amendment, and we would like a ruling on that from uh, Legal uh, and the uh, CEO. We believe it fundamentally alters the content of the motion. We just had that one in an earlier environmental motion that was rejected. So we are challenging this. And that, that was very clear from what uh, Mr. McCann said. OK, you're entitled to challenge it. Um, it wasn't that clear because I didn't pick up on it. Um, but we'll, we'll allow the, the challenge on it. And I'll ask the uh, well, I, I've also contacted John and Philip about that. So. We, we have to clear. Right, okay. We'll wait for the Chief Executive to, to give us an opinion on it. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Um, well, I suppose the guide to this is in our standing orders, section 17.12. Uh, and it's fair to say that, um, as we've discussed on many occasions, some of this is a fine line. It, there is an element of subjectivity to it. Uh, ultimately, it is the Chair's decision. Um, but the 17.12 basically says that the motion has to be negated. Now, the notice of motion has a number of parts to it. Um, both Philip and I have considered this independently of one another. And we've arrived at the conclusion that it is admissible. Having said that, it is a very fine line um, in this instance. Um, and it's admissible for, for the following reasons, in our opinion. Um, first of all, it does not negate. Um, it notes the comments raised um, by friends of the earth, so it does not negate those comments. Um, we're still writing to the minister. Um, it does not set out. Um, it does not set out support. Um, it does not negate. Um, it sets out the concerns in relation to the climate emergency declaration. And it also invites representatives in from um, friends of the earth. I think some of the wording that was used earlier is that the wording in the notice of motion have, has certainly been weakened from the um, original notice of motion, but in the opinion of both Philip and myself, um, the notice of motion has not been negated. Can I respond to that, uh, Chair? Yeah. Well, Go ahead. Look, I, it does actually negate it because it changes the core proposal, which could have stood alone in this motion, which is to say, that we object, right? That's what's taken out of this, that we object as a council to this decision. All the other stuff will be taken out and that same core thing will be left in there. So on that basis, we are still challenging the admissibility of this amendment. It should not be included. We should have a vote on the original amendment. And if the SDLP want to bring forward a motion at a different time, uh, with whatever the, the amendment has, so be it. But the I, I think just, Mayor, just sort of yeah. coming back to you and that one and through you, I think Philip's consistent advice would, would always be in relation to notice of motion to be extremely economical with language when proposing a notice of motion. Had, had the notice of motion simply contained that statement? Um, then potentially this would be a negation. Um, but the notice of motion has a number of actions in it, and it must be viewed in its totality. Um, so 
as I say, this is a fine balance, but it is the view of myself and Philip independently. And it's a matter of the chip matter for you, Chair, to decide which way to um to go with that. Okay, John, thank you um for that. Councillor Harkin, you asked for an opinion. Um, and as I understand it, um the view outlined earlier today, you asked for it um, from both John and Philip. John has given um, a, a view from both himself and Philip independently um, and has left um, it very clear to me um, that it's um, going to basically my discretion of whether or not this is allowed to, to go forward. I've always, um, since taking over as mayor, taken advice from Philip and uh, John on all issues that have been called under question um, and, and taken that advice very, very strongly. I'm doing that again on this occasion and I am going to allow the, um, the, the amendment to stand, and I'm now putting to the floor for a vote. And I'm going to ask the Chief Executive to take us through the vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Members. Alderman Bresland. Alderman Bresland. Alderman Devaney. Four. Four, John. Alderman Guy. Four. Alderman Carrigan. Four. Alderman McClintock. Four. Alderman McCain? Four. Alderman Ramsey? Four. Alderman Wark? Four. Councillor Jason Barr? Four. Councillor Raymond Barr? Again. Councillor John Boyle? Uh, four. Councillor McKayla Boyle? Four, John. Councillor Burke? Four. Councillor Carr? Against. Councillor Cooper? Councillor Cooper. Councillor Cusack. Four. Councillor Dobbins. Four, John. Councillor Donnelly. Against. Councillor Duffy. Four. Councillor Durkin. Four. Councillor Edwards. Four. Councillor Ferguson. Four. Councillor Fleming. John. Councillor Gallagher? Against. Councillor Harkin? Against. Councillor Jackson? Four. Councillor Kelly? Four. Councillor Logue? Four, John. Councillor McCann? Against. Councillor McCluskey? Councillor McCluskey? Councillor McGuire? Councillor McGuire? Councillor McHugh? Four, John. Councillor McKeever? Four, John. Councillor McKinney? Four, John. Councillor Mellon? Councillor Mellon? Councillor Mooney? Four, John. Councillor Riley? Four, John. And Councillor Tierney? Four, John. Thanks, members. Mayor, I've recorded 27 for, 6 against, and no abstentions, so the amendment passes. Okay, John, thank you for that. Um, members, the amendment, as, as the Chief Executive has outlined, has passed. Um, and at this point, I've no indicated speakers on the substantive motion. Therefore, I'm going to go... Right, and Kelly. Councillor Kelly. Thanks, Chair. Uh, yeah, uh, can I speak on the on the motion as it stands now? I, I want to propose a minor amendment, if that's in order. Yeah, no, that's fine. Go ahead. Yeah, I've, I've just sent it through there. I don't know if they have it yet. Did you send it under the chat box or by email or what way did you send it? I, I emailed it to Teresa and yeah. John. Theresa, have you got the Councillor Kelly's amendment there? Mm. 
Members, if you just bear with us, there to me. Councilor Kelly, have you a seconder for your amendment? Seconded. Sorry, who's that? Sorry, Councilor Duffy. Thank you, Sandra. Councilor Kelly, do you want to go ahead and speak to your amendment? Thanks, Chair. Sure. Uh, sorry, Mayor. Uh, yeah, the, the amendment I'm, I'm proposing is really a minor addition to Councillor Riley's amendment, and it's about expanding the stakeholder um, representation that Council would invite in order to properly inform any discussion that we as a Council might then conduct on it. Uh, so uh, the language in the original wording of the motion was fairly definitive and implies a high level of uh, understanding of the issues surrounding Loch Ney. Unlike others, I have some knowledge of the, of the issues, but I certainly wouldn't claim to have a working knowledge of the lock uh, and the impact these decisions might have in terms of taking a considered opinion minister's determination. So in light of the fact that Loch Ney is wholly outside this district, and before we draw any conclusion, I think it is important we conduct a representative call for evidence. And following on from those rep representations, uh, we, we can then draw a conclusion with which we can engage the minister. And to do otherwise is simply to put the cart before the horse. I understand extraction takes place in one part of the lock and a significant number of people are currently dependent on that for their livelihood and for that reason I think it's important that they are represented uh, in any representations to council and that can be done uh, through the Quarry Products Association. I, th I also think it would be useful to hear from the Loch Ney partnership who are on the ground and in the water doing many wildlife habitat and environmental projects. Uh, and I know they do outreach work and I think their first-hand knowledge of the lock would be invaluable to any discussion uh, we would engage in. So the rationale for the amendment, Mayor, is simply in the interest of completeness uh, and I, com I commend it to members uh, for their consideration. Thank you for that, uh, Councillor Kelly. Remember, um, again, it's only a small amendment. Um, are people content? Sorry. And that amendment. You want to speak on it, Councillor Gallagher? <laughs> oh, you want to second it? It's already been seconded by, by Councillor Duffy, but thank you oh, for yeah. that. Um, are, are, are people happy enough with the amendment that we can take the amendment as read? Hello, hello, Chair. <laughs> yes, hello. Chair. Okay, you're saying sort of it. Uh, are we happy with the amendment? I'm not happy with the amendment uh, at all, but I'm not going to make an issue of it now because I think the mind of the council seems to be uh, uh, made up. Uh, I don't know who the I do the of the Lock Bay Partnership. I don't know who the Quarry Products Association is. Uh, my suspicion is, and that's all it can be. But at the moment, my suspicion is that it represents uh, some of those who are doing the extraction. But if, uh, what other quarry? Quarry, quarry pro, uh, uh, products uh, could there be? And I just think that with this second amendment, or if I say it, you refer to the substantive motion. There's no substance left in it. If we pass this, I mean, why? You know, there's no substance at all left in it. I didn't agree with the ruling at all from the uh, uh, chief executive and uh, uh, and Philip. I, I I find it perplexing and even perverse. But uh, there you are. Sort of have to accept it. But uh, I think there's nothing left of the original motion here. Nothing whatsoever. Thank you, Councillor McKenna. I think it's clear you're going to uh, vote. Yep. Yeah. So I, I suppose we'll, we'll have to go to a vote. John? Um, Mayor, um, I, I, I assume that the same answers who voted against the last amendment may vote against this amendment, or do you want me to yeah. vote? Well, I, I think that's fairly, fairly uh, suggest. Should, should I should I just call out the members who have voted against the last time to see if they wish to still vote against? Yes. Chair, could, I, could I just come in a second? Just go ahead, Councillor Alder. Chair, I, I I didn't vote for the for the this amendment, right? Uh, but sorry, the previous you mean the first the, amendment, Councillor Alder? First amendment that became the substantive yeah. amendment, and then there was a further amendment. I I think that I haven't haven't lost the vote and this becoming the substantive i think that the amendment now at least picks up on a voice who people who won that that fish the lot and are, are vital 
to their livelihood and have been for many years at a local level, have used the lock to feed their families and they earn a living locally without, without ruining the environment. And I'll say that without ruining the environment. That is an important voice that we have. I can understand where Eamon's coming from, but we have lost that motion and it's gone. <laughs> We were dealing, we're now dealing with a substantive motion, and I think that anything that includes a voice of people who are supporting the lock, who are making the lock a healthy place, that voice needs to be heard. So that's why I'm supporting the amendment that the council has brought. Thank you. Okay, thank you, um, Councillor Gallagher. Councillor Boyle on the amendment. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, and Chair, some may well find this surprising, given given the amendment that was put down by my party colleague, uh, Councillor Riley, just now. Uh, however, Chair, we've listened to um, the presentation and the argument from other elected representatives in the chamber or in this virtual chamber tonight. You would expect that they would listen to that uh, with a fair and open mind, and, and we are doing that. And in reality, um, we would find ourselves tending to not be uh, of a mind to eviscerate the, in, the entirety of, of the sentiment of what it is that we're trying to do here. And that is to present the voice of those who have a very uh, genuine concern in relation to some elements of, of, of what is um, currently uh, going through the system and has happened for many years uh, at, uh, at the lock. So, um, uh, I'm not entirely ruling out the, the importance, obviously, of, of, of some elements of what Councillor Kelly has said, but um, uh, in truth and, and in all good conscience, the SDLP feel that the uh, amendment uh, really should suffice at this point to deal with those issues that are of concern. Hey, thanks for that, Councillor Boyle. Um, John, I think it's clear that there's a number of people who have. Uh, indicated that they're going to change their vote um, on this particular amendment. So if you don't mind picking us through the... the not at all. No, not at all, man. Okay, just to remind members that this is on the amendment. The amendment only. Um, I assume Alderman Bresland is not with us. Four, four. Oh, you're four. Okay, thank you. Alderman Devaney? Four. Alderman Guy? Four. Alderman Kerrigan? Alderman Carrigan? Four, John. Alderman McClintock? Four. Alderman McCain? Four. Alderman Ramsey? Four. Alderman Wark? Alderman Wark? Councillor Jason Barr? Against. Councillor Raymond Barr? Against. Councillor John Boyle? Against the amendment. Councillor Michaela Boyle? Four, John. Councillor Burke? Four. Councillor Carr? Abstain. Councillor Cooper? <laughs> Councillor Cusick? Follows the report into allegations of anti Semitism within Labour's ranks. Councillor Cusick? Remember, someone was a mic on there with the news in the background. Councillor Kiar, can you get your mic, please? Councillor Kiar. He said that the problem of anti Semitism in the party had been dramatic. Thank you. Councillor Cusack. Councillor Dobbins. Against. Councillor Donnelly. Councillor Donnelly. Councillor Duffy? Four. Councillor Durkin? Against. Councillor Edwards? Against. Councillor Ferguson? Four. Councillor Fleming? Four, John. Councillor Gallagher? Councillor Gallagher? Councillor Harkin? Abstain. Councillor Jackson? Four, John. 
Councillor Kelly? Four. Councillor Lowe? Four, John. Councillor McCann? Abstain. Councillor McCluskey? Councillor McGuire? Councillor McHugh? Councillor McHugh? Councillor Councillor McKeever? Against John. Councillor McKinney? Councillor McKinney? For John. Councillor Mellon? Councillor Mellon? Councillor Mooney? Against John. Councillor Riley? Against John. Councillor Tierney? Against John. Thank you, members. John, just a note in the chat box, Alderman Wark, um, as I'm sure well you got his, and then there's Councillor Cusack. Alderman Wark is for, and Councillor Cusack is indicating that she's against. Okay, thank you. Mayor, I have recorded 17 for the, the amendment, 11 against, and three abstentions. So the amendment is carried. Yeah, John, thank you. Members, the amendment is carried um, with a result that the Chief Executive has just read out, which now um, again reverses back to the substantive motion. At this stage, I have no indicated speakers, so I'm going to ask Councillor Harkin that they would just come up before we go to the vote on the substantive motion. Thanks, Chair. Uh, I think that this has been very, very disappointing tonight and also very revealing. Um, I, I think what we've seen here is that the, the, the executive parties, SDLP, Sinn Féin, DUP, UUP and Alliance, along with our council officers, don't actually understand what the climate emergency is. They don't understand what it means to take a climate pledge. And what they're going to do is they think that they can fill people by using the words of the climate emergency, but then continuing on with business as usual. So it's very disappointing, but I think people will see through this, just the way they've seen through things like welfare reform being brought in here, uh, that what we really need to focus on now is building the strongest opposition to tick on the executive parties, because they're going to continue to do this. They're going to do this. They're going to they're going to deny us an independent environmental agency. They're going to deny us a boy inquiry, and the list will go on and on and on. Uh, so the message to all those millions of young people and the thousands of people who marched in Derry is that there is no hope for fundamental change coming from this executive instalment. It is going to be up to people marching, demanding, protesting. If we want system change and not climate change. None of these parties are going to deliver it. They're going to lie through their teeth, and we've seen that tonight. They don't understand the climate emergency, and they were, they have ripped up that climate pledge tonight. Thank you for that, um, Councillor Harkin. Um, and just before um, I go to Councillor Riley, who's um, raised a point of order, um, I would like to point out that council officers are here to provide advice um, and support. Um, you asked for an opinion from officers. The Chief Executive gave an opinion and also pointed out that it was down to the Chair stroke Mayor's discretion of whether or not that amendment should have stood, and I allowed it to stand. I don't think it's fair for you uh, to have a go at council officers <laughs> for providing support or advice to me as Chair or to anyone else on this meeting as an elected representative. You can say what you like about other parties, but I won't have you having a go at council officers who are here doing a job and trying to pr provide advice. Uh, to the rest of us. I'm not going to come to you again. I see your mic's off. I'm not going to come to you again. Councillor Riley with a point of order. Uh, thanks, Mayor, for letting me in on a point of order. Just to concur with your comments in relation to Councillor Harkin's remarks. Uh, he can have a, a commentary against any other of the elected members without interference, and people will have their say. Uh, but to then de uh, delve into having a, a, a go and tainting uh, officers uh, with a political opinion is wrong. 
and he should withdraw that remark right now. Uh, at the same person, the same councillor would have us believe that he's a champion of workers' rights and a champion of um, the entitlement of workers uh, to uh, to join trade unions, etc. He he can't allow himself to be in a position where he is tainting uh, members of our council uh, staff in this way, and I think he should withdraw that remark. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Uh, members, I'm going to take a vote. Uh, on the Brad, Brad, I want to, I want to uh, say a few words in response to that. I mean, the sense that we're attacking... Oh, the, I'm, sorry, that, sorry, uh, Councillor McCann. Councillor McCann. It's just a disagreement. I've already said that. Councillor McCann. I still say that, I still say that the ruling really was perverse and wrong. Councillor McCann. I've okay. already called for the vote. Yeah, well, well, I could have simultaneously with you doing that. That's what I was trying to do. Yeah, I've already yeah, said well, I yeah, found the you ruling. Perverse. Perverse. Councillor McCann. Thank you. Well, Brian, I have the right to respond to what Councillor Riley said. You'll not be responding. Now I'm taking a vote on this uh, motion. Councillor Riley raised a point of order, uh, and I have called for the vote. And at, at, that, at this point, the only person we'll be hearing from is the Chief Executive, who's going to take us through the role to hear the vote. Thank you. Over to yourself, John. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And, uh, um, Mayor, I will address the issues um, raised by Councillor Harkin in respect of council officers directly with Councillor Harkin. Um, the, uh, in respect of the substantive motion, Alderman Bresland? For. Alderman Devaney? For. Alderman Guy? For. Alderman Carrigan? For. Alderman McClintock? For. Alderman McKean? For. Alderman Ramsey? For. Alderman Wark? For. Councillor Jason Barr? For. Councillor Raymond Barr? Against. Councillor John Boyle? For. Councillor Michaela Boyle? For. Councillor Burke? For. Uh, Councillor Carr? Councillor Carr? Councillor Cusick? Don't. Sorry, Councillor Cusick? For. Thank you. Councillor Dobbins? For, John. Uh, Councillor Donnelly? Councillor Donnelly? Councillor Duffy? For. Councillor Durkin? For. Councillor Edwards? For. Councillor Ferguson? For. Councillor Fleming? For, John. Councillor Gallagher? Against. Councillor Harkin? Against. Councillor Jackson? For. Councillor Kelly? For. Councillor Logue? For, John. Councillor McCann? Against. Councillor McCluskey? Councillor McGuire? Councillor McHugh? Councillor McKeever? For John. Councillor McKinney? Councillor McKinney? For John. Councillor Mellon? Councillor Mooney? For John. Councillor Riley? For John. Councillor Tierney? For John. Thank you, members. John, uh, Councillor McHugh here, my apologies. Um, I'm for. Is that Councillor McHugh? Yes. Apologies, John. Thank you, Ray. Mayor, I've recorded 28 for and Four against, so the motion is carried. Thank you, John. Um, members, that motion is carried, and uh, with the result that the chief executive has just read out.
Moving on, members, um, items number 10, 11, and 12 are open for information. Sorry, are open for information. Um, I'm going to take them as read unless anyone wants to raise a specific issue on it. On, on any of those issues, 11, 10, 11, and 12. No. Okay, thank you, members. Can I have a proposal and a seconder to go on the confidential? So proposed, Morris Devaney. I said that's Sean Minnie. I'll second that. Out. Morris and Sean Minnie. Thank you, both. Members, item number 13 is 